Hey, grace and peace. We were having some um, technical difficulties. I think we're good right now. We have to, we have to reconvene. We have to have a community meeting about some stuff that was said. I'm going to play, I'm going to play this video. I think I had too many windows open too long. I don't really ever shut my computer down. I think that's what the problem was. I'm looking for the cord. I want to hook this microphone up. I feel like talking loud. I feel like talking loud. Um, Paul and the law. And, you know, we were talking about the whole pork thing. Did, did Israelites convert and just became Gentiles or they were Israelites that just abandoned the dietary laws and the feast days and everything? Leo did an excellent presentation. That was one of the best presentations I've seen, but there are some questions. Elder Green has some questions, big country. Elder Green has some questions. Let me sip on this water. I got another energy drink, but I just had one a little while ago, so I'll wait till he get back with that sheet rocking that other stuff before I take this, before I drink this other um, energy drink. I'm trying to drink some water. Leo, let, let me let it play. Let me let this play, and then I'll get to the other video, and I'll talk about the book. You pose this question. If the word pistis can mean loyalty as well as faith, then might one express Paul's famous doctrine as justification by loyalty? I have to confess that's a new one on me. Are you suggesting that the individual's justification before God, according to Paul, includes some kind of demonstration of loyalty? I think part of the problem, this is getting technical, so forgive us, but this word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, which we normally translate as faith, as Martin says, means loyalty, trustworthiness, trustfulness, the whole range of, of things. And I think in Romans itself, we see Paul exploiting those different meanings. When he says up front that this is the gospel about Jesus, uh, the son of David, the son of God, raised from the dead, um, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the nations. That's another Caesar phrase. Caesar wanted obedient loyalty, thank you very much. Jesus is the Lord who wants obedient loyalty. The danger with that is if you're asking the question of justification in terms of what do I have to do in order that God will be pleased with me, then it sounds as though I, I have to do something. I have to be loyal instead of just believe. And that's where we need to pan right back and say, nope, that's not what we're talking about. That is where the 16th century and actually it wasn't their fault, got into a muddle because they were responding to the, to the Middle Ages. I've often said Luther and Calvin and the others, who are among my great heroes, were trying desperately to give biblical answers to late medieval questions. That's much better than giving non-biblical answers to late medieval questions. But let's think about what the first century questions were, and they weren't the same questions, and that's where the slippage comes. But of course, but Thomas Cranmer speaking of this doctrine specifically, writes, this proposition that we be justified by faith only, freely and without works, is spoken in order to take away clearly all merit of our works as being insufficient to deserve our justification at God's hand. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you embrace that as an assertion of what Paul's saying? No, I embrace that as an assertion of what had to be said urgently in the middle of the 16th century. And bless Cranmer for saying that, because that wasn't where he started, but he went to the stake for, for that and associated doctrines. But when we pan back and say that's what needed to be said to ward off the 15th century heresies, what needs to be said by Paul is that God intends to put the whole world right, point one. God has dramatically launched and inaugurated this project by raising the crucified Jesus from the dead, point two, so that the world has in principle been put right. And God now, through grace, through the gospel, puts human beings right so that they can be part of his putting right project for the world. And being part of that project 
does not require a demonstration by myself of good works, of effort. It, it, does, it doesn't require it, but as Luther himself would say, if it doesn't issue in that, something is wrong with the initial faith. I mean, that, that's, that's quite clear. If, if, you, if you just, I mean, some of Luther's early treatises make this extremely clear, that faith works through love, according to Galatians. And love and faith actually in Paul are really quite close. They are both about trusting God and living a life shaped by the death of Jesus. So um, th th this is part of a much larger conversation, of course. But I think if you start by saying, how do I get to heaven? Do I have to do good works or not? Wrong question. But if you ask that question, the answer is no. You simply believe and trust. God reaches out and you say thank you and believe. But if you start by and saying... Paul articulates. Is, and Paul articulates that. But the works which Paul rules out, and which Cranmer is echoing there, as in Galatians 3, as in Romans 3, as in Galatians 2 as well, Primarily for Paul, these are the works of the law which mark out the Jewish people from their non-Jewish neighbors, circumcision, Sabbath, the food laws, and going to the temple and so on. Paul says, don't have to do that anymore. That was a good but temporary dispensation. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Wonderful World of Remnant Radio. Today, we're talking about the new perspective on Paul. We're talking about three. Um, I, I, I'll let this, I, I'll get back to this. I'll get back to this right here. That might be interesting. Matt, you, you're in the truck, right? What are your thoughts on that right there? I want to play something. Elder Green, you know, he's always behind listening, and he had a question about something here. And I said, let me, is it this one? Hold on a second. I thought I had it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. I think it's this one here, yes. All right, Met said he actually, all right, you agree. And we were just saying something in the back chat. N.T. Wright said that that was something that had to be said at Martin Luther's time in the 15th century, I believe he said, um, 42 minutes, 43. Let's listen to some of this. Yeah, it, it, people have often gone to that and said, there you are, um, Paul knew that Jesus of Nazareth had been uh, crucified, therefore he was cursed by the law, therefore now, he couldn't be the Messiah. But then he discovered that God had raised Jesus from the dead, so he said, oh, therefore the law was wrong to curse him, therefore we have to do away with the law and have a different way of salvation. That is an incredible low-grade distortion of what Paul is actually saying. Paul is here retrieving the entire narrative from Deuteronomy 27 to 30. Well, 27 to 30 plus 32 gives you the covenantal story that if Israel gets everything right, then the blessings will follow. And if, every, if Israel gets everything wrong, and Deuteronomy says, which, by the way, we know is going to happen, then the curses will follow, and the worst of the curses is exile. And it's only after exile, Deuteronomy 30, that God will then uh, transform your heart so that you will love him from your heart, and then things will go forward. And that narrative from the end of Deuteronomy is appealed to by Jews in Paul's day, like Josephus, as a long-range prophecy of how Israel's story is going to work out. It's not a bit of abstract moralism which could apply at, at any point in time. It's very definitely a narrative which is then, of course, picked up in the story of um, the books of Samuel and Kings. This is how it plays out. This is why Israel goes into exile and so on and so forth. So what Paul is saying is not, uh, oh, how stupid the law was to curse Jesus, but hey, God gave these promises to Abraham, but Abraham's family were the people to whom Deuteronomy said, watch out because you will go under the curse because you will commit idolatry, et cetera, et cetera. So the problem is God has made these spectacular worldwide promises to Abraham, and it looks as though the promises are going to be snuffed out. They're all going to be dead and gone. So the Messiah, Israel's representative, comes to the point where the Torah rightly pronounces the curse and bears the curse in himself. And then verse 13 and 14, 
works so superbly, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we, that is, we Jews who believe, might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. In other words, the promises had got into a logjam because of Israel's sin producing the curse, and the Torah was right to pronounce that curse. Jesus has come under the Torah's rightful curse on behalf of his people, so that okay. now... All right, can so it's the rightful breath. curse of the Torah. Yeah. Um, this may, may seem like a very subtle distinction, but I think it's an yes. important distinction, okay. which is that the Torah rightly curses Jesus, as opposed to the Torah rightly curses disobedient Israel, which violates the Torah, which is a major point in Galatians. You've signed up. You got circumcised. You signed up for the whole yep. deal, yep. Uh, including yep. the judgment, and that Jesus goes and occupies that yep. point of cursing, but Jesus yep. is not properly cursed. Um, no, no. It, it, it's he bore the curse, um, becoming a curse. Now, hold on a second. Let me, um, let me text Elder Dispensation. Tim, you in the house? Because I'd like you to come up here, being that you're the first one that, that mentioned, right, and a new perspective, I I would like you, if you're busy, I'll go back to this video. I want to get the time stamp. I want to make sure I have this time stamp correct before I even ask the question. So I'm going to do this whilst I make a, um, whilst I make a phone call. Yes, he said yes. You, I, I got the link out there if, you, if you're not busy. I know, Kobe, I know you're in the office. three different uh, emphases from the new perspective. It's going to be an exciting program. You guys stay tuned. You are watching The Remnant Radio, a crowd-funded show where we interview pastors, teachers, historians, and theologians from different churches and denominations. My name is Joshua Lewis, and this is my co-host, Michael Roundtree. Together, we want to help you break outside of your theological echo chambers. If you're interested in learning about history, theology, or the gifts of the Spirit, this is the show for you. You may be asking yourself, what are those three different areas of emphasis that come out of the new perspective? I will let Michael tell you in just one moment. Before I do, I want to remind you that we're an entirely crowdfunded ministry. There are links in the description to give. You can give a one-time gift there on PayPal or a reoccurring gift there on Patreon. As well as five bucks a month to get access to extra content. Tomorrow, we're producing a video on critical race theory with a new TikTok buddy that I have. Uh, we're going to be producing that episode tomorrow from 4 to 5. And then on Wednesday, we have our usual uh, to-be-continued show where we talk about gifts of the Spirit with myself, Michael Miller, and Michael Roundtree. So make sure to watch that episode as okay, well. I didn't go uh, without further ado, I want to let you know about our show today. Michael, do you want to kind of introduce us to the subject of the new perspective? The new perspective on Paul. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I can talk about that. We're going to uh, we're going to be walking through. First of all, big picture. What? Okay. Um. Hey, Grace and Peace. What's going on with you, Elder? What's happening? Nothing. Um. I'm going to let you the new perspective on Paul. I'm going to let you explain some of that whilst I'm looking on the other video. I'm trying to cue some stuff up. Yeah, I, I I just want to come in and uh, kind of explain a little bit because I'm not an expert at it. It's just that that's something that interests me a lot. Every time the subject come up or a video come up, I'm I'm watching because that's NT right. That's how come I called you. Go ahead. I'm gonna mute myself. I gotta listen to something on my phone. I'm trying to find something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, NT right has a a a different way of uh, approaching uh, Paul Pauline theology. And basically, if you if you really break it down to what he's trying to say, N.T. Wright is it's saying horrible. that westernized Christianity, and I hate to say it like that, but that's the way he says it, because I've seen many, plenty of his video. Westernized Christianity has it wrong when it when it's when it's talked about Pauline when it comes to Pauline theology. The whole purpose, say, for the book of Galatians was to produce community, family, unity, not he not uh, whether I go to heaven or not. He has a different take on what justification means. He's, he, he, think we got, he think we got that law confused? Huh? He think we have the law confused? Yeah, it, it, basically, he does, man, because I have to say that because if you look at some of the debates, especially the, the debate he had with uh. Uh, uh, James White, 
it's obvious that he thinks we got it wrong. And uh, he 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 follows along with E.P. Sanders' new perspective, but then he don't follow. He don't. He he's not all the way in with uh, what some of the uh, things that E.P. Sanders concluded. And I haven't read E.P. Sanders' book. E.P. Sanders got a long study on uh, new perspective. That's who really who the new perspective, where the new perspective was born with E.P. Sanders. But the bottom line and that's what i come on here to say because you know we'll say a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. but the bottom line as far as nt Wright is concerned he says the westernized church is always looking to how do i go to heaven he said that wasn't the purpose the purpose of the gospel was to uh, uh, uh the new testament gospel was to show us how to get along as a community he says that's the reason why chattel chattel, chattel slavery was able to 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 uh uh to to survive for so long because people forget either forgot or never knew that this is about community this is about how we get how the children of god get along he said he made a statement uh, in, in, in the video. He says, and this is heavy. He says, nowhere in the New Testament is going to heaven the Christian goal. The Christian goal is now this is me commentary comment on that. that. Now, that's what he said. I'm going to say it again. And let, let me use quote, quote, nowhere in the New Testament is going to heaven the Christian goal unquote now what i'm saying is this if you have if you have an argument against nt right and i'm just saying this for the sake of conversation bring your argument with 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 with, with uh with uh bible verses not just what you oh, think oh um, leo you could click the link he said if you got beef with nt right Bible verses. Alton said that's beef. Um, Pastor my, my said that's beef right there. Yeah, yeah. Most actually said not Western Christianity, so Protestantism. Protestant. You think Martin? No, no, no. I'm I'm using the words he used. I'm I'm not just talking about the video that you just played. I'm talking about the videos I've been watching ever since he's come on the scene. Not since mm -hmm. he come on the scene, but since I've been uh, recognized. If you go back, see the thing is. He'll say things nicely. He don't just uh, loosely go off Western, Western, you know, he don't do that. But when he got in that debate with James White and, yeah, and it started right. getting heated, you know, people say things that, that they really think. You got to, I'm, I, hey, if we're going to talk about this, man, you got to go see that debate with him and uh, White where they start getting uh, uh, under each other's skin, and he brought up the westernized Christianity, and I thought of Bruce. Wow. Because <laughs> that's what they really think. They think we got it wrong over here. And let me and let me let y'all in on this. I'm not even saying I agree with him, but it's intriguing to see how he how he approaches a uh, 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 Pauline theology and it's different it's it's different than the way we've been taught you know what i'm saying and, and say what you want he is recognized as the foremost scholar on pauline christianity on pauline and the epistles and stuff like that if we got it wrong is that because some some may feel that that the church protestants maybe um that most excellent will say have an anti-law spirit we don't want nothing we ain't trying to hear no law we ain't trying to hear no law. Now, in the book that I have that Elder Green brought to the job today, he said, what's that? Where's this book at? Oh, no. He told me to bring it back. I done lost the book already. Oh, my goodness. A book on Galatians from N.T. Wright. He said Gentiles could be Gentiles and Gentiles can stay Gentiles and Jewish believers in Jesus can continue their traditions. He said that. He said in the and he said also that I think that's what I'm gonna cue up in the video. He said that Gentiles were even going and keeping the law. Somebody gave me somebody gave me some proof yesterday that in 600 was it was it Gregory that lad one of them one of them later on church fathers ran a 60 um 600s that many many people were keeping the Sabbath. Go ahead, I mute myself. I gotta find this thing on the video. Yeah. yeah. I, I, 
Make yeah, sure, hey, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. Grace, grace and peace, Berean, grace, grace and peace, Elder Tim. Uh, what grace I was, what I was, tr yeah, yeah. What I was trying to say is, um, and I know sometimes in the, in the chat, you know, you can't get your full thought out in the in the chat section, but like from what I know, and this is a heavy topic. Uh, N.T. Wright, I think when he talks about like Western Christianity, he's saying that a lot of us as Protestants, because you know a lot of us in America are Protestant and we have misread Paul in light of Roman Catholicism versus Protestantism. And that has been how we have traditionally understood Paul. So basically he's saying, we're basically asking the, the wrong question of Paul in light of what happened during the Protestant Reformation, as opposed to what was Paul's mindset in the first century. The reason I say it more so Protestantism, though, is because if you look to the early church, they didn't really understand justification the same way that we would by like faith alone, the same way that that, that we would. Uh, you would definitely see hints of like grace is necessary, but I think you will also see that they would have understood that justification possibly could happen throughout your life. Right. And, and how you put together James along with Paul. James uses Abraham to say Abraham was justified when he sacrificed his son Isaac. And so some people would understand that you are set right, you're put uh, in right standing with God by grace, but then your works are, impart are important in whether or not you grow in that justification over time or you know how Protestants have kind of separated justification as a one-time event and then sanctification. So it kind of deals with all of that. But the reason I was saying more so Protestantism is because like when you look to like the, the Catholic Church, when you look to uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, and when you look to early believers, they didn't have like the sola fide that we would articulate as, as Protestants. So what N.T. Wright is kind of doing, one of his theses is not that the new perspective is a new perspective, but that the new perspective is actually the original or the more ancient perspective. And a lot of it basically hinges on what would think Paul means by works of law. So a lot of times when we read things like Romans 3, We'll say, Paul says you are justified by faith apart from works of law. And we would say, or not me, I'm just saying, a lot of people would say works of law is anything that you do in the attempt to be made right. And some people would read that and say, no, it's not anything. The works of the law might be the Jewish identifiers, right? Because Paul goes on in Romans 3 to say, or is God the God of the Jews only, right? So, uh, that's kind of what it gets into is how would we understand this phrase works of law or erga tu namu? How would we understand that phrase? Is it anything that you do uh, in the attempt to be justified? Any works? Does it, does it leave room for the works of God? Does it leave room uh, for works of love? Does it leave room for the royal law that James talks about? Um, but that's why I said more so it, it would affect more so us as Protestants because uh, I think a lot of uh, Eastern Orthodox Christians, Catholic Christians have a different doctrine of justification. And and I agree with you because that's basic. I mean, if you listen to him long enough, basically that's that's who he's uh, that's who he's gearing at. Uh, the Protestants had a, a Protestant answer. The Protestants dealt with questions uh, during the uh, 16th century. And what he was basically saying was how the and and I and, and look, y'all, I'm only saying what he's saying. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm just saying what he said. The Protestants were dealing with questions that 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 uh came up during the 16th century as if that was what Paul was dealing with in the first century, and he's saying those are two different issues. So we our approach to Pauline theology is is kind of warped. And and, and 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 like I say, he does use that term Western, and, and that's he just what it Western is. Or he used the term Protestant. He used both, and that's what I'm saying. He used he used the word Protestant more. He's being uh, uh nice about it, should I say? But if you if you check out his debates, he'll use that word Western Christianity uh, uh, uh quite a bit because he's because he says oh, over here in America. We're so concerned about uh, uh, justification going to heaven and this, that, and the other. When 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 Paul was trying to build community on earth, you know what I'm saying? Hold he, on a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, hold, on, hold on. Rev C said. Rev C said we got to slow this down. Terry Pope said Western 
Christianity, Eastern, Northern, or Southern, if the if news perspective trying to curve in, uh, in um curve in a necessity to keep the law for salvation, it's off. That ain't that's so that. He, so on so far, he said it doesn't make a difference. I want to read a few things. Okay. Oh, because Alton and I'm saying this is beef. You don't necessarily agree with him or agree, what would he say? Agree with or agree with him at all. This is serious. Um, let me go back because people automatically think it just got something to do with salvation. Um, read some of this stuff for me. I, 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 there are se- there are serious ramifications with this doctrine. We can't play around with this. Uh, I, I I agree. I agree. That's why that's why see conversations like this are needed to be had. This guy has plenty of work out there for us to study and and, and mull over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, Elder Tim on point. Bring this up. Okay, go ahead. Keep going with what, what you were saying. I'm I'm looking at the comments here. Yeah, but <clears throat> that he's, he's he's not, not saying this for salvation at all. He's not saying this for salvation at all. No, because you got to remember, he's talking about the book of Galatians. You go if you listen to N.T. Wright talk about the book of Romans, you'll think he's contradicting himself. But no, he's dealing with the 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 the, the subject, uh, uh, the context within the, the the book itself. In the book of Galatians, he basically says that salvation is not talking about salvation. It's talking about community. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and then he says that. You know, in a verse in chapters three and four, he gets deep into the argument and we have the tendency to get into three and four and get deep into the argument. But we won't go over to five and six, which is the application. The application is, is where he where you are taught to get along with one another as community. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I think I heard Michael Bird say uh, uh, basically they were fighting the the the. The, the, what was going on that that day was who am I able to sit at the table and eat with? And, and, and the bigger question was, who are the people of God? You know what I'm saying? And 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 this this thing we got about who is new Israel and this, that and the other that me personally, I think that's the wrong approach to uh, New Testament or Pauline theology. Paul never tried to prove who is new Israel. Israel can be Israel and Gentiles can be Gentiles within a family of God, within the family of God. From, you know what I'm saying? Following, from following N.T. Wright, do he believe that early Jewish people kept their traditions? He, he basically said that people were not as legalistic as we make them out to be. And what do you think you mean by that? What he's basically, well, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Well, I, come on, Leo. He said that's your view. Leo, come on, tell me. Well, let me let this play while he's on the call. I can't. Hold on. Yeah, but uh, no, he, he was saying the reason why that's the wrong approach because because he, cause even in the video you just showed, he said, you know, uh, they, they were not as legalistic as we make them out to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he says that uh, uh, most Jews in Paul's day weren't legalistic. So when we approach it in that way, assuming that's what that's what uh, the the issue was, we 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 uh, take a wrong approach as if the law was something bad that we needed to get rid of. He now he just said it. He said the the law did exactly. It came and did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to curse. You got to remember when God gave Abraham the promise, he already talked about uh, uh, Israel going into captivity. So he uh, even as God is giving the promise to Abraham and promising him land and this, that, and other, God is telling Abraham that your people are going to fail. That's because God already had a program set to where the people fail, the curse will happen, but the curse will come upon Christ. You know what I'm saying? And so therefore the law did exactly what it was supposed to do. Like I say, I, sometimes I, I he think said, he said that's your view. Leo, what what view? He's not saying what No, that's that's NT Wright's view. I'm not I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about NT Wright. Y'all y'all got to learn how to when you listen to a person 
see what they're saying and not necessarily make your own conclusion about what because I don't agree with everything N.T. Wright says. Just like N.T. Wright has this thing about uh, the imputation of the righteous of righteousness of Christ. I totally disagree with it, but I, I try to explain it. But when I explain it, that don't mean I, that don't mean I believe it. That don't mean you hold that position. Right, right. Let me ask you, so you do you do you think per, do you think personally that Paul and them was eating pork and Peter and them they stopped living like Israelites? <laughs> now that's a little too heavy for me. To, I'm a, let me okay. Let me give my opinion. Let me give my opinion. I do. I don't know if it was pork, but Peter was over there eating something with them Gentiles. And then when the church showed up, he pulled away from the table. Well, the you know elders from Jerusalem showed up. Them elders from up there, of course, Antioch. They probably been doing whatever they was doing. Yeah. So, 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 and, 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 and that's the whole got carried away with it. Whatever it was, whatever it was. I don't whatever. know if it was pork. I don't know if it, it might have been lobster, shrimp. I don't know. Okay, but you think it was something? It was something. Joe here, good. I bit my tongue. Elder Joe here. Where, where's um? I don't know. I got to ask Dunamis or somebody. I don't. I, 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 I'm trying to find Roger and. The chat on that block list. I don't. I. I don't know. I must got an. I must got an out of darkness list because I couldn't find it. But go ahead. I'm thinking about some other stuff. Let me. Let me find this video. Go ahead, Ellie. Oh, yeah. Just, but, go, cook. Cook. go ahead and cook. They want to hear you. But the only, uh, only, now here's the bottom line to me, and this is where I, I find NT Wright intrigue, and that's why he attracts me. You when see how he talk, y'all. You see how he talk, Elder. This is my peeps right here. I'm telling y'all right now. Certain people aggravate him. All right, he got black power, but there's <laughs> people like Dunamis that 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 make Elder act crazy. He talking good right now. Go ahead, <laughs> you got the flow. Yeah, but 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 what what intrigues me about this thing about the new perspective is which is what they call it but you know you, i think his name is michael bird i think uh, nt right some of the guys that uh proponents of this uh type of thought they will tell you that the book of galatians and that's basically what they be talking about mainly the book of galatians should have should have taught the christian church how to get along uh, how to form community and this formation of community if if the church had it done it had done it correctly a lot of the things that we saw happen in history would not have happened if the church brought that approach now let me let me kind of parse that up a little bit i do understand that the abor uh uh, uh the abor the uh the people who were fighting for the freedom of slavery back in the 18, uh, uh, 18 1900s, Abolition. abolitionists. I knew, I do know they were they were Christians. But here's the part that people don't want to talk about: a large portion, and uh, uh, of the church was uh, supporting slavery, even though the church was against slavery. A large portion was was was, was supporting slavery. And what and, and if you hear this interview with Michael Byrd, he he'll break this thing down uh, uh, as far as history is con concerned, big time. He says that had the church been as adamant about community the way Paul meant it in the book of Galatians, the things that happened in this country, they may they may have happened, but the church would have put up a bigger, better fight. Let me give you, a, let me let me kind of twist it a little bit because it's something that uh, N.T. Wright said. N.T. Wright said that this Black Lives Matter thing, yes, it's you know, Marxist, such and such and such and such. But what he said, the Black Lives Matter message was correct. It was just coming from the wrong people. It should have been coming from the church. The church should have been the ones fighting with tooth and nail against this thing uh, uh, about colorism and racism in this country. That's basically what they're dealing with. And that's what attracts me. That's what attracts me to his work. So the church was largely involved in slavery? You said the Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Of course. They were largely involved in it. And they, but because the church is so large, they, the church is also part of. Uh, who was getting us up out of it? So I'm not blaming the church as a whole. It's just that it's just that when we're talking about uh, Pauline theology uh, uh, from this pr particular perspective, 
had we understood what Paul was what Paul was saying that Jesus was doing. And you can take this all the way back to the um, the uh, uh, promises God made to Abraham community. We would have put more emphasis on community instead of individualization, uh, uh, individuals going to heaven. That's their whole point. We should have been put. We should be put. Not should have. We should be putting more uh, uh, emphasis on community. If we put more emphasis on community, this thing covers the whole earth. That's what God trying to do. Produce one family, like He's saying in Ephesians chapter uh, at the end of Ephesians chapter three. It's all about community and family and getting along with one another. We don't put as much emphasis in that. Hold on a second, Elder. Sean, this is the problem right here. Do me a favor, Elder. Read. No, no, no. Wait. Sean said slave master was the past. Slave master was the pastor of the church. Not every church. There were some pastors that fought slavery in the abolitionist movement, and they used their house to hide out slaves so they can come up. So when you start saying speak on it, it's not the whole church. He said a large part, not the whole church. Don't think every pastor was doing that because you'll start making statements like that, and people would be, and people would tend to believe it. But that's not true. There were some. Pastors that had slaves, yes, absolutely so, but there were plenty that did not. Yeah, and I the abolition. That so let's not start that nonsense. Yeah, the uh, abolitionist movement and the civil rights movement. I think that was the church movement. Yes, yes. Now let me see, Pastor Mama's very worried about that law. You know him, and I was looking for him, Elder Joe. Um, Leo made an excellent. Excellent. The slides were excellent. Presentation, excellent. I got to say, that's one of the best, I think the best since I've been on, um, since we've been bringing people on. But Elder Green had a few concerns with certain things because he studies a lot of the early church. And it's interesting how you were saying that N.T. Wright was explaining that it had something was going on with Martin Luther and them at the time for them to take that position. Most Excellent said, and Covey agreed with him, that N.T. Wright deals more so with the ancient church. Pastor, my, my, the ancient church. So if the ancient church was doing some things, I'm still trying to, I'm still scratching my head about that, Paul and them in that park and abandoning everything. I know we say the law is a package deal, but if people was keeping the Shabbat, not for salvation, I got to say it over and over on this channel. Once you talk about the law, you're looking to get saved by it. And that could be, we've been beefing about that a long time. He brought up something in the video that N.T. Wright said about Jews and the law, Jewish people in the law, that Leo did not bring out. And he said, Elder, Elder Green, now I got to drag Elder Green into this because he plays the video. I'm working, trying to do my little plumbing and and. and do a live at the same time. But he said it's interesting that um, Leo brought up M.T. Wright. And M.T. Wright was saying something opposite from what Leo was saying. Now, in the video, the man said, he said, if this thing was to, what, that new perspective was to be spoken in the church, they, they'll, they'll, they'll be having arrows after him. They'll be throwing darts because a lot of church folk don't like that. Now, you said that he said Western and Protestant but we, we're fighting that law tooth and nail. We're fighting that law tooth and nail. You don't think that's the whole purpose of Galatians from your understanding of N.T. Wright. You were the first one to bring up N.T. Wright and a new perspective. And when we were arguing about the law, you said we may have to look into that because N.T. Wright saying that. Yeah. And I brought that up two years ago. It's about time we get around to it. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, it's needed right now. And I remember because he put a where's that book. I hope I leave that book outside. Well, ain't nobody gonna pick it up. I go, I gotta have to go back downstairs. But um, that yeah, that's the problem right there. He with the book on Galatians and what NT Wright is saying. Now he's not a preacher's preacher. He was pastoring before he was a bishop, but he he basically lectures right now and he right. does you know seminary talk. Go ahead with that. I mute myself. Right, but see, but but here's the understanding. <clears throat> this thing that we're fighting about the law and this that and the other. According to N.T. Wright's understanding of uh, Paul's perspective, Pauline theology, if your main uh, goal is community. I have, I'm sorry. I have the book right here. I have the book. Elder Green had the book when he heard N.T. Wright three years ago. 
But he said he just highlighted that part. He went looking into it. He just highlighted that part. He said, oh, somebody, I don't know who it was. Somebody said, oh, N.T. Wright, a good scholar. Elder Green went and bought the book. I see the date on the book. He bought the book a few years back. Um, Have it top. You have that book, Rev. See how you understand N.T. Wright in that book. But go ahead, Elder. I just wanted to, um, Leo, you can jump on. Go ahead, Elder. You got the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, on, on, but but like I said, the main goal uh, of you know these particular uh, proponents of uh, this particular understanding is that the church puts too much emphasis on going to. Hell. I'm gonna say it slow because if you can find a book that said that by N.T. Wright that says the opposite, then his videos and his books are are, are, are saying two different things. We put too much emphasis on going to heaven and not enough emphasis on heaven on earth community. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And he and, and he just the main problem with Galatians who who has bewitched you. Let me pull up some Galatians. Go ahead. And and, and that's the whole thing. And, and, and look, I even study. <laughs> just to throw a monkey wrench, I even studied how Heiser understands Galatians. And boy, we go, <laughs> we going some way somewhere else. We heard Heiser on Galatians. Huh? Galatians, was, Galatians was written, most of the epistles was written to straighten some things out. There was some type of beef. Let me yeah. Go, yeah. Go, go and, 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 and Michael Bird says the beef was mainly how do we fellowship... How, with this newfound understanding of believing faith in Christ, how do we fellowship with the outside world, or should I say, with the Gentiles? It was all about fellowship. The Gentiles do, or, 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 or the, the Jews, the Israelites. Yeah, how are, are they invited to the table? Because, like they say, one of the uh, uh, examples you can see what was going on is what happened in Acts chapter 6, I believe. With, with the with the um giving out with the deacons with giving out the food the food pantry yes they say that is a telltale sign of what was going on at that particular time how do we fellowship with those who don't believe who you know uh, uh, those on the outside now of course a lot of believe people believe the Hellenists were Jew, uh 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 Jewish uh uh. Jewish Greeks or whatever Greek uh, Jews who followed the Greek it just, culture. It was just it was just, it was it was secular Jews or was it just a language barrier in Acts six? I was, go ahead. Now see the now here it is. Now the scripture tells us there were proselytes there. So what does that tell you? Uh, 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 in Acts chapter two, there were proselytes there. Remember? So if there were they were proselytes. Then those who say they were all yeah, the food Jews, pantry, specifically the food pantry in in the mother church, just the food pantry in Jerusalem right here. Yeah, That's yeah, but it's the same. Some 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 of those people, I think what they're talking about when they talk about uh, the uh, 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 the Greeks, they're talking about both those Jews who, who, who lived on the outside, who uh, follow Greek culture and proselytes, meaning uh, 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 help uh, Greeks for real. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. okay. On, so what, what the, the issue is, how do we get along with this newfound faith? Pop, I, now, I think what uh, N.T. Wright is basically saying, he's not knocking this uh, 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 longing to go to heaven, going to heaven is what's going. That's that's God's job. That He that's that's what He's going to do. That's the promise that He made. Uh, whether you go to heaven or heaven on earth or whatever, what we need to do is do what we're supposed to do. What does Paul say? We were created unto good works. What are good works? Getting along with my fellow man, uh, uh, serving the poor, uh, 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 the widow, the 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 uh, orphan—that's the good works community. And when we get away, because we've gotten away from that, Christianity has uh, uh, grown, has uh, presented itself in a uh, in a way that Paul wouldn't recognize in the twenty-first century. Mm. 
Okay, go ahead. All right, all right. That's what that's what NT Wright is saying, and I know that for a fact. All right, look at the comment section. Hold on, let me. I'm trying to do something here. Does too much emphasis on heaven equate to too much emphasis on salvation? No, because see, I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. A lot of times when I'm listening to NT Wright, he's talking about Galatians. If you want to talk about salvation, go to the book of Romans. He got some things to say about that, too, that I don't necessarily see this thing about uh, N.T. Wright uh, 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 talks about when he talks about uh, the imputation, the righteous righteousness of Christ. I disagree with that. I do believe that uh, uh, the righteous, the, the 33 year olds that Christ lived uh, and died and 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 uh, uh, rose on the third day. I do believe all of that is accredited to us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that's that's how we uh, become a part of the family of God. That's how we become uh, 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 in the body of Christ through the work of Christ. He don't necessarily believe that. He but I but I would rather you pull up something, allow him to uh, explain what uh, what he believed. But he don't believe in the imputation of God's of, 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 of Christ's righteousness. You know what I'm all saying? Right, all right, yeah. All right. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Christ and God, the father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace and peace or, or grace be to you and peace from God, the father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself or this is all introduction, gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil word, according to the will of God, our father, to him be glory forever. The perversion of the gospel. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. What do you think this is and what right think this is and how y'all differ? Right think this is basically those who are uh, of the uh, of the Jewish faith uh, try, trying to exclude people from the table instead of include. They were telling them that they had to follow Moses. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. But 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 and that's the reason why when the church showed up, uh, Peter and Barnabas pulled away from the table. Because uh, the table consisted of stuff that Moses, uh, the law of Moses, uh, 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 was against, basically. You know what I'm saying? So they, so these people, because he started asking, how did you receive the spirit? By the keeping of the law? Wait, hold on, my phone. Right. Oh, go ahead. Go, all right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. And, 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 that, and, that, was, and that was the whole issue. It, they, they were beefing. They were beefing about uh, uh, how, to, how to fellowship. Now, 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 let me say this again. I'm giving N.T. Wright's understanding of the book of Galatians. Don't ask me what I really think about it. <laughs> what do you think? You have the, uh, you have the, um, what understanding you have on, on that? The, the traditional one that we have as Protestants? Yeah, I do. I, I still have that, but I'm, but I'm looking into, but like I say, what intrigues me about, uh, the uh what intrigued me about uh NT Wright is this the way I see the way the way I see church today as opposed to how he's explaining it and the way he's explaining it is far more attractive than what I see today. Yeah because we have the ten, more, we have the most the sense that he deals with the ancient way and Kobe with, yeah, Jesus, and you said yeah. more the ancient way is unity, family, heaven on earth. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 the ancient what that's God's way. That's that was the whole purpose of uh that was the whole purpose of the gospel, you know what I'm saying, to bring us uh into one family. And, because you see how he explained this uh seed theology. <laughs> oh when he when it when 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 uh the scripture talks about the seed is single one yes, and it's yes, talking yes, about yes, Christ. Yes, yes. What he's saying is it's not talking about just Christ individual. It's talk, basically talking about the body family, the body of Christ. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and that includes, not exclude, but includes everybody uh, in, uh, in the family. If you go, and I've, and I've done this many times, go back to uh, the original uh, Abrahamic covenant, uh, Genesis chapter 12, uh, one, verses 1 through 3. Uh, basically, the uh, Abrahamic covenant is all inclusive, and the Abrahamic covenant is the goal. That's the goal of all believers. Of all. Discussion with the realness. What are you talking about? Or maybe that's a side conversation. Go ahead. You got some time, Elder? Yeah, I gotta go. I got. I gotta go. In, but I, I just came on just to just to throw throw that at y'all, and, and you know. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on and sharing that. Now I'm gonna play some of this here. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you, but is the new perspective on Paul? Secondly, how did this develop historically and kind of throughout this, Josh and I will be inserting some of our own uh, commentary on it. We've had uh, Dr. Matthew Bates on the show and he's advocated for the new perspective. Uh, Josh and I are going to come from the perspective uh, that we oppose the new perspective. However, uh, we, still view, we still view those who uh, adhere to, believe in the new perspective that uh, they are brothers and sisters in Christ. We love them. Uh, they're part of God's family, and so uh, this is an in-house discussion. Uh, but we do have some some legitimate, I think, concerns about the new perspective. So we're going to be discussing this from the old perspective, and uh, that will be my and Josh's perspective. Anyway, so we're going to – what is it? How did it develop historically? And then we're going to begin walking through some of the exegetical arguments for and against. Some of uh, – the, there's a lot of uh, sort of – redefinition of words. How does one define justified? How does one define righteousness and, uh, and, and grace? And how does one see hey. the final judgment and so on? There's, there's a whole lot of redefinition going on. Of course, uh, someone from the new perspective would say this isn't redefinition. This is actually discovering the old definition. And in fact, someone from the new perspective of Paul, uh, maybe we should call it the NPP, henceforth. Okay. Uh, an NPP proponent is is going to say, it's not really a new perspective. It's really an old perspective. Uh, it's the original perspective. So we'll, we'll talk through all of that. And Josh, I don't know how much of this we're going to get through. This could be, uh, this could actually be a couple of episodes. So yeah, it, uh, it, it would be our pleasure to do so. I think this is a subject that there's a lot of um, confusion on the subject of the new perspective. One being that we've got a lot of evangelicals who aren't seeing a lot of theological historicity in their own movements, and they're looking to Roman Catholicism. And then some of the leading evangelical scholars are the ones who are, you know, uh, I, I would say propagating the new perspective, emphasizing the new perspective. And it's just one hop, a skip, and a jump away from being Roman Catholic, in, in my estimation. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's something that we need to talk about. We need to think through. I think the new perspective actually offers really good insights that we should uh, keep uh, our attention on uh, as interpretive lenses. I think it's really important for us to pay attention to those things, uh, but also still disagreeing with, I think, the uh, the big thrust of the justification piece. Uh, yeah, Michael, and if we wanna... get to it... Good. Yeah, and if we get to it today, it, it might come on a part two if we do that next week, depending on how far we get today. But uh, we do have a I list of positive contributions oh, of uh, the new perspective of Paul. So, so we'll see if we get that. So uh, get to that. But there are a lot of uh, of things that I, th I think they do contribute to the conversation, even though I'm not swayed by the position. So, um, so, so let's jump into it. What exactly is the new perspective of Paul? I, I guess I'm not really using the NPP uh, lingo, but go ahead, Dunamis. No, nah, Grace. Don't come on here. We ain't talking about we ain't talking about authority and, and apocrypha. Don't come on here. Don't come on here harassing them, folk. Let them go on. Don't come on here. We're, no, we're, 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 let me hear what you got to say. No, I just want to um to um to uh, piggyback off of what Elder Tim was saying about communal, right? Anti is talking about communal, right? And um about anti uh the new perspective of dealing with looking back at things and anti rights works talking about community. And I was wondering, the brother just said in the video that the, this the the Protestant perspective, and then the Catholic or EO perspective. Right, the more ancient perspective, and I wanted and to Western and the uh, yeah. Well, most things said it ain't the whole Western, but uh, um, yeah, not the whole Western. 
So I think the Anglicans and Lutherans would hold on to more so the well, they not hold they they would still have held the ancient view from um from Paul and the apostles. But now I just wonder if that's the case, and he says you're accepting this to become more one step away to Catholicism Catholicism in the Protestant church. Did we do certain things to tear down the community, right? Like how? In terms of how, uh, <clears throat> to where you don't need to, you don't need, uh, let's say, an elder. You can just read the Bible on your own, right? You what? You don't need an elder to bring, you can just read the Bible on your own. And this oh, is just a- back to that authority. He's back to that authority. He goes, no, Brian, it's just dealing with the- because the whole Samuel Brian with a community with a family Brian, right? Uh, go ahead, I'm listening. With a family, is there a sense of like a father and things that keep order in the family? What do you think the Protestant Church and broke up the family doing this? What are you saying? Don't stop! Don't stop! Bother me with a hundred thousand questions. Ain't no, ain't no, I'm trying. I'm trying to get to a point that that it's a standpoint that folks are saying here come with the authority, right? But if we're talking about what makes a, 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 a healthy family structure, there is a level of hierarchy. There is a level of those that we look to for, for protection and for safety, right? Mm -hmm. But if we just focus on a level of individualism that we find in the West, that we find in the Protestant movement with humanism, that would lead toward things to the, the community. I'm not going to go far to the family, but the family kind of breaking up. That's not about this community set, it's about the individual. So and over time that caused all of that, Bruce. Um I'm calling you Bruce. You said the new Bruce. Protestantism called caused all of that? There's a I'm not saying it, it, it leads to the whole standpoint with a lot of the the thing we have with critical movements, with um certain views that will lead to a more modern view of the family. They said they said Luther didn't really want to start no whole branch of the church and the whole movement he wanted to reform just what was going on or fix what was going on in the catholic church um you 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 think we should have stayed under the authority that that's the problem it went too far protestant movement ain't perfect but they wanted to get away from stuff clearly they believe we believe that catholicism started doing that ain't bible yeah and there's a level of with his nine to nine to thesis but at the same time, Brian Wilson. That's rebellion going against authority because he no, wanted. I to I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the sample with, with the grievances that were raised, right? They won the Bible in a in the local languages. We have the Dobie rhymes where the Bible is in English, right? Mm -hmm. We have the whole standpoint with uh, indulgences. So it's kind of like the Protestants played the factor with Luther to uh, deal with issues within the Catholic Church, although we don't see these issues per se in the ether, um, the EO Church, right? So things were addressed that now are we just making straw men all these things so where they're not, they weren't addressed at all, but they were, and changes were made. And then with the Protestant movement, right, there's a level of going away from community to more to the individual. Right. Did you, did you join the Easter the EO yet? No. Because you've been sounding like an EO apologist. Where was the RCC at EO during slavery? Where? Wow. I'm, and this read, is read it, read it, read it, read, read Where? Read. Where were? Where were them folks when folks were down the street doing the crack era? Yeah, let me read this whole thing. Where was the but we, Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox during slavery and Jim Crow? Where were they when folk were dying on the streets during the crack era, but we need to go under their authority? I'll tell you. They, they, Somebody, they, some people may think they just went, the reformers went too far. far. And, and Brian, I can put, I, I'm not trying to change the topic, but it's just about community. And he brought up Protestantism and Catholicism. But it, it just raised a question about community. Do we have more community in one tradition versus another? You apparently think so. I mean, Brian. With the whole standpoint of family, right? Even dealing contraceptives, who would promote who would promote uh, contraceptives Protestants and childbirth? More. Protestants more than Catholics, I guess. Uh, you know, you don't need to have that many children, all that kind of stuff, right? Does yeah. population matter? And then to Alton's point, Alton, brother, I, I think you don't understand the movement 
And what's going on? And you're kind of arguing like an Israelite. Because the, the same, you're talking about slavery and Jim Crow, when there were Presbyterians that were pushing for slavery and Jim Crow. There were former, the, the uh, Puritans who were reformers to what they did to the natives that were on the land. So it, it becomes just a back and forth of what's going on. But eventually, right, in the Catholic Church, you do see um, Africans becoming clergy. In a Protestant tradition, where do we see that going on to where there's splits? Even in the Protestant tradition, dealing with uh, dealing with on Zulta Street, there's still levels of racism. So, so the EO, you have have, racism, the EO don't have well, well, I don't know. Aunt said the, Aunt the EO has African bishops and whatnot. Yeah, so there's a step. So it's like a whole thing. It's like a strong. If we want to go, we can go out, and I can make a presentation on the history. We can go through it. Going from the 1400s to the present time. After no one say you can't speak against it, I'm just saying in terms of community, the Protestant church is dying. You have Protestant ministers who, who support abortion. So the whole staff, when we're talking about community, what are we doing? And now here goes Brother KL. Jimmy, you don't understand the movement. The Pope is coming to us. Your Pope become more Protestant. And we don't even want, why is KL talking about the Pope? That's where the delusion comes in, Brian. I brought up the EO. I brought the Coptic, the Ethiopian. Yeah, I brought the Lutheran, got, the Anglican. Got, they got they got like multiple bishops, metropolitans. I don't know what you call them things. But go and I, I, I didn't. I just came on the just. I just came on to talk about with the whole sample. We're going to talk about community. Who promotes more community? What what, church, what church promotes more family? What traditions? What that got to do with the... Because the, the Elder Tim was talking about with traditions and the level of racism and whatnot. So that's just a question. Oh, that's right, Elder Tim. He come to... Oh, oh, Tim, I'm boy, not trying, no, I'm not trying to bang on Elder Tim. It's just a standpoint. The guy brought up a Protestantism, right? To not expect the new perspective on Paul. Then with justification, things of the sort. So we're going to talk about community and whatnot. Is there a level of certain traditions that cause more division? Oh, Kobe, you 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 ready? Well, let, let me play some video while I, I ain't care about at what are you talking about? The Protestant movement is dying. People are leaving the church. EO and Catholic on the rise. Protest, um, oh, oh father, oh father. Now we yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, also Pentecostals on the rise too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's what I'm saying. It's like uh, the whole standpoint is the folks just seeing one thing and there's more to it. What traditions are dying out? All right, Maybe we have to go back to the old, more ancient way. Like either way, I don't know. If we say NPP, we mean new perspective of Paul. <laughs> anyway, but but what precisely is it? Well, uh, what it begins with is we know that Paul did. Uh, it, this is what an NPP proponent would say. We know that Paul uh, did not uh, did not oppose Judaism as a religion uh, as a religion of works. Uh, and N.T. Wright will call it the sort of works contract idea. And, and, you know, that maybe we've viewed through Protestant lenses uh, by virtue of our, our conflict with Roman Catholicism. You can even hear it in Josh's words that, that Josh is opposed to Roman Catholicism. You just heard him say it. So, uh, so we've just, as Protestants, and I'm speaking as if I'm a, someone with NPP, uh, as Protestants, we've viewed this through the lenses of a 16th century conflict uh, with Roman Catholicism, and uh, it, and that Judaism, in truth, and this is based on Second Temple literature. Now, Second Temple literature, uh, th this is basically literature uh, during the during the period, kind of a little bit after Daniel, leading up to uh, just around and before Jesus' time. And, and what N.T. Wright and, uh, and some of these other guys are going to say is, hey, you can't view this from the perspective of a 16th century conflict with the Roman Catholic Church. You have to view this through the eyes of a Jew and how they would have viewed things. And to which Josh and I say, say yeah. yes and amen. Yeah, certainly. Let, what is the historical understanding? And they'll say, well, we've had it all wrong. Where Protestants have said, you know, the problem was the Jews were all a bunch of legalistic Pharisees, 
they say, well, actually they weren't. And, and Judaism was a religion of grace. And Paul was never opposed to Judaism for the reason that it was, say, too legalistic. For the uh, That wasn't the problem. The problem, well, that depends on which new perspective of Paul proponent I, you ask. Can I jump in ask, and give the covenants positions? Sure. Yeah. So yeah, like in the garden, we have what would be called a covenant of works. Adam and Eve are in the garden and they're told, hey, as long as you don't do this thing, you're in right standing with me, right? Uh, once that covenant is broken, Christ institutes this covenant of grace for all people everywhere. From that moment, when man was not able to fulfill the covenant of works, another covenant was put into place, which is the covenant of grace. Uh, that covenant of grace was for Abraham, for Noah, for Moses. It, it was for all people because none of us could be deemed righteous by our works. Abraham wasn't deemed righteous uh, because he circumcised himself and his kids. We see that in Galatians and in Romans. He was justified when he looked to God and it, cre it was credited to him as righteousness. And then uh, the second Adam gets on the scene and he fulfills the covenant of works. He does all of the right things. And because he did all of the right things, he has e earned eternal salvation. And those who have looked forward uh, in the in the Old Testament, they looked forward uh, uh, to God who is going to make them righteous. Jesus Christ comes. They are united with him. Uh, and those who look back, that's us in the new covenant, are looking back to what, what Christ has done. Uh, we are also in that same covenant of grace. So this is typically the way that people in the covenant theology space will talk about this. Dispensationals, this would probably be foreign language to some of them. Um, but this is typically the way that Reformed theology talks about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, hey, we have a question from David McGuire. Uh, he says, is this, he says, this is, is this RC in a different look? Is, in, other words, in other words, is the new perspective of Paul the same thing as Roman Catholicism? Now, I know why you would ask that question. It does kind of look that way. I mean, there are certainly some differences uh, you know, a Roman Catholic is going to be more into Mariology, is going to be more into praying the rosary, is going to be more into some of those unique Roman Catholic characteristics. But on the issue of justification, it does seem pretty similar. Now, N.T. Wright, N.T. Wright has written some phenomenal books. I actually really uh, enjoy the writings of N.T. Wright. Uh, I, I think he challenges my thinking in lots of different ways, um, but I disagree with him strongly on this. And so here's what N.T. Wright says uh, about a final judgment. And this one just, man, Josh, this one makes me a little nervous. I'll be honest with you. Here's what he says. Uh, he says, the final judgment according to works was quite clear for Paul as indeed for Jesus. Paul, in company with mainstream Second Temple Judaism, affirms that God's final judgment uh, will be in accordance with the entirety of a life led, in accordance, in other words, with works. Man, and, and I even put this in our notes, that does sound a lot like Roman Catholicism. So, uh, man, I'd love to get down to the exegesis of Romans chapter 2, because this is uh, one of the major arguments for NPP is Romans chapter 2, where it does in some ways sound like maybe Paul is saying that you're justified by works. And uh, if we get time, we'll assess that text in detail. Uh, but the new perspective, as well as the Roman Catholic perspective, will say uh, that, and a lot of people don't know this about Roman Catholicism, that they will say that initial justification actually is by faith. And that's also what the new perspective will say. Initial justification is by faith, but you essentially have to work in order to stay in the covenant or else you lose it. Now, now as a, a Protestant, a, a Reformed Protestant, as a non-new perspective guy, I'm going to say, man, that, that really looks like a merit-based justification if you have to work in order to keep it. What I want to say is an old perspective guy it, is that faith and works are both necessary for justification. However, works, and here's the key, guys, don't pause it there. You have to finish the sentence. Works are not causal for justification. They're part of the overall equation. Just, if, I have, if I say, yes, I have faith, but I have no works in my life, I'm going to say, well, your faith was a dead faith, so it wasn't even a real faith. True faith 
works. And so, uh, and so works are going to be a part of the equation because they're the natural fruit of faith that's genuine. However, I stop short of saying that works actually are part of meriting our eternal justification. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where I get nervous with the new perspective. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that they say initial justification is by faith alone. But if I have to work in order to stay in the covenant, at the end of the day, it feels a whole lot like I earned my salvation. It feels a little bit like, and this would be a crass way to say it, and I know my NPP friends would never say it this way, but it, it sounds almost uh, almost like Jesus needed my help saving me. And I just, I just get nervous uh, about that. And to answer, come back to the Roman Catholic question, that the the NPP perspective, it's it's going to sound a lot like Roman Catholicism when it comes to justification. There are going to be some differences on other things, and Roman Catholics are going to tend to be uh, more sacramental uh, and some other things. But on the issue of justification, man, Josh, I, I think they sound pretty close. Yeah, I think that on this issue, it's really important that we look at some of the other, um, uh, like, it's important that we don't get uh, gets entrenched into nuanced positions here. Because again, I think if you look at Galatians and what Paul was writing to the people of Galatia, I think you can make the argumentation, okay, we know that the Jewish people should not have been looking at their works as their righteousness. They shouldn't have done that, right? And theologically, that that ought not to be the case. Um, and I think that, that we can say, if we have that interpretive lens, okay, um, that this is not what the Jewish people were doing, that can help us read the book of Galatians. I don't think that necessarily brings us to a view of justification where our works have to be examined for the, f the fulfillment of that justification. Like to your point, justification is something that takes place by faith. And as a byproduct of that, there's this natural outflowing. I love the Lutherans. They say that there's two different systems of Coram Mundo and Coram Deo, right? Coram Mundo is my righteousness before God. Quorum Deo is my righteousness before men. My righteousness before God is secured the moment I have faith in Jesus, right? I have the righteousness of Christ Jesus, right? I'm, I'm pure, spotless, boom. But then my righteousness before men, that gets fleshed out. That gets worked out in my kind of day-to-day -day activity, the way that I, I care for my brothers. There's something, the work of sanctification is still taking place. That being said, when I look to what does faith, the faith that we're instructed to have look like, I look to the hall of faith. We, it's a passage that we often quote in Hebrews chapter 11, where it lists out a bunch of individuals who had faith, the kind of faith that we're encouraged to have. And it's not faithfulness. And again, what this seems to do is sneak works in through the back door. Jesus has saved you, but now through good works, you've got to maintain that salvation. When you look at the hall of faith, you see Moses, guy who murdered a dude, and then also didn't get to come into the promised land because he struck a rock. You see Samson, a guy who broke every single rule possible, touching dead stuff, hanging out in vineyards. You know, he's, you know, uh, hanging out with Gentile women. Uh, he's got all kinds of bad activities. He cuts his hair, things, all that he's not supposed to do, does them in a single chapter. And he's called a man of faith. Rahab, the prostitute, is mentioned in this passage as a woman of faith that we're supposed to put our, 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 uh, the, the model of our example after these individuals. Now, these individuals were not individuals of faithfulness. They were people of faith. And again, I hope people hear me very clearly. I am not encouraging what would be called antinomianism, which says, you know, live however you want. What I am saying is that we are justified by faith in Jesus. And again, the way that I read Hebrews is you're trusting Jesus. And because you're trusting Jesus, there's lots of persecution coming upon the church of Jesus Christ. Never stop trusting Jesus. If you stop trusting Jesus, you don't get to enter into that rest. Trust mm -hmm. Jesus. So it's not faithfulness, it's faith. Uh, and I think that Hebrews really illustrates that quite well. Um, so anyway, so I'd say read, read all of the corpus of Scripture in context. Don't just say, well, because Romans is written to a specific audience, therefore let's obliterate the Protestant view of justification. I don't think yeah. that's helpful or fruitful. That's good. So, so just to revisit it, NPP is going to say Paul wasn't against Judaistic legalists. That wasn't the problem. Uh, he was against Judaism for different reasons. E.P. Sanders, we'll talk about him in a little bit. He was against Judaism because it was not Christianity. 
uh, Jimmy Dunn and N.T. Wright, or James Dunn and N.T. Wright, uh, they're, they're going to say, well, he was against Judaism for a different reason, not merely because it wasn't Christianity, uh, but because it was too uh, exclusive and, uh, and that God was opening the doors. And, uh, and they're going to focus, especially N.T. Wright and James Dunn, they're going to focus on these so-called badges of membership. Uh, and this would be circumcision and food laws and what Sabbath and so on, things that identified one as a Jew. And so, uh, and this will come down to the definitions, and we'll get to this some more, uh, but, but when an NPP advocate looks at a, a phrase like works of the law in the Apostle Paul's writings, they're going to see that not as the full scope of the moral law, but they're going to see it as speaking about these specific badges of covenant membership. And what this all comes down to is, what is the question, and this is where NPP and OPP, Old Perspective of Paul, are going to really come in contrast, where uh, OPP is going to be asking the question, how can sinners find a gracious God? NPP is going to be asking the question, on what terms can Gentiles gain entrance into the people of God? And so NPP is much more, uh, you know, OPP is looking at salvation from wrath you know, from judgment, from hell, from sin, from, from death. From God. <laughs> okay, yeah, depending yeah. on how you articulate that, right? And that would actually be one of the criticisms. Um, <laughs> but, uh, okay, so OPP is going to be looking more uh, on a just salvation question. How can I be saved from wrath? And, uh, and NPP is going to say to that, like, hey, guys, that wasn't even the, question, the primary question they were asking back then. They weren't asking primarily, how can I find a gracious God? They were asking, how can I be part of the covenant people? And so they're going to look at these badges of membership, and they're, they're going to be saying, okay, what Paul was opposed to was the Judaistic usage of these badges of membership. Hey, uh, don't limit it to the circumcised. Don't limit it to the Sabbath keepers. Don't limit it to the new moon festival keepers. And don't limit it to the, uh, you know, food law, food law people. That's a terrible way to say it. Anyway, don't limit it to these Vegans. badges of membership. God's opening it up. So Paul's real problem was, was with the ethnocentricity of Judaism because God was opening the door to the Gentiles. So, so um, those are the three yeah, views real succinctly. Give, give us those three views once again, real succinctly. Okay. Uh, three views. Uh, I've got new perspective and old perspective. What are the three no, views? Well, when, I say, when I say three, I just meant those three. Okay. The one that uh, uh, Paul's objection to Judaism because it's not Christianity. That's one of the okay. perspectives in the new perspective. The other okay, one yeah, is yeah. that Paul objects to Judaism because its boundary markers are, are uh, too exclusive. And then the third perspective, and this is all within the new perspective category, that Paul deliberately misrepresents Judaism as a religion of works. And we know this because Paul... Uh, uh, counters our second reconstruction of Jewish soteriology. So uh, uh, those are the three different visions that we're going to kind of be talking about today or the three. Uh, yeah. Things. And so you're beginning to touch on how the new perspective developed historically. And it's not as though no one was ever talking about any of these things before. Uh, they did back to the 19th century just a little bit. But, uh, but where this really caught fire in the Christian world and beginning in the scholarly world was with E.P. Sanders in 1977. Uh, E.P. Sanders was, was a theological liberal. He describes himself like this as liberal, a liberal, modern, secularized Protestant. In 1977, he released a book called Paul and Palestinian Judaism. I didn't like and, any of those words. <laughs> I know, <laughs> exactly. That's so wrong, bro. I think... Uh... Okay, I, I'm, I'm with sorry. you. A secularized Protestant? No thanks. I, <laughs> I'm I'm cool with sacred, right? Like, uh, let's uh, anyway. So, 1977, he releases this book. Uh, he uses a term. I don't think we have we talked about covenantal nomism. Okay, they, we, we've talked about the principle of it that God entered into His people, uh, uh, into covenant with His people by grace, and yet they stay in the covenant by works. So we've talked about that, but we didn't give it a name. Well, E.P. Sanders gave it a name, covenantal nomism. And so uh, this, this is what you're going to see. And, and this is actually one of the positive contributions of, uh, of NPP, what I'm about to say, is, is that they, they tend to pay a great deal of, of attention to God's work 
on the broader scale with an entire community of people, with the entire family of God, where he moves from Israel to a fuller, inclusive view of salvation, the people of God, the church, Jew and Gentile. You know, we in the Protestant world, and I'll speak specifically of the North American Protestantism, uh, our our Western culture, which is so individualized, is so me-centered, it kind of becomes a me and Jesus, and I don't go to church on Sunday because church for me is on the golf course or out on my canoe fishing or whatever, and I meet with God. And, And so we've turned religion into such like a me and Jesus and a personal relationship with Jesus thing that I think... Uh, NPP brings a much needed corrective. But Protestants that are really true to uh, the Protestant tradition are never going to say church isn't that important and it's just about you and Jesus. Right. That's actually uh, a caricature that is, uh, it, it is a character, but it's also grown out of sort of a false practice of Protestantism where it, like, it, it would be the worst example of Protestantism. That's, that's a growth out of secular modernism inside right. of protestantism right the thing that we weren't really fond of earlier exactly so uh but we start with uh uh with ep sanders 1977 he comes out with his book a lot of people start reading it especially in the scholarly world and then you have a guy um i i've heard his name pronounced and i forget it literally every time it's not my fault he is from helsinki okay um the university of helsinki to be exact heike Raisanen, and um He's the one who basically says Paul's just contradicting himself all over the place. Well, the guy ended his life as an agnostic uh, and really didn't speak for Christianity. Uh, I don't think any of us would really take him seriously. Okay, <laughs> James Dunn and N.T. Wright, these are the ones who popularized it. And Matt, they have both done some phenomenal things. They're both British yeah, scholars, okay. uh, Dunn, a Methodist, and Wright, an Anglican. Uh, they're the ones who popularized it, and they're the ones who really zeroed it in on um, – you know, contra E.P. Sanders, uh, they're going to say, hey, it's Paul's problem with Judaism is not merely that it's not Christianity. Paul's problem with Judaism is that that it is ethnocentric and that uh, that they're zeroed in on these badges of membership and God's opening it up. And so that's really uh, that's really where they were at. So here's Tom Schreiner, who is OPP but he's characterizing the views of Dunn and Wright. He says, Paul's complaint with his Jewish opponents centered on their exclusivism, exclusivism, nationalism, and ethnocentrism. The Jews insisted the Gentiles had to become part of the Jewish people in order to be, to be the people of God. So they emphasized Jewish distinctives and boundary markers like circumcision, food laws, and Sabbath. Uh, so, so that's kind of the historical development of the new perspective of Paul. Uh, any comments on that? Or, Josh, let me come back to this original question uh, that, that kind of even led into the historical question. What do you think? Do you think this is a fair assessment that uh, that Protestants, we view it as like the central question Paul is answering when he's talking about justification, especially, is how can sinners find a gracious God versus the new perspective where where they're asking on what terms can G- Gentiles gain entrance into the people of God? Do you think that they have a case? Do you think that there a case can be made that like, you know what? People weren't really concerned about getting saved from hell. People weren't really concerned about assuaging the wrath. Go ahead, Dumas. You want to say something? No, I'm just saying. I I know folks might, we've talked about multiple times, right? Bring the crux of what he's saying. He brought he's brought up Catholic church multiple times. And I feel like there's a level of broad brushing. And this go will go into how we view things in the doctrines that we received. I.e. the purpose of the scripture and as uh, the authority. That's all I'm gonna say, but as the video's going on, it ties into it. You back with that authority. Because Marie, at the end of the day. When he talks about works of the law, is he talking about all works? Or he's talking about, at a, from a cultural understanding, the law and the works that the Jews are doing? Because I, it just seems that the two brothers have a more modern, more Protestant view. Not an ancient view to what Paul is addressing. All right, y'all heard that. propitiation and 
any of these things. Those are just pagan concepts. What they were concerned was, how can I get in with these people? How can I be included in this uh, community of covenant? Do you, do you think that's a fair objection by new perspective? No, I think covenantal gnomism is exactly what Paul is condemning in Galatians 3, where he says you started in the spirit, trusting God, and then you're trying to finish in the flesh by receiving within yourself circumcision. You're trying to do works to maintain or continue in your state of justification. I do think that it is a probably a right interpretive lens to look at the book of Galatians as primarily a book of um, ethno-exclusivity, right? To say uh, there's an ethnic people group that says, hey, uh, we get the gospel. You actually have to become a part of our ethnic people group through circumcision and observation of dietary restrictions and festivals and new moons and all these other things. Additionally, you should view these things as well the way that we do. They can be part of our people. And when you become a part of our people, you can you know, uh, uh, be justified. And, th and this was not I think an unforeign idea to the Jewish people. I mean, Jesus even told the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, or I think it was the Pharisees, you, you travel far and wide to make a proselyte, and then you make him twice the son of hell as you are. And what is a proselyte? But it's a Gentile person, you know, someone who who's not ethnically Jewish, Wait, can I speak to that who real believes quick? in the God of Israel, right? For their justification. Ahead, right? Right, so the idea of making... Alton, why don't Jimmy just say we need to come on the RCC? At least I can respect and for to tell us and for telling us to come on the EO instead of trying to back door us. Pause. Alton, what are you talking about? The, the this is where it's weird, Alton. I don't think you understand the church history. That this is what the this is so what you're saying, Alton, is basically that the church, the early church was wrong on their view of justification. The church fathers didn't understand it right. So it had nothing to do with EO or RCC is what the church taught. That the Protestants come later on in the Reformation and say we don't we don't go by that. If we were to go to and now you know, like Elder Mike said, we're open for discussion. But if we were to go into church history, would the early church say you're justified by faith alone? Would they stand by <laughs> would they stand by tenets of the five solas? Or are those just later things that the Protestants do to go against the church? The tradition that was passed down from the apostles in the early church. Before there's a before there's an EO, before there's an RC4, there's a schism. You're not gonna say that the Trinity is RCC, you're gonna say the Trinity is taught by the church. So I don't understand why you can't you don't get that. All right, fair use. I think I think we might be in a good place here. So much. The, the sort of undesigned coincidence of it, if you like, is almost a, um, a theological argument for, for its own validation as it stands. So let me go back to 32. He told me the logical situation. This is about a community that is refusing to worship the gods, is claiming the Jewish exemption and is getting in trouble for it. And Paul says, if that's the way you're playing the game, you are pretending that the Messiah has not died and been raised. The new age has not been inaugurated. We are still back in the old world where Jews are marked out by circumcision. And the whole point of Galatians is that the new thing has happened. This is where the so-called apocalyptic school gets it right, even though they make many other mistakes, that the new thing has happened. As a result, God's new world has been inaugurated. And the marks that you bear of that are clear right the way through, the sharing the faith of Abraham, walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, and so on and so on. There's um. You know, something that you've been writing about for some time about Galatians, and obviously it's in your Galatians commentary, which I think is maybe a little startling to some people. It was to me when I first heard it. By the way, we're about half an hour in, so I'm just okay. going to I'm going to look for cues as sure. to what, when you get sick of me. Um, <laughs> the, the promises were made to Abraham and his seed. Um, mm -hmm. And then you go on essentially to explicate in your translation that is his family. So your argument is that the single seed thing that's going on in Galatians 3 isn't a single person, the Messiah. I mean, it might be because there's a single person, then there's a single family, but it, it's it's a family. The, the argument here is ultimately yeah. there's one family. There's one yes. Abrahamic family. 
Yes, the word sperma, meaning seed, regularly means family, uh, which is a collective noun. So you can talk about a single family, but of course, a family includes many people. And this is one of the classic examples where Paul uses the word Christos to mean Messiah, square brackets, and his people, like he does at the beginning of 1 Corinthians 1, when he says, is Christ divided, mm. when the, the, they're following different teachers and so on. He says, you're, you're cutting up the Messiah. And likewise, in 1 Corinthians 12, as the body is one and has many members, uh, so too is the Messiah. So he can see the Messiah as both the individual Jesus and as the one who sums up God's people in himself, so that what is true of him is true of them and vice versa. I first tumbled to this, ooh, back when I was teaching in Montreal. I remember doing a Bible study with some folks from the church that Maggie and I were attending at the time. And we were tripping up over Galatians 3 because it seemed to be so artificial. Yes. And I was working on it anyway for scholarly Marie, reasons. Can I read some again and comment? Verse 16 of chapter 3 goes exactly with the very difficult verse 20, um, well, 19, 20, 21, um, but then particularly with verse 29. What happened? Hello? Yeah, no, I was saying, let me, can I read Super Dan's comment? Go ahead. Yeah, at Alton, myself as an unofficial Dooming translator, he hasn't made a stance on whether or not the RCC is the defendant authority to follow, but there are doctrines that, and documents that the early church held to that modern Protestants reject. He's asking if we if we can, should con reconsider accepting those documents and doctrines before there was even an official distinct EO or RCC. That's the whole thing. That's what I'm saying, Alton. That you're not understanding the history right, because no one are you going to say that the Trinity is a is a Catholic doctrine or a doctrine of the Church? Are you going to say Jesus as eternal being is a Catholic doctrine or a doctrine of, of, of the church? So when you get into this, start going to a Catholic, what, and that's not a good stance, and that's causing division in the body of Christ. Because even as Protestants, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you believe in an invisible church. That anyone can belong to any tradition, but as long as they hold to core essentials. That's so it shouldn't be an issue with you. All right, um, okay, yes. And you have to remind yourself the whole time that the argument of chapter three is designed to come into land at verse 29. If you belong to the Messiah, then you are Abraham's seed. And in the middle of that is the very strange and dense argument, verses 19, 20, and 21 where the law is given until the seed arrives. And the law was given through the mediator, who is Moses, but the mediator is not the mediator of the single seed. But God is one, and therefore, as in Romans 3.30, God desires the single family. God is one, and therefore, he will justify Jew and Gentile the same way by faith. You, this is where you really do need Romans 3. Not the 3 mediator of the one means yeah, the one... Exactly community the, the one, one seed the one seed family yes right. exactly okay um, because moses has given a torah which specifically says to the jews you've got to keep separate yes so so if you say that torah is the thing that matters you will end we up with two families, here, right? a jewish family and a gentile family and paul says but god is one leo if, if I, I believe leo's in here oh i'll hit him on the arm um, i'll hit him on my jack why you use N.T. right for what reason yesterday? And the implication, as in Romans 3, is, and therefore he desires the single family. And that's what the rest of the passage goes on to explain. So again, the separation of Torah was a good and valid separation. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, and going to Romans, the law is good. Well, yeah. Yeah. We're, the, we're the problem, um, not, yes. not the law. Well, that's right. And the problem of Torah was the material on which it was working. That's the point of 2 Corinthians 3, right. where he contrasts the effect of his ministry with the effect of Moses' ministry. And many people think Paul is contrasting himself with Moses, but he's not. He and Moses are both doing right God's work, why? but he is able to address people who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, whereas Moses was addressing people whose hearts were hardened, he says. 
um, and and all sorts of things play out from that. So does Torah um, have a kind of an unexpected purpose in the sense that you can read the Tanakh or the Torah and you can get the sense that this is a permanent community, although the blessings and cursings, there is there are hints at the end of Deuteronomy. Wait a minute, there's something after, but you can still go a long way before you see that. And then yeah. when when the Messiah is crucified, it's almost like, oh, wait, there was a deeper purpose for the for the Torah, which is yeah. to reveal who we are, to reveal that no law yeah. other than the Messiah would be enough. Yeah. Well, but, yes, but that's hidden some it's to some degree, I think. Isn't Absolutely. it? It's not. A, there's an apocalypse in the in the yes. crucifixion there is, and resurrection. There is, there's an apocalypse that reveals more of the purpose of the Torah. There is isn't. I want to ask you and Pastor Mai Mai, what does one new man mean, Leo? Indeed. I think I argued many years ago that what we get in the Gospels, among many other things, is a new hermeneutic, a new lens through which to read the Old Testament, rather like Jesus explaining the scriptures to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, that in the light of the crucified and risen Messiah, oh my goodness, now the story makes sense. Now we can see this, of course, was where it was all going, but we can also understand why we couldn't understand it before, because it only makes sense with this key. And that one of the fascinating things about Paul's theology is the enormous sense that it makes of so much that the sort of undesigned coincidence of it, if you like, is almost a, um, a theological argument for, for its own validation as it stands, so that um, the, 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 the difficulty has been in the modern period that we've all lived in the shadow of Immanuel Kant with his yes. uh, great big ethic hanging in the sky. Numenor all... phenomena distinction and religion right. is, you know, non-rational. And I'm Absolutely. Sorry, right. but, but with ethics as this um, uh, categorical imperative bearing down on us. And so we think, oh, the law is forcing me to be this and to do that. And then here comes the gospel and says, we don't need to bother about all that stuff. And and that's a very modern um, dilution and distortion of what Paul is actually saying. All right. So so works of the law, erga ta, uh, ta namu, tu, tu, yeah. no, tu namu. Um, I mean, this is what you're saying here is, it's going to be shocking to a lot of people, but I think a lot of scholars have Scholars, I think, have caught up with the fact that this is not yeah. the, the natural law or just general goodness, that this is exactly. Torah distinctiveness, right? Works of the law. Absolutely. And, and everybody in the ancient world who knew anything about Jews knew that Jews kept a lazy day once a week, that they did strange operations on their baby boys, and that they, they didn't eat the normal food of most people because pork was the meat of ordinary common people. Um, so people were puzzled that the Jews did this and they knew that it marked them out. And we've got many texts from Greco-Roman authors as well as Jewish authors who make that very clear. These are the works of Torah. And there's a famous text in Qumran which refers to the works of Torah which interestingly mark out one Jewish sect against the others. In other words, they are not simply trying to amass um, brownie points for uh, in, in God's um, final audit. They are saying, if we keep Torah this way, this will show that we really are the people whom God will vindicate when he finally acts. So the works of Torah are specific markers of a community, which then mark out that community as the ones who will know that they're the real, the real deal uh, as they look forward. Maybe our own sociology is captured uh, catching up with Galatians in that a lot of commentary work is done when there's a general British consensus, there's a general American consensus. And now that we're so hyper factionalized, the well, Essenes, well. you know, we know people who are like these groups in their own way. There's different markers. There might be MAGA hats, there might be coexist bumper stickers, uh -huh. but we all have uh -huh. our little works of the law that uh -huh. the, the, uh -huh. are different families. Yes, that that's that's very true. And And the neighbors will notice if you don't fly the flag, as it were, um, I mean, we, we've had in Oxford the last month, uh, the, the month of June was designated in Britain as, as Gay Pride Month, um, and or even just Pride Month, um, and flags all over the place. And if a college doesn't hang out that flag, then some of its own students will be getting onto the governing body to say, uh, why aren't you part of this team, whatever. Now, irrespective of the issue, it's that kind of thing. What flag are you flying? What what outward signs are you showing that you belong to the movement which we all think you ought to belong to now? And that, I don't think it's a healthy way to do politics in a, in a democratic society. Yes. Actually, Western um, civilization, who has bewitched you? I, that we well, do feel well, increasingly yes, bewitched. Yes. Don't we? 
<laughs> there is a bit of that. So there's this curse of the law material. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, give us a sense of what the curse of the law is. And cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. This is a verse that I've struggled with a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so well, can you speak about that a little? Yeah, it, it, people have often gone to that and said, there you are. Um, Paul knew that Jesus of Nazareth had been uh, crucified, therefore he was cursed by the law, therefore he couldn't be the Messiah. But then he discovered that God had raised Jesus from the dead, so he said, oh, therefore the law was wrong to curse him, therefore we have to do away with the law and have a different way of salvation. That is an incredible low-grade distortion of what Paul is actually saying. Paul is here retrieving the entire narrative from Deuteronomy 27 to 30. Well, 27 to 30 plus 32 gives you the covenantal story that if Israel gets everything right, then the blessings will follow. And if, every, if Israel gets everything wrong, and Deuteronomy says, which, by the way, we know is going to happen, then the curses will follow, and the worst of the curses is exile. And it's only after exile, Deuteronomy 30, that God will then uh, transform your heart so that you will love him from your heart, and then things will go forward. And that narrative from the end of Deuteronomy is appealed to by Jews in Paul's day, like Josephus, as a long-range prophecy of how Israel's story is going to work out. It's not a bit of abstract moralism, which could apply at, at any point in time. Oh, it's yeah. very definitely a narrative, which is then, of course, picked up. Oh, no, yeah. I'm not at the computer, but what's going on, Brian? Nothing. Why you brought up MT right? Uh, for third race theory, as well as uh, to showcase his views on Paul's identity in Acts, Romans, as well as Galatians. So, what you understand him as saying? Uh, that first, that understanding that Jews and Gentiles had their own their own culture and beliefs and practices, mm -hmm. and then. Once Paul's mission comes on the scene, uh, he was preaching Christ to everyone, understanding that we are one in Christ. That concept in itself showcased a new man and that those that were Jew and Gentile are renewed within that new man or that new identity, which is a Christian, as you want to title it. Thus, the understanding of what the third race is. If you look at 1 Corinthians uh, 10, mm -hmm. and then there is where the identity marker, so to speak, of what a Christian was is what Paul took on. That's what I'm speaking to. Not necessarily that no one becomes a Jew anymore or no one is a Gentile anymore. They still know who they are. It's just they have an understanding that there is a, a higher identity and belief system that they hold to, and that's being a Christian. And that's the reason I brought that up. Okay. Um. All right, go go ahead, go ahead, um, Kofi. What you looking like? In the story of um, the books of Samuel and Kings, this is how it plays out. This is why Israel goes into exile, and so on and so forth. So what Paul is saying is not, uh, oh, how stupid the law was to curse Jesus, but hey, God gave these promises to Abraham, but. Yeah, what's going on? Sorry, it took me so long. That meeting took forever. It was only supposed to last 30 minutes. It took two hours. Um, but I, I, I don't even know where we're at in this anymore. I don't know if we're still uh, getting into what the new perspective is. Um, Some of the I, new perspective, and, 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 and he was saying something about, um, he was saying something about Jews keeping their tradition in the book on Galatians uh okay okay yeah so so this is something that i think should and be he known. even said in the oh that's a whole nother thing and Wright even said in the video that 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 um gentiles were were, were were keeping some laws but go ahead yeah gentiles were definitely keeping some laws i i, I uh i showed you something the other day about about that i don't know if it was yesterday or whatever but yeah, uh, I'll, 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 yeah i'm gonna share something real quick i'm gonna share something different but um it all okay. goes together so all this needs to be established, right? And I brought this up a long time ago, maybe maybe about a year or two ago, uh, after I saw a video from Dr. Heiser, he actually interviewed uh, this guy, uh, Kent Yinger, right? He interviewed him talking about the new perspective on Paul. And that's what kind of got me into it. Um, 
And so this is a good introduction and it gives uh, sort of the beginnings of the view all the way onto what it is now, right? And, and there's something specifically that I wanna, I wanna bring out. And the thing is this, uh, Elder Tim actually mentioned something about it earlier. And he was saying that N.T. Wright says that it's, it's not really um, a matter of getting to heaven, right? That we're, we're looking for heaven on earth, that's really important. And N.T. Wright, most times before he begins a lot of his lectures, he actually likes to say like, heaven is important, but it's not the end of the world. Right, because there's other things that should be done. Now, the thing, the fundamental difference between everybody when we talk about this is what we expect of, um, uh, I guess, salvation. Whenever we're looking at soteriology, originally the way the Jews looked at it, it was not a matter of getting to heaven. It was a matter of um, putting heaven here on on earth. They weren't trying. I mean, they didn't. Most of them didn't even know what was going to happen in the afterlife. They were worried about making heaven here on earth. Right. So when we think of soteriology, when we ask a Christian, what must you do to be saved? They're saying, believe in Jesus Christ, right? When we ask a Jew, you know, how are you saved? How are you justified? We think of the Pharisees, right? Galatians 2.16 says, um, but knowing that a person is not justified by the works of the law, if by faith in Jesus, and we have believed in Jesus so that uh, we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because the works of the law, no human shall be justified. And we think, see, no law keeping them. Pharisees had it wrong. You can't keep the law to be saved. However, that's never, ever, ever what it was about. Let me make this a little bit bigger so people can see maybe. Should probably make it smaller too. Maybe like this. Oh, I was looking on something else with Pope Gregory. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. What was I? Okay. Right here. This is what's, what the whole argument is right here. Traditionally, justified by the works of the law points to Jewish legalism. But if Judaism was not particularly legalistic, what in the world is Paul talking about? This part is very important because this is what Protestants are missing. Most people, in fact, whenever we're thinking about Paul and what he came to change or what switched up or whatever. If, in fact, Jew, uh, Jewish theology of the first century was not particularly legalistic, as I showed with that Talmudic quote and how uh, the Sanhedrin can render unclean foods clean, it wasn't about legalism if they can do something like that. We're going to have to reread these and other central passages and possibly re-envision the Christian understanding of salvation. If the Pharisees were not self-righteous legalists, what were they like? And why does Jesus contrast the publican with the Pharisee? That's something interesting to look at. If Judaism did not have an earning mentality, an earning, right? Earning your own righteousness. If it didn't do that, what was the point of the parable of the worker in the vineyard? If it's not grace versus works, then what? And if Jews did not teach salvation by works, but salvation by grace, why was Paul so worked up, right? So you go down, uh, all this is kind of important, but this last paragraph is something that I really want to emphasize. As we'll see, most proponents of the new perspective on Paul are not out to overturn the Reformation. Nevertheless, you can now see why the understanding of first century Judaism makes a huge difference in the understanding of Paul and, Christ and the Christian gospel and why the MPP might be a big deal. This is very, very important right here. So next time you read about the legalism of the Jews or hear a message referring to the Pharisees trying to earn salvation by the works, a red flag should pop up. No one in scholarship has thought that salvation by works is what it takes for like 50 years, ever since E.P. Sanders. And speaking of E.P. Sanders, being that we consider him like the founder of this, right? I got to let you know, you know, a lot of people don't understand this through N.T. Wright, but it's way deeper than that. And I kind of want to bring out the line of succession in this teaching and where it all stemmed from. This begins, it, it actually all starts at Oxford, but there was this gentleman by the name of C.H. Dot. C.H. Dodd, and he taught something. Um, I don't need this anymore, so I'll just stop. He taught yeah, something. What year? How you? When you talking about back in what? Um, when back in transition, uh, King James? No, well, he, no, he was uh, no back in the King James. They didn't want to learn nothing about the Jews. They didn't like him. But um, back, back he was born in 1884. He was born in 1884. Uh, he, he I, I forgot the exact year. He he graduated in 1906. I forgot when he actually published his dissertation or whatever. But the thing is, he came up with something that was called realized eschatology. And what this means is that he didn't think that Jesus came to uh, talk about some future apocalypse and and 
heaven and the afterlife or any of that stuff. He believed that Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God here on earth today. So when Jesus said it, you know, it had been like 30 AD, he was talking about the, Im the immediate kingdom of God, not the future soteriolo soteriological um, heaven or whatever. The here and now, just like Elder Tim was saying. So when the founder of this is saying that it's about, it's, it's not about how to get saved for afterlife, it's about how to act saved now. This is C.H. Dodd. Now, what he did was he influenced his student, and his student was the name of the, uh, W.D. Davies. Davies, right? He was the next one to carry on sort of this, what would become to be known as this new perspective on Paul. And he was saying, he was one of the first ones that started, one of the first Christians that started interacting with Jewish texts, right? So when he started interacting with these Jewish texts and understanding First Temple Judaism, he was starting to see that a lot of these things in way the, that we see the Pharisees as being legalistic, they didn't really think that. We think that about the Pharisees. They didn't see that about themselves. After W.D. Davies, he had a student and his student's name was E.P. Sanders. E.P. Sanders added to the conversation by publishing that book, um, uh, Paul and Palestinian Judaism, I think it's called. And in there, he developed a term of what's called, uh, called covenantal gnomism. And essentially what that means is like, sometimes you'll hear people say, I don't keep the law to get saved. Uh, I keep the law because I am saved. He kind of created that, right? And he was saying that it's not that they're trying to be saved by the law. It's just that in order to continue to stay saved or to see in God's good grace, they're going to keep this covenant, which they assumed was the law. E.P. Sanders uh, then influenced a gentleman by the name of James Dunn. Leo's been bringing him out a lot. Leo started adding, or Leo, uh, Dunn started adding this sort of social aspect to it. And then uh, James Dunn, influences N.T. Wright, and N.T. Wright takes on a whole nother approach, adding more to the social aspect of all this stuff. The, the main thing to take under consideration is the fact that when we say justification and what the law does or any of that, that is never what it's been about. That's something that we imposed on the culture of the first century Jew. We are saying that, the, that they're the ones that are legalistic or they were keeping the law to be saved and things like that. That's never, ever what it was about. So now that they're going back, now that Christians, like 2,000 years later, are finally starting to realize, hey, we have something to learn from First Temple Judaism. Now they're starting to go back and they're starting to see it was never like how we thought it was. And, and, and again, how do I say it? So whenever it, it's turning to, um, like, how, how can they incorporate with uh, Christians nowadays? All these things revolve around the around these identity markers. Now, these identity markers are aspects of the law that you can show other people, right? Like like um, wearing fringes or keeping Sabbath or keeping kosher, things of that nature. They were not. Uh, it, it's not the, the wearing of fringes or keeping kosher or keeping feast days that was the issue. The issue was they were wearing these markers. We're well beyond scripture right now. It's it's not just that. It's beyond that. It's the social status of of, of the people that who lived during the time of scripture. We're well, well I think you said we got to deal with scripture because that's where we get doctrine from. Well, the, we're be the, we're beyond. We're, I thought we were moving past book, chapter, verse three, and TV. Like we're kind of moving beyond that, right? So th the thing is, whenever we're looking at the first century Jew, we have to understand they thought being Jewish is how you are in, how you are. Uh, uh, justified in God's eyes. They're the only ones that can be saved. Only the Jews, not Gentiles, um, not the Greeks, not the Romans. You got to be Jewish. That's how they saw it. Now, they wore that badge of honor with the circumcision. They wore that badge of honor with the fringe. They wore that badge of honor with keeping kosher. The thing is, Paul is now coming to say, it's not about being Jewish that saves you. Being a Jew is not going to save you. So all those identity markers, they don't matter. He doesn't say you no longer have to do or, or uh, show these markers. Well, you no longer have to show them, but not that these markers are done away with. You can still continue to be kosher. You can still continue to wear your fringes. You can still continue to circumcise or whatever. But that's not what, what it, that doesn't make you a Jew. Now, as most Christians say, believing in Jesus is what makes you a rightful Jew or, or, or a true Israel. You know what I mean? It, it's in a sense supersessionism, but you know, it is what it is. You can label it whatever you want. The thing is, being a Jew will not save you. And wearing that badge of honor, like the fringes, is not going to prove you're Jewish. Believing in Jesus Christ is what makes you a true Jew. So we have all of this completely and utterly wrong.
And, and, and that's just, I kind of wanted to uh, piggyback off of what Elder Tim says and just maybe try to further explain that new perspective on Paul and the, the succession in which it came from. Leo, you want to say something on that? No, I mean, I'm in pretty good agreement with much of what Kobe said uh, brought out. I would just say, uh, like, the reasons to why I utilize James Dunn and even T. right? Because, like he said, they do speak to the social component. And I think that's kind of what a lot of the, at least the original understanding of, like, the parting ways and all of that social dynamic was kind of brought up. So that's the reason I utilize them to speak to that um, instance and Kobe spoke around that and went and it kind of gave the, the history around how those specific, uh, like the succession of the idea. So I just wanted to make sure I uh, talked to that. Now, Kobe, I have a question. Um, I'm not at home right now, but I do uh, I want to ask or at least see if people know of it. Have you looked into uh, the radical new perspective on Paul? No, what we just heard. Uh, um, NT uh, speak of it. Yeah, what we just heard is the first time I heard about it. But usually, whenever I hear things like that, like a radical left, it's just an extreme version of whatever's already taking place. Right. The reason I ask is because um, some of the tenets of what I've seen is not as much material out there, but from some of the material I've seen on it, it it affirms the concept of like Paul continued to keep Torah. Paul did not, he pretty much emphasized Torah. He did not say a Gentile needed to become a Jew, but he still needed to adhere to Torah. So similar to what some people may hear on this channel sometimes, I just, I just wanted to see if, if you looked into it. And it's really, I'll be honest, it's very interesting. So I think a lot of Israelites uh, like fit that motto because they pretty much see Paul kept Torah. He taught Gentiles to adhere to it, but never need for salvation but they should at least go along with it. He also saw that Jews continue to keep doing it. Uh, but really the emphasis is on Paul was still an observant Jew um, and always was, never thought an issue with it. But I'm seeing there's some more scholarship coming around it um, from different views on the new perspective. And I'm seeing that term used more. So when NT mentioned it, um, I just went back to look at a few things and I remember that that's a new a, a view that I'm seeing out there more. Michael Bird speaks to it even in more details. He has a few, few journals on it. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up is if you look at some of the models and the tenets from it, it aligns with like a lot of what we hear over here, the super legalistic view of what a believer was under Paul's uh, leadership in like the Pauline community. So I was just curious if you heard of it. Yeah, no, no, I haven't. Um, but, but again, I think, um, I think I should try to be a little more clear with 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 my actual position as well. Um, I think we're, we're speaking, we're using the same words, but meaning different things. So I feel, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel that when when you and others say, you know, keep Torah, that that I'm and others like me are saying adherence to the law. Um, I want you to know that that's not what we're saying. Whenever we say Torah. It's keeping God's instructions in whatever form or fashion, right? And, and I believe that God gives instructions uh, and he offers provisions for our way of life at the current time, right? Just like with the, with the, with the Feast of Sukkot, Tabernacles, right? Um, there should have never been that feast. If, if the Israelites would have done what they were supposed to, they wouldn't have had to wander for uh, 40 years. But being, being that they were, God instituted in this feast and offered provisions for what they were going through. You know what I'm saying? So he always offers instructions. And, and I'm of the position that Christians today keep Torah. They keep the instructions of God. What I what I mean by that is you, you're, you're married, right? I know you're married. Uh, yes, sir. You're not, you're not going to go out and, and step out on your wife because God says you can't do that. So you are, you are keeping Torah. You know what I mean? Um, you're loving your neighbor as yourself. You're keeping Torah. So I want you to know that when 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 pro, when people who don't really look into Judaism or the Judaic aspect of things, they may say keeping Torah and think that we mean adhering to the Mosaic law. That's not what we're saying. We just uh, are following the instructions of God in whatever form or fashion that 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 holds. Another thing is, um, it's it's all relative 
to your culture. And I don't mean culture like, you know, Israelite culture or anything like that. I mean to your local surroundings, right? Because different people, whether you be Jewish or Christian or whatever, whatever, uh, Baptist, Pentecostal, they all hold to their own form of uh, religious culture. Now, religious culture, social, uh, social economic culture, whatever, you can throw all that in there. However, there's different things that you can like separate and form its own argument of. What I'm saying is all these things are relative to its time, its place, um, its locations, its, uh, its um, how do I say, like its, its demographic, its people, they're all relative. So it, it, it's hard to put a, a, just a blanket statement over all kinds of things. That's why I say this, this conversation, um, it should be ongoing and why I want to sort of add to the conversation, but at an academic level by writing out some of this stuff. I just think there's more to say on it. Um, when it comes to this parting of the ways, I, I told you I want to talk about this in the background because I don't want to. I don't want to bang anyone. That's not my thing. I don't want to do that. I That's agree. not really helping. It's not helping me at all. But to kind of let people, to kind of let people know where I'm coming from, um, I'm wondering if it was the best move that we're parting. You know what I mean? And 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 in any way, I I I am for the uh, I'm for the the underdog in a sense. Uh, I think it was bad. And that's because I'm, I'm Jewish. I think it was bad that Ezra had his reformation and forced the Samaritans out. That was a parting of the ways. That created Judaism. That shouldn't happen. Later on in time with the great schism between the East and the West, I don't believe that should happen. You know, God wants to unify his church, not separate. Then the reformation happened, and now we have a whole bunch of partings of the ways. You know what I mean? So I think it's unfair to say this particular time was a party when there's been partings all throughout history, even within their own individual sects and communities and whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. Because as you, you, you mentioned the other day, like even the definitions of these terms are as fluid as the times that they, they were uh, originated. It's all fluid. It's all hard to say this is linear. Right. Even going yesterday with, with the conversation that was taking place in the canon, we see how just um, how fluid everything is. Some people accepted certain books in one location, other people didn't. It's just, it's, it's very, very hard to say, this is when the church accepted everything, this is when they didn't, this is when the parting happened, this is when it didn't. Uh, all throughout history, you can see different aspects of different people moving in and out, these various social, economic, cultural, religioso, um, atmospheres, if you will, you know what I mean? So I, I believe what N.T. Wright says. I think as long as we keep making these partings in different forms or fashion, even if it's a parting between the, the black church and the Mexican church and the white church, I think as long as we keep doing that, it's doing a disservice to the kingdom of God. We're supposed to be one new man. And I don't mean one new man keeping the exact same law because there's never been the exact same law, but I mean one new man in communion and fellowship in one another without all of these labels of what we do. And I, and I think that's my fundamental issue. It's not to me if a parting or partings happened. It's was it even ethical and should it have happened? This is my whole thing right now. I think we need to focus more on being unified instead of, uh, instead of worrying about the uniformity of whatever law or religion we adhere to. And that's my spiel. I got you. Uh, and, reason, I'm, 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 and actually, I don't want to bang it all. So I might ask you this question offline. Um, but I, I'm actually I'm in agreement with a lot of what you said. Um, I think specifics around who we are as a church, as a body of believers, um, I do believe we should understand who we are and stop always separating ourselves into silos all the time. I think we should establish a more uh, connective understanding. Now, I understand we may differ on certain topics and, of course, regional separation as well, but I do agree with you. Like we should think more holistically as a body rather than just like, what's the best for the black church? Um, always. And like I said, I'm not saying there's not situations to where we can speak to certain things that's indicative to where we live and things like that, but we still be thinking more ho holistic as a group. Um, but yeah, I'll ask my question is because it's more around, um, uh, the parting of the ways stuff. So we don't have to bang on that today. No, go ahead. Touch it. Touch on that. Brand. Um, what's, wrong, what's wrong with touching all that? The partner that waged originally was what? I believe it was yes, Jesus. Man, Jesus, Jesus, right. becoming, Jesus uh, being seen 
amongst those Jews at that time as the Messiah or people saying he was, that started the party on both sides, I believe. Say, I'm sorry, say it again? From, from first from those believers in Jesus, as well as uh, unbelieving Jews, mm -hmm. Jesus being on the scene and saying he's the Messiah, that started the party. That started the party? I believe. Okay. And, and, and see, this is also why we got to sort of... That, Kobe? Yes, I understand. I understand what he's saying. And I believe what, what he's saying and how he's defining the parting of the ways is not incorrect. However, I think uh, the entirety of our history is one big parting after another party. I will go all the way back and say when Abraham was separated from the Canaanites, that was the original parting of the ways. The biggest parting of the way that has more to do with our faith was Ezra's reform in which he parted from the Samaritans. Uh, continuing on with that, then we'll get into the parting between the um, all the Judaic sects, Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, all them guys, go a little bit more. We have a parting of the ways between the Messianics and the Jews who didn't accept him as a, as a believer, go a little bit more than that. We have a parting between the Christian, you know what I'm saying? It all has to do with little doctrines. If you study the, the, the history of Christian theology, you'll see that it's all one big parting for some of the smallest things. I was talking to Ant in the back because he's like the only uh, EO guy I know. And in my uh, 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 Christian theology class right now, uh, we're going through the history of the EO. And so I'm asking him some of these questions and I'm like, man, do they really have to part over these simple words? And to him, they do, right? To me, I think we could have talked about it more. Um, but that's all it is. Everybody wants to do in a sense, what they think is best. So there's a bunch of different partings, right? Then we have the Great Schism, where the East divided from the West. And then, like I said, we have the Reformers who wanted to part from, from organized church in that sense. Um, and everybody became their own sort of, um, their own Pope. And then there's just a whole mess of partings after that. Um, it's just a part after a part after a part. So again, I think we're talking about, Leo's not wrong in what he's saying. I just think we're talking about different things. The part, it shouldn't be called the parting of the ways. It should just be separating over minute doctrine, is what I think. Hold on, Kobe, how, how can you say separate over minute doctrine? Because they're all still worshiping the same God. Co Kobe, when, when, you're talking about with the Christians, or you're talking about with um, from Ezra each different times? I'm I'm talking about from uh I'm I'm talking about from um Abraham onwards. We're all worshiping the same God. We're part yeah, of when Abraham's part of the ways, his people were out of worshipers. Uh-huh. And he parted from that. That's what I'm yeah, saying. So is that a small doctrinal issue or a big doctrinal issue? That's why I'm saying from Abraham onward, having to do with our faith, the worship of Yahweh. The worship of Yahweh. Anything that's a parting in that, I think was minute. Uh, uh, doctrinal differences in, in the grand scheme of things. Kobe, is, God, is Yahweh having a wife a small doctrinal issue? Uh, no, it's not a small doctrine. That's why I'm saying from Abraham onwards. But that, like, that deals with the Samaritans in the Northern Kingdom. Wait, are you talking about at Ezra's time? Yeah. I don't know that the Samaritans, because uh, the Samaritans are still there and they still believe the same thing. I don't know that they necessarily believe that Yahweh had a wife. They still believe the same thing they do today they did 3,000 years ago. So, okay, so dealing with the Christians and the Jews, is that a small doctrinal issue? You, uh, say that again, the Jews and the Christians, you said? Yes. The Messianics uh, and the, and the non-Messianics. Uh, I think I think it, I think it's a major doctrinal issue in the fact that Jesus did add a big big wrench into this, right? So there were there were Jews prior to Moses. I mean, you're not going to call them Jews, but you know what I'm saying. There were Israelites prior to Moses, yeah. and then there were Israelites after Moses. That is a that is a, a massive doctrinal split, and I'll give you that. Now going forward, I'll, I'll reword how I said it. With Jesus being the new Moses, there's there, there's a big fundamental split in what happens here. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reword what I said. Well, explain how you understand tradition and keeping tradition. Yeah, and, and, and that's mainly what it is. And, and it is just tradition, right? Um, all this, and all the, all the, even the doctrines of the way things are passed down were traditions of how it was told to do before them. Um, and, and I'm of the position that Christians uh, do a lot of things the same way that the Jews did before. We just don't like to admit it. Um, we have our oral tradition as well on the way we do things, which is how we know how to operate within like a Baptist church. It was handed down, and now we, this is how we operate. Um, Pentecostal, you know, so, 
Oh, oh good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me eat my food. Yeah, putting all that stuff. It was just it was just handed down, and that's what they're doing with it. Uh, you go into the canon. The reason it's so hard to pinpoint a cookie cutter um, uh, formula for how it's established is because there was a lot of oral tradition on how to differentiate between certain books, but it's not linear. You can't say that this was uh, a certain point and when things just shifted. Um, it's just very, 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 very messy, right? But at the end of it all, at the end of it all, we're looking to worship the same God. If we're all looking to worship the same God, I see everything in the way we do it um, as a minor doctrinal difference. And, and I think that's what Paul came to preach. I think that's what Paul came to preach. Now that Jesus is here, we can put all those doctrinal differences. I mean, believe in Jesus, of course, but the way you do it, we can kind of put that to the side. By you telling me that me eating pork or whatever is is saying that I can't worship Jesus correctly. It's the same thing as me telling you, no, you you have to eat it because there's a law that says you have to. Everybody has their own law that they think is superior to somebody else's. Jesus came to do away with all that. No one should be talking about who's is more superior to the next because if, if we've seen anything these past couple of lives is that there's more than enough evidence to prove whatever side you want to prove all the way going back to when Jesus came. You know what I mean? Everything under the sun has been done. Who's to say your way is better than, than another person's way? I am not EO. I am not Catholic. However, their tradition is more longstanding than a lot of the Protestants. Now, I work at a Protestant. I work at a Baptist institution, and I asked a number of my professors here, why are you Baptist if it didn't come to way, 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 way later, right? And they say, because we think Martin Luther and a lot of these reformers that ultimately led to the Baptist denomination, they didn't create this new thing. They came to reestablish something that was ancient. Everybody says that. Everybody's just trying to get back to what they think was the original way God wanted them to worship, right? So I just think we should stop casting stones at everybody. Like, we just all need to chill out. Hey, Kobe, this is, this is the question I was going to ask. I'm going to try to make it not as uh, – uh, I'll make it simplified. So, um, Sky, you said, like, so dating back to Ezra, being there are multiple partings throughout our history, just even throughout the scriptures, and even afterwards, even throughout church history. So would you say that it, it that wasn't the goal or intent? Would you say the same for, like, just say, should we be under Reformed Judaism? Or should is, was Christianity how we have it today, how separate we are today, that was not the goal? I think the fact that we keep putting labels on everything, that's not the goal. Um, if you if you want to do certain things that people today consider reform Judaism or Protestant or whatever, I mean, just do it. The fact that we have to put a label on it shows that we're intentionally trying to split apart what God or Jesus at least wanted to bring together. Hold on, Kobe, are you speaking as an academic or as a practitioner of faith? Oh, yeah. Um, most of what I say is is going to be as an academic is as a standpoint I'm coming from. But as a practitioner of faith, I think you should hear. And again, I'm a, I'm a traditionalist in this sense. I, I'm a, as, as a practitioner of the faith, I believe you should adhere to the eldership that is immediately over you and do what they say to do in your particular region, for your particular culture, in your particular time. Yeah, because Kobe, if you're speaking as an academic that's coming out, then it, you sh I don't, I'm, I'm hearing you, but why you have an issue with labels and trying to classify things and movements? Because without labels, we, I, I, it's confusing to me right now because if we would have to have distinctions. Well, Otherwise, the Gnostics are just Christians. They just have, they just have a minor doctrinal differences. So don't, so don't associate with them. Don't, don't go to a Gnostic church. But the thing is, on, and, and labels. You said that you don't like labels. Yes. But as and, an academic, once you need labels, otherwise things get blurred. Yeah, exactly right. And 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 like I told you, I sometimes have to separate my faith from my academics because they know they do no good trying to uh, um, uh, trying to mesh, trying to melt with each other. If you will, I don't know the right word, but. Uh, and, and I told this to Leo, and I, I may have said it a couple of times on Berean TV, but there's a quote that, that Shakespeare has from Romeo and Juliet, and it says, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. It doesn't matter what you call something. It is what it is, right? So if you want to say Reform Judaism or, or Catholicism or whatever, 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 it's the label that we're putting on it, and it only holds as much value as we attribute to it. 
So as an academic, I need labels to understand what it is I'm talking about. But as a practitioner of the faith, I think it's a disservice to put a label on every single thing. I mean, we have labels on the exact time Jesus is coming back. You know what I'm saying? There's just too many labels. However, if we're talking about praxis or, or doxology or how we worship, should it really matter what someone like truly believes about the millennium kingdom? I don't remember the last, you know, sermon that I heard where the pastor was talking about uh, what's going to take place before Jesus comes back. But maybe I just don't go to those kinds of churches. Whenever I go to church, I just want to worship and thank Jesus for what he did for me. I don't care if the person next to me believes uh, if they should be keeping Sabbath or not. I, I really don't care. I just want to worship Jesus with them. Yeah, well, Kobe, with that, as we're talking about anti riot and social issues, well, I'm hearing that there shouldn't be any issue with the camps. If they don't believe that there's going to be slavery and the white men destroyed them, it shouldn't matter. Because Again, you don't want to have labels and, bro, it's just, we're worshiping the same God. Yeah, I said this from the beginning. Um, if, they, if they weren't so mean on how they did it, they believe what they want. You know what I mean? I'm just not going to join the camp. If you don't want, if you don't like what they're doing, don't join it. If you don't want to have a woman pastor, don't go to that church. You know what I mean? You don't have to dictate what someone else does. That's very, I'm going to go Bruce on you. That's very Amerocentric. It's America who always wants to push what they do onto other people. If you don't like it, don't be there. You're being, be in your own kind of church that you like. You know what I mean? I mean, Jews themselves, right? Pharisaical Jews or, or rabbinic Jews. They also believe they're not going to be slaves per se, but they also believe that they're going to have servants in a sense. So, I mean, what, what are you going to do? And, and you can't be too mad because Protestants just want to throw everybody in hell. To me, I'd rather be a servant than just straight up be in hell, you know? So you got to take what you get and, and just go to the church and the worship service that you feel comfortable going to and just leave everybody else alone. Besides, most of us here, I mean, we're not. We're not big time theologians. We are watching the works of other theologians. So it's not like all of our bickering is really going to further the kingdom of God. Outside of YouTube, what are we really doing for our brothers and sisters? That's what God looks at. All of this stuff, and this is coming from Ant. I'm going to steal this quote, and I think he got it from someone else too. Us talking theology and all this, this is for us. God doesn't really, I don't think he honors this like uh, what doing something for a homeless person is doing. I say all the time, I say all the time, I know that I, me and, and Elder Mike, we have like beef from time to time. But I also know that what Elder Mike does outside of YouTube is going to get him more rewards in the kingdom of God than I'm going to get. He's keeping marriages together. He's keeping people off drugs. You know what I'm saying? He's keeping girls off the pole. Like he's doing God's work out there. YouTube is just something we do just to, just to feel important, I think. So, so ultimately, when the the when Jews have her, have heresy or things they do is not a worship, or later on with the church, all that stuff is not good practice. Ultimately, it just comes down to from the ancient traditions. You pick what you want. With the temple, how Bruce has a different calendar, it doesn't matter what the authorities who run the temple and the sacrifices say. You can just go what what's the, what time you want to go with the calendar. When uh, the, when the church is established, and it talks about it's not individual independent churches, but it's a collective and a group who work things out. The elders, right? What do we do with that, Kobe? That from the Jewish side going forward, this mm -hmm. whole idea about you can do what you want, things of that nature. I hit an in individual conversation, but ultimately there was an authority. Oh, yes. And I'm uh, I'm a, a proponent of authority. Like I said, whenever Berean told us that Elder Mike and uh, Elder Green were the pastors of the community, and whenever they make a judgment, I am not being sarcastic whenever I say that someone should be writing these things down so that when we come to Berean TV, we know how to conduct ourselves in our in this Berean church, right? Because our elders, our, our pastor said that. If you don't like the way things are done here on Berean, go to another church or another YouTube channel, basically, is what I'm saying. We should be adhering to the, the eldership and the, uh, the leadership and the authority placed over the congregation we choose to attend. So going with the Judaism and, and the temple and whatnot, um, in a sense, yes, if you don't like how the, uh, the, the, if you don't like the position or whatever of the temple and all that, 
find where you do like it. And again, that's the initial party between Ezra and his Judaism and the Samaritans and, and, and their sort of Israelism or whatever. They had, there was issues over the temple. Do I personally believe that should have happened? I don't. I wish it didn't. I wish it didn't. But right now, being that we're just a, a, a we're in a fallen nature, we're all sinful people. We're all looking uh, for our best interest and not someone else's best interest. Whenever we see a church or a temple or whatever, whatever, we're, we we often say, "What are they doing that that I like?" Not how much you know. Uh, we're basically looking to be accommodated when we go worship. When it's all about. When it's all about Jesus, I think someone, as long as they're believing in Jesus, I believe someone should be able to walk into any church, regardless of denominational lines or any of that stuff, and just worship Jesus with no problem. All all these splits, uh, I can't see Jesus being happy about. It, is all I'm saying. So even with pastors who have liberal sensibilities, modern liberal sensibilities, like with homosexuality and things of the sort. Yeah, I'm. 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 Uh, I'm not saying that I agree with homosexual marriage. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, I'm not saying. You, you say, I'm not saying you say that. But there's some yeah. pastors who, like, we played a, a video a couple of days ago dealing with a lesbian who's a bishop. Yeah. And yeah. The, I'm, from what I'm hearing, if you if you're not, you know, go to a place you want to. If a minister wants to, if someone wants to go to a place where there's a homosexual, a homosexual in business, or someone who's a who's a Polygamous, right? Mm -hmm. That's how they run their, their service. Yeah. Right. That. Yeah. What I'm what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is that the reason I brought myself up is because I don't believe in homosexual marriage. So I don't want you to equate this, but most people think I'm a liberal, and and maybe I am, right? I mean, that's okay. Uh, if if I don't want a a priest or a pastor or whatever to be teaching homosexual marriage is okay, I'm not going to go to that church. However, I will say that there are homosexuals out there who, I mean, they say they love Jesus. I don't, I don't know their heart. They may willfully be sinning, but I know people are willfully sinning in other aspects of their life. They should still have a place to go and worship God. If all the, if the only place they can go is a pastor who also affirms same-sex marriage, maybe he's in the wrong. You know, he's probably in the wrong, but at least those people have somewhere to go and worship Jesus. Um, you don't have to go there, though. I've never been to a service where the pastor affirms homosexual marriage, so I don't know what they do. I don't know if every one of their sermons is about homosexual stuff. I have no idea. It, it, I would be like those people who talk about the Catholic Church but never been to a Catholic Church service. I, I, I can't speak on that. But to me, I don't want to find out, so I just don't go. Yeah, come this sounds a little bit like heading a sand doctrine and pick and choose. Everything is pick and choose. The history of the church is pick and choose. Our, our canon is pick and choose. Our doctrine is pick and choose. Our laws are pick and choose. The entire history of our church is pick and choose. That's why I'm not an adherent to any systematic theology, because we say we have rules on how we do things, but we pick and choose when we adhere to even our own rules and our own systematic theologies. Everything is pick and choose. Everything. I mean, is that is that wrong? Am I wrong in saying that? Let me know if I am. I I, I see everything as being picking and choosing. Yeah, but it, it, from what I'm saying, I, I don't want to. I'm not trying to uh, dealing with. If someone doesn't see scripture as a sole infallible authority, mm -hmm. it basically just don't go to that church. Ultimately, yeah, yeah, don't just don't go to that church. Like uh, like uh, the EO church. Yeah, and I just read about this last night. I'm, I, you, you're in that back chat. I was sending screenshots of whenever I read things. Yeah. Um, but they're the ones that they'll come outright and say, we also adhere uh, strictly to the traditions of the church because they were told how to do it originally. So we listen to what's been handed down. So everything that the church says goes for them. Now, they rely on, like Alton's um, argument yesterday was, um, the scripture isn't clear on something about this marriage and it would really be on, up to the pastor. That's adhering to authority and that's okay. They have been taught by someone who was taught, by someone who was taught, by someone who was taught, all from their uh, doctrinal, uh, uh, um, I get, it's just been passed down, passed down, just like oral tradition, right? These pastors wouldn't know how to make this proper judgment call if it wasn't taught to them beforehand, except you don't read that in scripture. You just read that there are elders appointed over you to judge these matters. Everybody has oral tradition. 
we need to stop banging on someone else's oral tradition just because it's not like ours. We need to unify in this faith, right? Now, I know this is Brian TV, so we want to hash some of this stuff out, and that's cool. And um, we just have to separate what we're doing here and uh, what is being done for the body of Christ. You know what I mean? No, I, I hear you, Cole. So local jurisdiction, local jurisdiction holds weight. Oh, 100%. All, going all the way back. I remember people uh, were bringing up the uh, Council of Carthage a number of times with the canon. That was local jurisdiction, but that's one of the first times we see anything regarding a list of what books are accepted. Now, we change that later on. But, hey, you know, I, if it wasn't such a big ruling that all the church had to adhere to, I wouldn't have an issue with it. If your local assembly benefits from the Book of Sirach, Yo, read that mug, put it in there and have it help you and guide you to follow Jesus in the best way that these books tell you to, right? But if it doesn't, don't do it. The Catholics, they say the Apocrypha helps to guide them in, in, in keeping their, uh, uh, their orthopraxy uh, according to what was taught to before them. Who am I to go into their church and say, you are doing it wrong? It's like Rabbi Eduardo, I think he said it, right? Um, we do things our way here, but we're not going to go to your church and say, put on fringes, but don't come to our church and tell us we have to take them off. Everybody does things the way they want to. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. It's not a big deal. <coughs> yeah, but so we have the council. If a minister one day wakes up and realizes, you know what, y'all, I'm realizing. Jesus is a creative being. Is that something that should be addressed at all from the church or more so that's just local jurisdiction? Well, I'm... Uh... So, and this may, this may ruffle a little bit of feathers, but the thing is, I, I don't, I don't vote because I'm not educated enough in politics to make an educated decision of who should be running the country. Right. So for, I think, I think oftentimes we want to weigh in on issues we're not fully educated in and think that our opinion really, really, really matters when, it, when, it, when it really shouldn't. Um, I am not there to say that, oh, I believe Jesus was uh, this or Jesus was that or this doctrine is correct and this was that. I leave that up to those like, you know, N.T. Wright and some of the big dogs and and, and, and those that have come before him to make kind of make those decisions. Um, we can discuss it, right? And maybe see if they did it right or whatever, according to us. But uh, ultimately, yeah, no, it, what we say here today is not going to matter. Uh, in the grand scheme of things. Now, if this is helping somebody in their local assembly, like I know we have some elders in here, we have a couple of pastors in here. If our discussions somehow help them in their congregations, then that is great. All glory to God for that. But I don't think that happens all too often. I think we just, um, we're just, we're just banging for the sake of banging here. You know how it is. So ultimately, so then, Cole, what is the purpose then for apologetics in your view? To is give a defense. Just to bang? Yes, 100%. And, and apologetics, you got to listen to the way it was presented, right? To give a defense when someone asks you for the reason that you have. What we're doing here on Berean is not apologetics. These are polemics. We are trying to get others to believe what we want them to believe because that's how we believe it. There's a difference between apologetics and polemics. I don't know the last time someone actually came up to me and said, hey, why is it that you believe that, Kofi? Most people say, this is why you're wrong for what you believe. This is not apologetics. This is polemics. Go ahead, um, Leo Bourne. Yeah, yeah, but I, I know you set the way, so I, that's why <clears throat> I'm going to stop the video. All right, the link is out there for anybody who want to ask any questions. Abraham's family were the people to whom Deuteronomy said, watch out because you will go under the curse because you will commit idolatry, et cetera, et cetera. So the problem is God has made these spectacular worldwide promises to Abraham, and it looks as though the promises are going to be snuffed out. They're all going to be dead and gone. So the Messiah, Israel's representative, comes to the point where the Torah rightly pronounces the curse and bears the curse in himself. And then verse 13 and 14 
works so superbly, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we, that is, we Jews who believe, might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. In other words, the promises had got into a logjam because of Israel's sin producing the curse, and the Torah was right to pronounce that curse. Jesus has come under the Torah's rightful curse on behalf of his people, so that okay. now... All right, so it's the right rightful breath. curse of the Torah. Yeah. Um, this may, may seem like a very subtle distinction, but I think it's an yes. important distinction, oh, which yes. is that the Torah rightly curses Jesus, as opposed to the Torah rightly curses disobedient Israel, which violates the Torah, which is a major point in Galatians. You've signed up. You got circumcised. You signed up for the whole yep. deal, yep. including yep. the judgment, and that Jesus goes and occupies that yep. point of yep. cursing, but Jesus yep. is not properly cursed. Um, no, no. It, it's he bore the curse, um, becoming a curse by being hanged on the tree. Um, and, and you perhaps at that point need Romans 8, 3 and following where Paul says um, that uh, he, he that God condemned sin in the flesh of Christ. That Paul does not say God condemned Jesus. He says God condemned sin in the flesh of the Messiah. Condemned so, or punished or something like that. Yeah, punished, punished sin. Is it condemned yeah, or punished? Yeah, yeah, yeah punished. It's condemned. It's condemned. It's, sorry. It's Katekrinen from Katekrino. Um, um, but, but it I comes to the no, 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 it comes to the same thing, <laughs> yeah. um, because that is definitely penal, and it is definitely substitutionary, but it isn't God punished Jesus, it's God punished sin. In, and as you say, that's a subtle distinction, but actually Paul knows what he's doing there, and it's important. Well, and I, you're, you're probably going to think I'm over-reading this, but I can't help but notice, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, is not a direct quote. From the from the Septuagint, the Septuagint well, says, "Cursed to Theu or Apu to Theu uh, is everyone who hangs on a tree." In other words, I'm going to argue slightly here that Paul is deliberately leaving out, and it's in the middle of the Septuagint verse. It's not like he left off the end of the verse or the beginning, right in the center, in uh, Deuteronomy 21, we're told that it's a it's a cursing Apu to Theo uh, to. Th Theo. Um, so it's a curse out of God. Um, but Jesus is hung on a tree, but he doesn't seem to, in Galatians, in Paul's interpretation of Galatians, he doesn't seem to be cursed of God. Um, if you go back and look at the Deuteronomy passage, yep. Jesus didn't yep. do anything worthy yep. of being right cursed. Here. Yeah, go ahead. Is that your Septuagint? Yeah, it is. Um, and, and you're right about 21, 23. Um, and then the other, the other reference says 27, 26. Um, uh, oh no, that's, sorry, that's just ever cursed everyone who doesn't abide by what's written in the law, of course. Yeah, so that's right. I don't think I draw that out in the commentary, and you you probably checked that out, but I... I... Go ahead, JT, Mac, you see you had a question? Yeah, good afternoon. Um, hey, Kobe, what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Hey, so I, I, I want to say I get to... Uh, I get the crux of what you were saying. I think you're saying that there's just like, I think what you're saying is there, there's like too much banging in the church amongst believers mm -hmm. over, over trivial issues. Um, and so I, I think it's important to like part some of this a little bit. Um, you're not saying that we shouldn't have these discussions. You, you, I think you're saying we shouldn't be throwing hand grenades at each other when we're discussing um um eschatology or you know or even calvinism i mean i ain't gonna lie i, I bang on calvin uh calvinist myself so i'm guilty of that but we should be able to at least have discussions here in this community or other platforms that you know are made like this to discuss those things and then my second question is and i'm and i'm i'm hoping you're not saying this so if some you know just for an example, some uh, Hebrew Israelite comes on here with, you know, some mad false doctrine, and you're not saying we shouldn't push back on that doctrine. So those two questions. Uh, I I don't even think they should. So I don't even think they should be allowed to to speak in that manner um, if they have some wild doctrine because they're they're looking to come in and uh, just cause trouble, right? Um, if you wouldn't do it in real life. 
which I know some of them have, but that's wrong. If you wouldn't do it in real life, maybe we shouldn't do it here on, on online either. Uh, what, you I call, what you call wild doctrine? Me, uh, even so in, me or him? Oh. Me, Debrian? No, no, Kobe. Oh, okay. Oh, what I call wild doctrine is anything that your local assembly does not adhere to. Um, well, whenever I ain't got no. Oh, this one here, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And like I said, that's why I said, like, I know people are saying this is not a church or, or whatever and, and I, labels, right? Whatever. Call it whatever you want. What I'm saying is I go to a Baptist church on Sunday, right? I wouldn't like it if a Jehovah's Witness came into my church and was saying, well, you know, Jesus actually died on a stake and there is no Trinity and blah, blah, blah. Right. I'd be like, hey, man, you can't do that. Stay in your uh, kingdom hall. We'll stay over here in our Baptist church. Same thing for Berean TV. We have a certain or a particular set of beliefs in which we operate, right? Um, I think we should stay with that. And those that come to purposefully speak out against it, I think this isn't my channel or anything like that, but I think they shouldn't be allowed to even speak. We've heard everything here, everything here, and none of it has ever been constructive other than to sort of just poke fun at what it is they're making, they're doing, or, or, or to show how just bad they are. You know, um, I, I pause for a second if you can, Kobe. I, I get what you're saying. So, j and here's a great example. So now I get what you're saying about the the wild doctrines of uh, Hebrew Israelite camps. Because okay, mm -hmm. we know most people in the church are not feeling that. You know, they they understand it's her heresy. Um, yeah. But what about the subtleness? I don't. I, it was in the. Back, I think I shared it in the back. Oh no no, Abu shared it in the back check. A certain doctor. They call themselves doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping you saw that was yeah. going at a uh, one of the uh, urban uh, apologists mm -hmm. about about um, uh, about the Trinity, and and it, and it seems that this doctor didn't even really understand what the Trinity doctrine is, and then this doctor was saying some things that were really suspect, but never really fully put that out there. But so if, if Someone can be real. I'm, what I'm getting at is someone can be real subtle, and it ain't. It ain't. It's not always necessarily. I mean that you know, like Berean can just know somebody's gonna come over here and talk reckless. You you follow what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a. Uh, I don't know that a new crop of people will come to Berean for for a while. You know, like I don't know that there's any new people here really right now that we haven't at least heard out. I know there's like, for example, there's like 100 people watching right now. There's only four people on the panel and there's only maybe like 20 or 30 people in, in the comments. So I know there's some people that are here that they just remain in the shadows. But as far as the people that talk, uh, we've heard everybody. We know when someone new comes out and remember Brian used to say, what new doctrine? Like we know they're coming in just to say some wild stuff. It, 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 it sometimes seems to me that um, most of the camps use Brian TV as like a proving ground, like a training ground. You know what I mean? They come on here to see if they can one up a Christian or whatever, and then they bounce and take that footage to do whatever it is they're going to do with it. Um, we're, nobody is dumb here. I think everybody sees what's going on. You know what I mean? We we know. Yeah, well, I would agree with you. Sakari is is one of those. They don't really care about meaningful dialogue. They don't care about you know they'll you know they like, like they like for example prime example. They had said some wild stuff, and I think they did this to get our attention. They said some wild stuff about uh, about the deity of Christ and the uh, virgin birth, mm -hmm. and Berean and Berean challenged them and said, "Hey, man, y'all come up here and explain this." And Elder Mike was on the panel at that at that time, and uh, Deacon Sakari, and he brought some he brought some goons with him. They talk about everything but what uh, Berean asked him to come over and talk about. They talk about something nobody in, in this platform really cared about. And then they bounce and never came back. So, yeah. like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll come back and talk about that. I'm like, no, all they, they came up here to do was like try to make Mel the Mike look bad about some ethnic stuff. And that was it. Uh, so I, 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 I can see what you're talking about on that level. Yeah, and Elder Mike, when it comes to that, like, uh, he's a G. You're not going to get Elder Mike on, on the deity of Christ or any of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ends there. That we have When it, when it comes to certain uh, subjects and really dealing with those wolves that are coming in to poach, 
um, I think our pastors are really good in their respective areas, right? When it comes to Judaism and, and Israelites trying to come in and impose their version of, of Judaism on, on what is hopefully becoming to be accepted. I'm hoping, you know, eventually the way Elder Green and me and some others uh, adhere to our version of Judaism, even if it's our own thing, as Pastor Jay says, um, I'm hoping that the Christians would be okay with it. Just like, you know, for us who claim Judaism or, or, or adhere to Elder Green's teachings, we could look at Elder Mike's um, uh, congregants, and I don't mean congregants like his, an actual, his actual church, but like his Berean TV church, and maybe it's not a church, whatever, whatever, but the people that would fall under uh, Christians or Protestants or whatever, and we would look beyond your denominational line. I don't, I don't know if you're Baptist or Pentecostal or one, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't really care. Um, I just know that um, you worship Jesus in that way, on basically how Elder Mike represents it. I worship uh, uh, Yeshua the way Elder Green has me do it. You know what I mean? We should all be adhering to that. And um, I think that should be the, that, that should essentially be the end of it. If we don't fall under one of those two categories, this really should not be the place for you unless you choose to kind of put yourself in that um underneath that authority uh underneath that leadership and um everybody needs to be under leadership of some form or fashion and that's kind of what is my bigger problem with what we're doing a lot of people like to be solo dolo and it's part of spiritual formation and and, and christian uh discipline to have uh, an authority figure over you if you don't uh there's no um accountability or anything um if it wasn't for Elder Green, you know, I'd be crazy out here because he's the only one that can keep me in check with the crazy things I say. So everybody should have something like that. Elder Green, I don't know, with this, with these last series of discussions, Elder Green feels, he feels some type of way. I can't lie. He, yeah, he does. And I don't think the church ever going to accept anybody to mention alone. I don't personally say tradition, any of that stuff. Church is just so... Us Protestants, we just so, oh man, it's, it's rough, it's rough. Well, 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 like I said, Berean, like us as Christians, we like to say that we're completely different from Jews, but we're, we're not. What we do is we put a fence around our own law as well. We don't want people to adhering to anything of Judaic culture or, or legalism. So we say, don't even think about it. We're putting a fence around our own law, the same way that the Jews put a fence around theirs. We're doing the exact same thing, you know? Um, Pastor, Pastor Jay came in here and said all of that stuff is basically garbage. All that stuff is dead and all that stuff is gone. You agree with yeah. that? No, not at all. But, I mean, that's why I don't go to his church. Okay. <laughs> okay, and maybe hey. that's why. And maybe that's why. Because as soon as he jumped on it and I did invite him, on um, Pastor Green hit my jack. He was like, you invited him? You invited him? I said, yeah, he's going to come on. He can share whatever he feels. He said, you already agree we could keep tradition. Pastor Mike, all, two pastors and yourself agreed, so he didn't see. And then when he started at communion, I was like, oh, Lord, this herpes doctrine here is too much for me. But I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. And then Leo presentation wasn't the best. It, 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 to me, I mean, it was excellent. But it gave me the impression, Paul and them was eating pork. It gave me the impression that um, basically a large majority of Israel just like basically they became Gentiles. They started eating pork and they, they wouldn't keep it a feast days and they just blend into Christmas and everything else later on when it came up. Can, can I say something to that? No, no, I want to hear what Kofi got to say. You ain't practicing. You ain't got no friends with me. Well, I think, I think that's an issue to even say that whenever... Jesus already came, right? Jesus came. Yes. We shouldn't be saying that Jews then became Gentiles or Gentiles then became Jews because we're still trying to put up that wall. Just people just worship together. You know what I mean? Like we don't have to say who's a Jew or who's an Israelite or who's a Christian. Like it's not about that. If 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 if, if it's if it's more comfortable for people here that I just say I'm a Christian, okay, that's fine. But if you see me right now, look, look, look at this. Oh, you willing to say the same thing? You know, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. Like I'm, I'm working at a Baptist seminary right now. I got my kippa on. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, hi, you I, with that? I have my fringes. They embrace it. Matter of fact, earlier Don't today, say the, name of the seminary, you folks get the call and they're talking crazy. Go ahead. Earlier today, we all had lunch together since it's like a Thursday and uh, we don't work on Fridays. Um, they had me say the blessing, 
And I said it in the Jewish way. I said it in English, obviously, but I start out my blessing with blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who by your word provides, um, uh, who provides all of our needs. Thank you for this meal. And then I continue on in a, in a Christian blessing. And afterwards, we talked about why it is I do things that way. And they're OK with these customs. This is just feel, a big deal the, here. The crazy thing is I feel the early, I think the early church did the same thing. And unless, like some, some may argue, there was still a heavy Jewish influence and people would, you know, Jewish, I mean, Christian people would tell the rabbi to come by and bless the house and all of that. And, and the bishops, I mean, they like that too much. It, it's always the leadership. That's why I say uh, early on that the church fathers may have said something and have tried to make these rules, but it's because it's it's for the sake of their authority in the same way that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing it. It's all about authority. Um, the thing is, whenever we're seeing all these you church fathers- You said it's all about authority, go ahead. Whenever we see uh, all these um, church fathers making these rulings or whatever, we still continue to, continue to see the people in the pews doing what they want, keeping Jewish feasts, keeping Sabbaths, you know, do, doing how, doing things that they want. This is all a, a power thing. It's a power thing. And, and yeah. Uh, thing. Go ahead. Uh, uh, um, go ahead, hey, Kobe. Oh, I was going to say, so you, I don't know if you've heard me uh, weigh in on these matters before or not. Um, so just in case you haven't, let me, let me state that I believe that our attitudes towards each other, whether you be a messianic or a Gentile Christian, that we should be in the same mind as the original apostles. And I do not believe that the original apostles and the original Israelites who, who converted to Christian, you know, to, to the way as they call it, because they didn't even call it that then, mm -hmm. um, who, con who converted to the way, I don't believe that they just all of a sudden just became like Gentiles. I just don't see that in scripture uh and i don't see yeah, where the com said the same thing yeah and i don't see where the apostles commanded them to do that i so do you see what a so you're not gonna you're not bruce came in here bruce said hey, there's no way y'all not going to convince me paul and it was eating paul yeah you and if they did and, and here's the deal Brian. Yeah, and and here's the deal if he did he didn't he didn't record it anywhere so that, yeah that's a good point that's a good point it's like so, a, yeah. So why are we making a big deal out of it? Is that gentilizing to you? Yeah, yeah, it's gentilizing. It's like let let them be who just. I think the the overall message Paul was Paul was trying to convey is, is that in Christ we have choice and freedom. If they want to eat pork, they can eat pork. If they don't want to eat pork, they don't have to eat pork. If they want to eat keep customs, they can keep customs. If they don't want to keep customs, they don't have to keep customs. I think there is no there is no edict the brother was going a little too far with it yeah there's no edict and there's no this law it's halloween uh, yeah there's no edict i ain't gonna lie halloween. i got eight. but go ahead yeah i'm saying you there's know, no edict you say jake and sister he ain't gonna have no tree he ain't gonna have no halloween but go ahead yeah there's no edict or law from the apostles for the uh messianics to stop keeping their customs and we just need to leave them alone on that it would be just like if how would we feel if um let's say Berean yeah, was a man yeah, I'm, I'm sorry i got beef I, i'm having flashbacks now i got beef with all the elders saying it's okay to give out candy it's okay to do it on that day <laughs> it's okay to celebrate halloween go ahead i'm sorry now, i'm <laughs> saying if 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 Berean and dunamis were messianics and they were constantly pushing uh uh the law on us and telling us we got to keep this and we got to keep that and we got to do fringes and we got to and how would we feel as Gentile believers? It's the same to me. It's the same thing, and you, a lot of y'all don't see it that way. But when y'all come up here and bang on these Israelites, I mean these Messianics, and tell them that they can't keep their culture and they shouldn't be looking like Israel or Jews, and they shouldn't—that's the same thing to me. So that's how I interpret it, Berean. GJ said, but the thing is, we do not need to do those things. Otherwise, we are making the law again questions are what does god want me to do what is a sin i don't is it a sin to wear fringes now it, no it's, it, it's I, not. I guess it's a sin to keep the passover christ is our passover no 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 and they continue to do that even like i said well i i don't want to everybody the, the thing is this right in in john what is it first john 
for, is it first John when he says, uh, uh, Jesus came to give us a new commandment and it says that we should believe on him and love one another. Yes. Believe on Jesus and love one another. I don't care what you eat, man. But, but, but if me, uh, if me not eating your pork sandwich would offend you, I'm going to eat your pork sandwich. However, when you come to my house, I would hope you respect me too, that if I don't have any pork, you're going to want me to make something like that. You know what I mean? We if should be respectful eat, of if each other. Eat pork at the, if you don't eat pork at the cookout and I feel you're weak in faith, or I tell people, you know, you just, got, you just got to grow up let, and let them know he can get some of crab legs and all this good stuff these folk out here eating. And How drink that you? alcohol. And drink that alcohol too. Somebody, and even if somebody weak in the faith. I don't know if it's John. I don't know if it's Polycarp. I don't know if it's you or Elder Green. Somebody weak in the faith. What, I'm, I'm gonna let you know something, Brian. Oh, all you, the faith. Green, you're gonna call me crying. Go Brian, ahead. We're, we're, we're all weak in the faith, Brian. All of us. Why? Look at us. That ain't Bible. Stop a lie. That ain't Bible. Brian, we spend all day trying to justify what we believe about Jesus because our faith is so weak. We need to be justified. We're all weak in the faith. We're all Thomas. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know if people have beef with that, but go ahead. I'm listening. Hey, one other thing. Kobe, hold on, Kobe. I'm not Kobe. Leo, come on. You wanted to say something um, on the last, maybe I think the last comment. That's why you jumped back on, Kobe. I mean, Leo? Yeah, it was the last comment uh, in terms of, uh, I think JT Mack said it about um, those keeping the feast and things like that. I just want to ask, um, if you believe that is is that just rooted off of your like you say it's not notated in scripture, um, but some would say it is. So is that based well, off not of notated in scripture exactly? Saying, I mean, at least JT Mac is saying that uh, folks keeping the feast, uh, they stop doing it and start living like Gentiles and eating whatever they wanted, not observing. But I would say some would say it is though. So when we speak to that. Is that based off our interpretation or your interpretation? How do we kind of rectify that's that? that authority. And what scripture is that again? Give me the two scriptures that, that Paul and I made pork, and it's okay to eat. Well, not just okay to eat pork. Them laws, were done. Them laws were only given to, to Israel. They'll go back and say Noah had clean and unclean and all that. I got my personal um, conviction why that was, but I'm going to leave that alone. But um, what scripture you got now? I don't believe that's 10. Six years ago, I dropped the video on Acts 10. I said, that that, that, that got to do with people. Scriptures interpreting that had to do with he walked in Cornelius' house. That's the shrimp. That's the crab legs. But I know Mars and Mark 7 and some other things, people join that together and say it's okay to eat whatever you want, specifically for Israelites. Let me ask you a question, too. Did the church force Israelites back in the days to eat pork to show they fully convict, or converted and to, and to not keep the survival? The Inquisition. When you say back in the day, like I'm saying, what time frame? Well, I thought 500 years ago, 600 years ago. You uh, know, I believe so. people I, forced Jews to eat pork? I've or heard of it, yes. Jews. Those were Old Testament Jews. I've heard of it, yes. Okay, go ahead with what you were saying about the, um, what's the two scriptures? <clears throat> oh, you just go to Galatians 2. You can even start at 11 and okay. read down oh, to 15 if you really want to. Well, uh, go ahead. Video, I was your screen up, I'll do that right now. It's not technical difficulties this time. It's just me not even looking. This thing dying. Yes, Jews were forced to eat it. Go ahead. You, you want to put the screen up? Or are you just going to quote us? Oh, I can. Uh, yeah, let me do Whatever that. you want to do, or Muck run a pull I got it right here. Hold on. I, I was going to say, also, Leo, I, I didn't mention uh, the feast. I just mentioned customs. I just said customs in general. But feasts are a part of the customs, based off you guys. Yeah, I know, I know, but you, 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 talking the other you honed day. in on that one, though. <laughs> Polycarp, like Polycarp kept all of the stuff. Yeah, that was, I mean, we did talk about that, but um, so, yeah, so this is, oh, sorry, y'all. Y'all got my whole view up here. Um, so I'm looking at Galatians 2, uh, starting at 11. But when um, Cepheus came into Antioch, I, I mean, I may get King James Version. I know y'all. King James Version only. Some people are. Uh, let's do that. Sorry, y'all. Y'all might hear my kids in the background yelling. Hey, uh, um, Leo, th this is a this yeah. is a good teaching experience. You're not King James only, right? No, I am not. But why are you going to King James? Because everybody in the crowd relies on King James. That's so exactly like the point that I'm trying to prove. Just do whatever 
helps you to show that you're caring for your brother. You know, even though you know it's a dumb argument, you know that there are some King James only people in here. So you do uh, something to make them not stumble. This isn't law that you're doing that, but you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart, right? To show love for your neighbor. Yes, sir. That, that's the kingdom of God right there, man. That's the kingdom of God on earth. Anything beyond that is just us. Is this blurry to y'all? Can y'all see somebody saying it's blurry? Uh, I can see it, but I'm using my tablet. You probably want to blow it up just a little bit. So starting at verse 11, but when Peter came, uh, was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed for before that certain came from James. And when he's saying that certain, was specifically, if you look at other translations, those uh, specific Jews that came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them, which were of the circumcision. And the and the other Jews disassembled them, uh, disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also carried away with their dissubstitution. Hold on, I'm sorry, my sons right here. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, Before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles uh -oh. and not as and not as do the Jews, they compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith and not by the works of the law or by the works of the law shall no flex be justified. So not I know it's often you know, like, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna focus on justification as well. Um, but I think we can also start even back up to verse two. Um, I think the mention here is the matter of the Gentiles. Correct. Yeah, like just speaking of like I said, we talked about this in the back chat. Uh, hold on. I see what El Elder Green, Pastor Green said. Is it reading into the text in Galatians speculation around if the Jews mixing it up with Gentiles started eating the same diet? Um, I wouldn't say it's reading into it because living like there's context around what that means. Um, and did eat with the Gentiles. How, how does that, how do you interpret that? King James Version as, says, as a, he as a did Jew, can eat. I help out with that? Go right ahead. Okay, uh, Breen, can, can we swap over and can you share my screen real quick? Because I brought this up a little earlier, um, actually when I first jumped on. Um, so this is what the new perspective on Paul is, right? Galatians 2.16, the exact verse in question about justification. Traditionally, we thought that justified by the works of law point to Jewish legalism. But it wasn't about being legalistic because the Jews at that time were not, in fact, legalistic. Like I said, most Jews didn't even know the entirety of the law because you can only hear it in the synagogues to which most people couldn't go to all the time. We are having a faulty assumption of what uh, justification meant to the first century Jew. And uh, going back into the um, the two uh, the Galatians 2, it says that therefore certain people came uh, from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. Not, not that he ate with the Gentiles ate. We should just read the text for what it says. He used to eat with the Gentiles. That means you eat with somebody, right? And then it goes, if you, although are a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, what does that mean? Does it say anything about food? No, but it did say eating with the Gentiles. To Jews, you could not even eat with the Gentiles. It wasn't about what you ate. You can't even eat with them. So if you eat with the Gentiles, you are living like the Gentiles, not anything about what they actually ate. But but here's my question. Here's my question. Even if it did, even if even if it said that somebody, Peter or anybody, ate something, a piece of pork or or, or a crab leg or whatever, did the apostles command the Israelites to eat to do the same thing? If did there was a freedom, JT Mac, right? Huh? Because Brian Harris is saying 
because oral tradition says they can't be around Gentiles. That Leo is that. I, where we read see it. Is that what that means? Is living in the as the manner living as the Gentiles? Does that mean like that, or his lifestyle changed? Read that in the ESV. Read it in another version. He feel ain't gonna confuse me with King James. I was in no I was in the I was in the Lexham when I did mine, but it, it said the same thing as uh, what Leo says. Um, okay. But yeah, but regardless, regardless. Now, this is what I asked about the one further on. I think it was in uh, uh, Romans uh, or something. I don't know. We were talking about it in the back chat. But whenever we're talking about this issue, we have two questions that, that we're looking at. Actually, we have two answers, right? We have two answers. One answer is that Paul was mad at Peter because of what Peter was eating. The other answer is Paul was mad at Peter because who he was eating with. Now, one thing is mentioned in scripture, and that's for sure that Peter was eating with people he shouldn't have been. For sure it says that, but it does not say anything about what he was eating. We have to put that together with other scriptures and interpret it the way we want to make it say that. Just going off scripture alone, it says nothing about what was being uh, eaten, but in a couple of places, it talks about who he was eating with. And again, I brought out that passage from the Talmud that says uh, those Jews that, that wanna uh, be in the Sanhedrin, they got to be smart enough to argue from the Torah how to make unclean foods clean. Um, if Paul was in line to be in the Sanhedrin before he uh, believed on Jesus, I believe he would have known how to do that as well, especially sitting at the feet of Gamaliel. So I don't know why Paul would be so upset about what Peter was eating if he knew the loophole to the law to make all foods clean. Wasn't Peter in authority in Antioch? Yeah, he's the one that he's the one that James was the boss, but he was the one that after all of the beef and he turned around and he was like, y'all remember how a good time ago, God, by my mouth, when he went to call near this house and he started going over the 10th chapter. But go ahead. Yeah, correct. Uh, the reason Peter, I asked, go ahead, go ahead. Well, Peter was a fisherman, right? I, I'm not saying he didn't know all things that had to do with Jesus as, as he was taught. He probably knew more about Jesus than Paul did, that being that he learned from Jesus. But Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He said, Yeah, I'm just saying in Antioch. Yeah. I'm saying in, in Antioch, Peter was seen in authority. Oh, so, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so and just speaking, back, Jim and James them sent back the letter, but Paul mm -hmm. said, But, but like, um, what's the verse Pastor Mike was reading? Paul said they came to spy out our liberty, not the liberty of the, the other people in Antioch. Right. Exactly right. Yeah, right. yeah, it's exactly right. Right. So, the reason I asked is because, um, at least for me, um, in reading this, um, I looked at a few commentaries around it, and from what I'm seeing, the context around it, and I've actually shared this one. And Brian, if you want, you can share my screen. Um, let's see. I've shared this one before in the uh, in the I think in the back chat before, but like I said, this is the socio uh, rhetor uh, rhetorical one because it speaks to more of the social customs. I just want to read it. So I'm reading it to the right. So it says right here, let me make it bigger if I can. There it is. Verse 14 indicates that Paul did not act until he saw clearly where all this was leading. The verse begins with the strong uh, adversative, can't pronounce it, which sets in contrast to, to what has come before. Where it, it was leading was in the opposite direction from where they should have been heading. In Paul's view, uh, the verb, so the Greek word here is interesting. Its fundamental meaning is walking in a straight or upright manner as opposed to limping or more metaphorically proceeding down the right road, going toward the proper goal. This was is what? the proper goal. Yeah, uh, to be free from to the being law. free. Yeah, correct. Yes, to be truly free, to not be feeling condemnation from specific uh, strict guidelines that you would probably already had to hear it to. And that's kind of okay, why hold, I All right, hold on a second. I want you to read one or two more commentaries. The realness. Don't start that sure. nonsense. Don't call, don't start that comp, them camp lies. That nonsense. Yeah, that. All had beef against James. Who where at? Hey, uh, there was an agreement in Acts 15. There was an agreement in Acts 15. Y'all gonna bring that camp garbage in here? Pastor yeah, Mama yeah, said, well, show me where Paul had beef against James, where they were, where they were speaking like they had beef. What did the people who came from James see that made Peter change up when they got there? 
Th or yeah, that's what they, they were eating pork pastor my mind then barnabas got carried away with the nonsense through the hypocrisy and he started eating pork too go ahead yeah. oh, wait hold on this, Next, go ahead, this is what i was going to ask leo before he checks a bunch of commentary can we agree that eating pork is just as against the law as eating with gentiles Hold on a second. No, no, hold on one second because men be pulling over. No, I'm not on the truck right now. I'm driving home. Y'all go ahead. Oh, I'm, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Driving home. Say it again, oh, Kobe. Yeah, can can we agree that eating pork was just as against the law as eating with Gentiles? Sure. So this could possibly be talking about either eating the pork or eating with Gentiles, right? It could be either one at this Wait point, a minute. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know eating with Gentiles in the law, or that was the part of the fence around the law. Well, to around them, it, Gentiles? Yeah, to them it made no difference. To them, their fence was a, a matter of fact. I, since I've been going to um, uh, my Jewish school, they actually they're kind of like the EO in the way they look at things. They hold their traditions above the uh, above the, the 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 word of God when we're talking about rabbinic uh, Judaism. Now the school isn't a rabbin, it's not a yeshiva, so they just made us aware of how Jews saw it at that time. Their fence sometimes held more weight than the law itself. Hold on. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Hold hey, I'm going to jump back oh, on. Me. I got I to I gotta handle something right quick. I'm going to jump back on. All right. All right. Berean, if Peter is, is compelling the Gentiles to live like Jews, there's no way he's eating unclean. I'm for, I'm where Peter was, where Peter was trying to make the Gentiles live like Jews. Yeah. When did that I mean, happen? What y'all reading? What y'all what right. reading here? Dallas I'm Berean. Mm -hmm. Dallas I'm Berean teach. Um, good. You see how I threw that in there? Somebody, somebody, somebody put a somebody <laughs> donated a dollar to the work. Um, go ahead. I want to hear this. Co I want to hear this. Um, Leo, you, sure, you heard sure. me, Leo, you're a Kobe ass, right? Right. Yeah. So I would say yes, they are both condemned. But I think that's what we're the conversation in the back was saying. I was saying the emphasis specifically, if we go to Leviticus and understanding that the actual eating of the food was the primary law, but the you could say the fence around that was even going around them and and being amongst them okay yeah uh, was right. an issue so like i said i would say the actual like i'm just going strictly off scripture eating these foods is the issue but like i said the fence would be just being in being around them but like i said they're both seen bad specifically by those that come from james again not condemning james but it's more of people it's, at least from what i've read it's more of those that come from the jerusalem church so these actually have been connected i've seen to the sect that was arguing with james and paul and peter in acts 15 amongst that sect specifically some people have the, yeah the pharisees correct. that went to antioch and started the nonsense about circumcision correct so some have connected it to them um, like I said, there's no we don't really have the specifics on who these people are, so it's just more of just inference there. And just Why? What is, what, listen to Ryan Leo. Why is yes, Paul sir. asking him how is he compelling the Gentiles to live like Jews? I'm I'm lost. I I, I, I know, know I'm slow, but I'll be scratching my head sometime with some of y'all folk. What do What do you mean, Leo? What do you mean, um, Kobe? Well, I was uh, not me. sure. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah, come on, come on, young Pastor Green. Yes, sir. Peace and blessings. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, how you doing, sir? Can't complain. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. How's everybody doing on the panel? All these gentlemen. Everybody oh, good? Bless. Doing well. Bless, Pastor doing well, Pastor. Doing well. Amen. Ryan, Glory. Ryan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No Ryan, Ryan in the Ryan in the green room. Ryan, we ain't accepting none of that nonsense that you <laughs> want to come in here and talk about but i'm gonna bring you on anyway go ahead elder yes sir amen glory be to god uh just a, a quick update my sister uh, uh you know i uh, to told you accident. guys that she had that the really bad car wreck she'll be getting released out of the hospital on friday uh, she still got a lot of surgeries left to go but she's coming along really good so that's a praise report on that for those that have been yeah. praying for Praise God for that. Praise God. Hey, for that. Pastor Green. Pastor. You want to hear about that car? They totally the insurance did right. Or insurance went act crazy. But go ahead. That's another conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, I, and I'm come back to you, uh, J T J Mac. Uh, I, I just jumped on uh, to kind of deal with what what the, the topic or the discussion uh, right now we're dealing with. And and my my thought would be when I first try to sort this thing out or put it in order, it would be. I would immediately look at it's agreed that Paul 
would minister to Gentiles. It's agreed that Correct. Peter and James and the group that's in Jerusalem would minister unto the Jews. And they're, though they're preaching the gospel, they, they have the same gospel message. Uh, there's differences, um, and there's definitely, as Brother, uh, Brother Leo said, a context centered around Jerusalem and how the fence around the Torah played a big part in that, um, especially when it comes to cleanliness, mixing it up with Gentiles to the point where even just being around um, Gentiles, uh, the Pharisees had it so bad that even the dust that came from outside of Jerusalem made someone unclean. So there's a, a, a deeper context. I would first look there and, and, and try to build a case there with, okay, we're separating. I'm dealing with, you know, Jews who we, we understand some of them still kept, especially as long as that temple was still standing, uh, kept some of their customs. While you have Paul who is going off to these Gentiles who don't really have a familiarity with, you know, the ceremonial laws or the cleanliness laws. And so there's this uh, attitude for Peter to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mix it up with these guys, but, you know, my people from Jerusalem coming here. And so, no, we, we, we have all this strictness around cleanliness. Uh, I wouldn't jump straight to the food point where they actually changed the diet. And, and that's why I put that comment in there. Is that kind of reading into the text? Because it doesn't mention anything about uh, what they actually ate. Leo? Okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, I understand, uh, Pastor Green. And, and I think one thing, even about the Jerusalem church, the biggest beef from what I've heard was and research was that um, there was pressure from unbelieving Jews around in Jerusalem. So the Jerusalem church sent or they would say those from the Jerusalem church under James leadership went to Antioch to check to see if what Peter was, what was going on and seeing Peter doing that and hearing about it, they wanted to check him because of any other Jews were to hear about this and word got back to Jerusalem. It will cause more issues on the church there. So like the mother church will have more issues and conflicts just from him being amongst the Gentiles and eating. So that was probably how would, the, how would the that be issue. beef? How would that be beef if James and them know the same doctrine, even though they was born Israelites and they kept the feast and everything? How would if, if the freedom was there and the Jews eventually, like you argued, and the Jews eventually became like Gentiles eating pork and everything, why would that why would that be beef to, going back to Jerusalem if that's what they other... that Natic eat pork? I'm no, it's, it was more it was, not nonsense. Ryan, they're preaching just the Israelites. It's about the beef around the, the church because you remember Jerusalem church was still in a minority there. They weren't the dominant belief system there. So the unbelieving oh, you mean going to the temple around, yes, going around them and hearing of a like a Jew eating with Gentiles will condemn the Jerusalem church even further, causing more. So they issues. got a lie to the freedom that they got in Christ putting down the law because the Jews is thugging them and, or they're, they're in the majority, the Torah only Jews, they'll, they'll keep living like a Jew for their witness. Like Paul says, I became a Jew. Like that Correct. Is Correct. Not to affect their witness to them during this process because okay. they were coming to let him know you doing this is going to affect that in terms of their First cause in Jerusalem, they're more worried about those unbelieving Jews causing issues for them rather than those in those Gentiles, which they were coming to. They didn't really, at least how is uh, what you're reading, they're speaking more about Peter. I'm just listening. I, I have a question, Leo. I have a question, Leo. And, and you haven't, I haven't asked you this before. Do you believe that the apostles, any of them, were teaching the Jews, the Messianic Jews or Jews in general? not to keep the law teaching them to yeah. i would say no and okay them to I, keep i'm glad you i'm glad you said that because paul was accused of that and he went and told he went to argue that he wasn't doing that so much so that he went to the uh temple to you know participate in some, in some festivities just to prove that he wasn't teaching them not to keep those I, I don't so. know if it, I don't know if it's I don't know if that's the context of Acts 21 i think the elders actually made a recommendation to him yeah, but he, this. but he pushed back when they accused him of that, though, right? 
I mean, we can go to it right now. I mean, so, then, yeah, you can. But I know he pushed back and said, "No, I, you know, that when they were accused, when he was accused of that, he pushed back." That was later. That was later when the mob came. Um, but yeah. in the temple itself, so I actually have this highlighted specifically. So when Paul went to Jerusalem, so I, and there's another thing too. In preparation for this, I know that was uh, some big contention too. Is in prepping to go back, I think he already knew there will be some contentions based off his ministry to the Gentiles. Knowing this is a hotbed where many zealous Jews are, it's going to cause a lot of associations because of who Paul was at that day. So, because of that, he knew there will be a hostile environment he's walking into. Thus, why when you go to Acts 21 and it speaks to him here, uh, actually, you can start at I think it's 20. And when they oh, heard, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead, brother. I, I, I won't. Okay. Uh, so this is Acts 21, uh, go 19. Um, because uh, after he greeted them, this is speaking to those when he went to Jerusalem, he began to relate one by one the things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they began glorifying God. So these are believers. And they said to him, you, you see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed and they are still zealous for the law. And they have been told about you that you are teaching all Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children nor to walk according to the customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Therefore, so this is what I'm saying. In this instance, Paul necessarily doesn't like retort. He just follows um, kind of the leadership here. Um, therefore, do this that we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take them and purify yourself among with them and pay their expenses so that they that they may shave their heads and all will be, all will know that there is nothing to these things which they have been told about you, but you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the law. But concerning the Gentile, oh, go, anybody want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, can you, so can you back up? No, oh, okay. Can can you back up and explain what that zealous for the law means? Yeah, so that's in keeping it, um, striving towards it, similar to there's no difference even like how Paul was before he when when he got stricken and he murdered before he before he got correct the Damascus experience correct so it was their passion for it um and many of us would say we're connected to some of those within the Pharisee understanding or Phariseeism so to speak yes sir um, and at at this time right. he's in the temple correct this is Acts twenty one yes sir yes so sir you still have the Sanhedrin you still have the people that are working under the authority of Rome and have authority to persecute this new uprise, this this new upstart uh, fellow named Jesus and his disciples. Yes, can sir. We, can we agree to that? Yeah, you can agree to that. Paul yeah. got letters. Yes, Paul, I mean, that authority that, you know, and, and that zeal for the law, they still have the mind to persecute this new group who's, you know, a little bit different. They, they, they're believing in this Jesus fellow as the Messiah. So that that just uh, uh, to me that speaks of a recipe of you know trying to employ wisdom, especially if you're still in Jerusalem, like these leader this leadership okay, is. Okay, that's okay. That's that's not, that's not bad right there. That's not bad at all. That's as a matter of fact. That's actually that's. that's mm -hmm. I might still accept that. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Ryan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. What's up, Ryan? What's up, Ryan? Hey, shalom. Uh, <laughs> so. Shalom, um, shalom. Hey, uh, Leo, can you pull up uh, Galatians 2 and 14? Read that for me, please. I just want to explain what I was saying in the chat so, you know, because it can get kind of misconstrued typing. Okay. Um, you fine with NASB? Uh, yeah, it, it, it don't matter. All right. But when I saw that they were not straightforward, but the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas and <clears throat> Peter, in the presence of all, if you, being a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews, how is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? So right there, he just asked him, how are you compelling the Gentiles to live like Jews? So is Paul asking Peter 
why are you trying to get these Gentiles to live like you? That's so that's what I was saying. So if he if Peter is trying to compel the Gentiles to live like Jews, I seriously doubt that Peter is eating unclean in front mm. of the guys that he's trying to compel to live like Jews. That's what I was saying in the chat. Mm, that's okay. interesting. Okay. That's an interesting if he, argument. If he was eating pork. Right. Okay. I got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's a good point, sir. That's an interesting argument there. And and I I never really looked at it in that angle, but whatever what but it, it may, you know, have have nothing to do with um food per se, but whatever it was that Peter was doing and, and, and uh conversating and whatever he was doing with the Jews, uh then uh I mean with the uh Gentile, excuse me. And then these people come down, then he changes. It seemed to me like he was cool with the Gentiles and they were and whatever they were doing. And then when the Jews came down, then he all of a sudden switched up and started, hey, you guys need to start doing, you know, keeping the law and blah, blah, blah. And that's what it that's how I always interpret it. So I don't know if if my understanding is off or what. So let me ask you a question on Kobe. Not for righteousness or anything that is a command. You just don't eat pork for tradition. It has nothing to do with spirituality at all, just as yeah. an identifier? Not, no, not even an identifier. It's just uh, there was a certain tradition uh, based on the liturgy that I choose to practice. Uh, they don't do that, right? So like in, uh, like in uh, most people are, um, most people, you know, Pentecostal and Baptist, right? Y'all have usually service on Wednesdays and Sundays. Y'all don't have service on Tuesdays. Y'all probably could if you wanted to, but that's just not what you do, right? So I don't eat pork because that's just not what Messianic Jews do. Uh, it's not a matter of identifying with them and trying to say that I'm, I'm special in that sense. It's just what my church doesn't do. That's okay. it. Okay, that's good. That's good. Hey, uh, before, before, that's before. Correct. Jay, the producer, oh, don't bad, come in here with no nonsense. Don't come in here with no nonsense. Yo, we live today. Go ahead, um, uh, Kobe. I think did you finish? I, I think I might have. Well, we we kind of passed by it too fast, but I was hoping we may be able to hit on that Acts twenty one. I, I I brought this up back in the day to show that uh, we were talking about deacons and if they can be teachers. You remember when uh, uh As was up here, um, and so I have this section highlighted, but for a different reason. If you go to Acts twenty one, um, I find verses twenty eight and twenty nine of particular interest. I think I saw yours highlighted. So it it shows you there why they were in trouble. Um, and I have the latter half of 28 highlighted. It says that um, these Israelite men helped this man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law in this place. And furthermore, he has also brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. For they had previously previously seen Trophimus and Ephesius in the city with him, who they had thought Paul brought into the temple. Even here we see how you're not even supposed to be hanging out with Gentiles or bringing them into the places where you are. It's all about cohabitating and communion to me. There's just ample evidence for I that. Thought there was a, I thought there was a court of the Gentiles. They can't go any further than that. Well, at least they were still around them. That's what, that's what somebody would say. He had to be doing more than that. Well, um, here, pull up your screen. I'm sorry, yeah. pull your all right, Leo. You're gonna be here. Let me see a fella green out. We're supposed to be going home. Oh boy, let me see. All right, Jay. Man, man, if you got work, go whatever Jay the producer go, Jay the producer. We not touching Paul. He said out his mouth, like we go to church on Wednesdays, we go to church on Sundays. That's what he doing. So it's nobody going to touch no pork because he ain't doing it for salvation. Y'all ain't going to make him eat it. He got a freedom to not eat it. That's what we're going to establish on this channel. Green, can I? We don't want to make Israelites eat pork. We don't got to do it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm walking away. I'm going outside, y'all. Hey, come on. Can, I share, can you share my screen real quick? I just want to, with, don't, to... don't get on no Shabbat. I mean, don't get on no authority. Don't get on no daggone apocrypha. We's parking right here. Yeah, and then he's just gonna just. I want to hear Kobe off with this, just with that, and then we'll we share. Outside. Don't make me come back in here. I mean, no, nah, just don't make me come back in here. <laughs> All the way back, man. Is it a video? Oh, man, he said. No, can you pull up? Um, uh, Leo, can you pull it up? It's uh, the Wikipedia article with Hebrew Catholics. 
Hey, did Berean add a S on we? Did he say wees? Wees parking? <laughs> wees parking right there? Man, but Berean, outside, y'all. Hopefully this bro, Berean got to be the countryest dude from New York I know. That's what I'm talking about, man. I thought Texas <laughs> had it bad. That's how them people try me in Brooklyn. They be thinking I'm a stranger. I guess I've been going so long. All right, who screen y'all want to come up? Because I'm in. Get mine real quick. I got man. mine. What's up? I got it up. Dude, All right, good, good. All right, Leo, you're going to be here. You're not at least for half an hour? Yeah, half hour, yeah. Okay, all right. all right. Leo, can you scroll down to the Halaka view? Sure. Hilarious, man. Um, that was hilarious. All right. Right here. All right. According to Bloomer 2008, there's a broad range of Jewish Catholics. From those who have served nothing much of the, of the Jewish ways, of the Nozos are the same as Orthodox Jews. They made different opinions, but they all try to accept each other with a little acceptance, observance. Furthermore, David Knowles, patriarchal vicar for Hebrew-speaking Catholics in Jerusalem and himself a Jew by birth, declared in 2008 that dietary laws are not ob obligatory for those Jews who live in Christ. I would understand dietary laws being observed by Jewish Hebrew Catholics, if they had always practiced these laws before becoming Catholic, it certainly does no harm. But adopting the, the laws as Catholics or as secular Jews who become Catholic does not make much sense as we have the fullness fullness of the promise of G, in Jesus. What's your thoughts on that? And then Pastor Jay, what's your thoughts? Kobe, you muted. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I had to go. I'm having to work late, so I had to give me some more caffeine. Um, is it already uh, different? Try to accept each other, whatever level is that? That's what's up. I see that. The dietaries are, are not obligated to Jews who live in Christ. Not obligated. I agree with that. I would only understand Catholic laws of being observed by Jewish Hebrew Catholics that they have always practiced felt before becoming Catholic. I know some people believe that as well. It certainly does no harm, but adopting these laws as Catholic or secular Jews have who have become Catholic does not make much sense as we have the fullness of the promise of Jesus. Now, I believe that as well. So I have a sort of, um, I don't want to say an ulterior motive, but I guess you can call it a motive, whatever, whatever. So I am, I am fearful of the fact that one day America will no longer be a melting pot and instead a bunch of people with no ethnic diversity or cultural diversity and all be just Americanized. I am proud of my Hispanic culture and I am proud of who they told my Hispanic ancestors they couldn't be. So I want to bring that back in the hopes that the traditions of my family that came before me will not be forgotten. So I understand what this man's saying. I just want to do something that my family was doing long before we were told that we can't do it or else we're going to be killed. That's all. Hey, Donimus, real cool. Hey, Donimus. Donimus. Yeah. Hey, I got to step off. I want to, if I could say something before I leave, um, I got to go, I got to run to the store. So two things, uh, Leo, I, I just wanted to point out when you brought up those passages, which was fine. Uh, Paul, in my, you know, from my observation, Paul uh, uh, acquiesced. He went and did what they told him to do. But I think if Paul was really teaching that, or if that was a problem, I don't think Paul would have went along with what they asked him to do. So and maybe we can discuss that later on. And then I wanted to tell Pastor Green, hey, man, thanks for the resources and thanks for prodding me in the direction uh, to uh, dig into those two uh, topics. Uh, I've I've made a lot of headway and I've been talking to uh, offline so real. So uh, we will probably be ready to present something in the next couple of weeks. Want to let you know that. Yes, sir. You're welcome. And I'll be looking forward to it, brother. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good. All right, JT. Pastor Jay, all right. Um, yeah, Pastor Jay, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, uh, I'll comment on that. And uh, if you could put that Galatians two back up, because something happened, and you guys agree with it, but I don't think y'all heard what that brother had said, the Ryan brother. Uh, but uh, oh, I yeah, didn't agree with Ryan said. But okay, well, what are you talking about though? I know yeah, you're talking about though. Yeah, so um, I agree with this that, uh, and this is actually uh, what the apostles allowed during their time. That we even see in Romans 14, um, and and that's the two the two groups that uh that I was talking about, which is you have those who came from under Judaism to Christ, 
Uh, and so therefore they still felt obligated and still, you know, in their consciences, what Romans 14 talks about, they have some sense of weak consciences. They think, you know, certain things are, are wrong to eat. So for that person, it's wrong to eat, even though that's not a rule to the church. So you had that group that's considered the, the weak in faith ones. Um, and then, but then there's the other group uh, that it talked about in there about people who were already Catholics, um, prior hand, not adopting those things because it don't make no sense to do so. And so that's the group that uh, Galatians 3, 4, 5, that Apostle Paul talking about. So that, that would encompass all your secular Gentiles that are now coming to Christ and your secular Jews that are coming to Christ that was a part, that was called to Christ apart from those things. It don't make no sense for them to go and adopt those things afterwards. It, it, it makes sense for those who's coming from under it to still have some type of connection to it, uh, being that they're, you know, weaker consciences. Uh, but for people that were called not in that kind of weakness, it makes no sense for them to uh, go and adopt those things. And uh, that's what uh, the apostles do in Galatians. Um, uh, so I, I actually agree with that uh, that paragraph thing. But in, 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 in Galatians 2, when the brother was talking, this, to make the point about he don't believe that uh, and for the sake of Berean, I'm not going to use port. Port wasn't the only unclean thing. So what is what's another unclean animal? Let's skip my mind right now. Let's just pick one. A rabbit? Lobster. All right, a lobster. All right, so let's roll with lobster here. Uh, so in Galatians 2, the brother tried to use this to say um, the part where it says in verse, oh, I got it on my screen too as well. In verse 14, when he said, when I saw that they were not, uh, when I saw that they were walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. Now, first thing is, not walking according to the truth of the gospel. What is that? I mean, I talking about Jesus, not you know Jesus being the Messiah or something like that, because the parts Peter didn't deny that. Um, you know, so he's not talking about what people call the the essentials. When he says not walking according to the truth of the gospel in the context of what's happening right here. He's talking in the lane of circumcision and what's at this table here. All right. Those are two things that's going on right now. It's a dinner that's going on with uncircumcised people. And so but everybody believed that Jesus is the Christ. So uh, but he said when he saw them not walking according to the truth of the gospel. So hip hypocritical actions. I said that to Peter before them all. If thou being a Jew livest livest after the manner of the Gentiles or the NLT says, have discarded Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile. I asked the other day, was that what does that even look like for a Jew person to discard Jewish laws outside of circumcision? Because he already had that. He can't get rid of that. To discard Jewish laws and to be living like a Gentile. Not sitting with them, but living like them. So we need to what living like them look like, you know, and we don't really go into that that much. But that's very important to this topic. He said living like a Gentile. Then he says. Why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow Jewish traditions? And the brother has said he don't believe he said if so, if Peter was trying to get the Jew, I mean, get the Gentiles to live according to Jewish traditions, then I'm pretty sure he wasn't sitting at the table eating pork. And then some people are like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. But that that statement is accusing Peter of ill motives. As if he was like doing some secret Judaizing there, like he was trying to he showed up sitting at the table, secretly trying to get Jew uh, Gentiles to live like Jews. But that's not what was happening. He wasn't trying to get them to live like Jews at all. But then when the circumcision showed up, fear overcame him, which was a common thing with Peter in, in his earlier stages of apostleship or discipleship. That's what caused him to deny the Lord three times. Fear of persecution. That's what caused him to get up from that table and act hypocrisy. Fear of persecution. So. Um, so that natural fear overcame him. And when he got up from the table and separated from the, the Gentiles, that action that he performed, not a doctrine he taught, he wasn't trying to Judaize people, but in his fear, getting up the way he did and separating from them, that taught something because you could teach by your actions and by your words. His actions taught that if the people wanted to keep, if they wanted to keep company with him or with Barnabas and these other people that followed that same thing he did, then they need to become like they are, meaning become as Jews, become circumcised so they can enjoy the company because his actions showed a divide there. That's what I was teaching, that the Gentiles was unclean. And so it wasn't that he was trying to Judaize people and it had nothing to do with him not eating the thing. I don't know why this is continue to be a thing that people like don't want to believe, <laughs> but 
just like the question I asked yesterday, do we believe that any of the apostles preached this liberty that Christ came and offered without experiencing it themselves? And if we all say we believe the Bible and the apostles, then what does it mean to be totally convinced that nothing in and of itself is wrong to eat? And if the apostle Paul felt that way, why is it hard for people to just accept that testimony and say, well, if he believed that truly, he put that into practice. I mean, he's saying he just, you know, obviously when he went on the Jews, he said he lived like they did. So we know he put things down when he got around them. But I don't know why it's like, even though he's among the Gentiles and though he's convinced nothing's wrong in the eat of itself, for some reason, people still acting like he's walking around thinking things are wrong to eat. When the man told you he got a strong conscience. Yeah, I wanted to address something on this passage, uh, yeah. and then I jump out because I'm driving. Um, uh, I think I had brought this up the other day. When you look at the context of what Paul is referring to about the false brothers who crept in to spy out our liberty, our freedom, uh, he talks about how the gospel that he received, he did not receive it from man or by man, but it came by revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, and the entire context of Galatians is commanding Gentiles to be circumcised, to essentially become Jewish in order to be saved. And Paul is basically telling them that that's not the gospel. That's not the message that he preaches, right? And he says, if anyone preaches a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, a curse be upon him, let him be a curse. And uh, he gets to this portion where uh, he talks about how after 14 years he went up to Jerusalem um, and they didn't add anything to him. But instead of adding something to him, they acknowledged the grace that had been given to him and they gave him the right hand of fellowship and agreed that him and Barnabas should go to the Gentiles. And I think if you if you look at it and just think about it, when Paul tells Peter in front of everybody and, and think about this, think about the fact that there's the men from the circumcision who have just arrived. There's Peter eating with, that's what the text says. I'm not, I'm, I don't know what Peter was eating, but Peter is sitting there with the Gentiles. And then the men from the circumcision come in and Paul sees Peter withdraw himself and separate himself. And he says, for he regularly ate with Gentiles before certain men came from James. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself because he feared those from the circumcision party. And then Paul says, but when I saw that they were deviating from the truth of the gospel, and he, and he says also, I skipped the verse, but he says also that the other Jews were led astray by Peter's hypocrisy so that even Barnabas was led astray by hypocrisy, right? And then in front of everybody, Paul tells Peter, if you who are a Jew live like a Gentile, that's a pretty bold statement to make to Peter in front of everybody, right? Um, and he, he's basically telling Peter, bro, what's up? If you're a Jew, but you live like a Gentile. So why are you trying to compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? Now, uh, if you look into a lot of commentaries, and I'm not saying commentaries are the authority, but if you just look into what a lot of commentaries and what scholars say about that phrase, live like a Gentile, at the, at the very least, I think we would have to understand that in some sense, Peter knew his freedom in Christ. He knew his liberty in Christ because this is, we're going to refer to the apostles to talk about freedom when the law comes up, right? right. And um, we, we look at what the apostles teach. So I believe Peter and Paul knew how salvation was, was, was to come and they knew about their freedom. And it seems to suggest that they exercised that freedom because Paul goes on to say like, look, bro, we, we know that a man is justified by faith and not by works of the law. It's almost like Paul is saying, bro, as Jews, we are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. And yet, because we know that a man is justified by faith and not by works of the law, Paul almost seems to suggest that this is something Jews just knew. Bro, we even know that the works of the law don't justify us and save us. We know this. Right. And you could, you know, make arguments about the Torah and the fact that salvation came before the law. God delivered them from Egypt before the law. God was saving Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 sons of Israel prior to the law. So I think Paul is suggesting there that they always understood 
that these works of the law didn't save them. It didn't justify them. It didn't put them in a right position with God, right? And so uh, I think when, when, when Paul says this, uh, even you being a Jew, live like a Gentile, I think at the, at the very least, right, even though the text is not saying exactly what was going on and it doesn't give us all of the details, right. at the very least, it tells us how Paul and even how Peter was living and understood their freedom. And that, that's all I wanted to say, because I was I was trying to I think the point that the brother Ryan brought out was uh, it's interesting, it definitely was interesting. But uh, if if he if you would think about it and you say, well, if if what Paul says is that you're compelling Gentiles to live like Jews and if, if that means Gentiles becoming circumcised, keeping feast days, keeping Sabbaths, then what does the phrase live like Gentiles mean? It has to mean the opposite. Right. Right. Uh, so I hear what he was saying, but but that's kind of how I would how I would articulate it, how I would understand it. But I'm gonna jump off. I'm driving. Yeah. Thank you for that. It, it, and, and that's the thing. It's like when we see these things, as much as somebody may it maybe in their minds want to be like, oh, I just can't accept. I can't see them. Do. Like you got to take their own testimonies like you weren't there. So all we have is their writing. So if they tell you, yo, I got a strong conscience, I am I am certain that there are that nothing is wrong to eat in of itself. And then when Paul stands up in front of everybody and make, I mean, this is <laughs> like uh Matt said, I mean, these are two apostles talking in front of everybody. Everybody quiet and watching what's going on, you know, these big two top dogs basically, and one's being rebuked in public and is being if Paul is lying, lying about Peter living like a Gentile at this point, then you have to say Paul slandered the apostle, which is a great evil to do, especially in front of everybody. So, but if we say, yo, the Paul, Paul, Paul told the truth, you have to accept that even Peter and Paul lived like Gentiles. And that means something. So we just got to just get over, you know, what you don't want to accept and just take their testimony. We weren't there. Quick question, uh, Pastor Jay. Yeah, what's going on, Pastor uh, Green? Uh, all is well, man. Thank you. How how y'all doing down there? Uh, you, you in a Colleen or Terrell? Um, or t uh, Temple? Yeah, Temple Belton area. Temple. Yeah. yeah, we we drove by you uh, the other day. We went down to Colleen. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we had to go down there for a funeral. Um, quick question though: Would 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 you? What is the difference? I'm trying to see how to how to question it. Uh, what would be the big deal? whether these apostles changed their diet or didn't. I guess that's the simplest way. Um, would, would we have a fallout if we, if the scripture said they changed their diet or if the scripture said they didn't change their diet, would we fall out and, and pick up our ball and go home? I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to ask, is it, is it so important that we'll be willing to break fellowship if it's determined that they changed the diet or didn't change the diet? All right. Yeah, I think that's a multi-answerable uh, multi question. Uh, let me uh, let me start here. At, at the end of the day, um, if a person feels that in their conscience that, hey, uh, I feel like this is wrong to eat, right? Nobody's here to try to force anybody to eat a thing they don't want to eat. Like, the point is, everything you need to do is to do in faith. If you can't eat this in faith, don't eat it. Uh, so you don't sin. Uh, but everything must be also be put in this proper uh, category, right? So there's the rule for the church or the, the truth of the gospel, which is part of it is nothing's wrong in and of itself to eat based on the authority of Christ, not the authority of Moses. That's the rule for the church. That's why no one can teach for doctrine that, hey, abstain from this particular animal because it's defiling or anything like that. Nobody can teach that for doctrine. So, um, so as long as everybody understand that, hey, listen, the ones who think it's something wrong to eat a certain animal, that don't, they just have weak consciences. Now, but that's that's only for, and that's why I keep trying to stress this category thing here, is that's only for those who were called to Christ from those things, meaning they were under Judaism, or let's say it was like Hebrews or black Hebrews or like living under the law of Moses. And now they come to the knowledge of Christ. And now, though that's the rule that nothing's really wrong to eat them in itself, but they still feel that kind of way because they've been under the law for however long. That's for that group, the ones that would be considered weak in faith. But 
we can't have that same conversation for those who are called to the Lord apart from those things. It's a whole different conversation we got to have with those people who are placing themselves under it. And so and so those need to be two separate discussions. But in terms of like a fallout, really outside of just that whole separation thing, the only fallout will come with people who try to keep telling us, you know, Isaiah 66, um, uh, you need to do Leviticus 11, 2014. It's, uh, it's, it's a sin to eat it. Those kind of people that continue like that, those people need to be parsed out. But um, especially these people that never, didn't even grow up under this. I don't know the percentage here. I'll guess just to be safe, 80 percent. But I believe it's higher than that. 80 percent of the people here in this community are people who didn't even grow up under this stuff. There are people that fell into the movement, went into Hebrew roots or something like that later on and adopted these things. And so that's not the weak in faith brethren group. That's the group that should be warned to turn back. But it's like it's instead it's like a uh listen, everybody just do what they want, whether for whatever reason they want, and we ain't here to make you eat anything different. But it's like, bro, the apostles thought more about circumcision, they thought more about feast day observances, they thought more about even these uncleanly animals thing, more than a lot of people take that today. And, and that's the point is because there's a mindset behind those things. There's a reason why the Jews were pushing circumcision, the Judaizers were pushing circumcision, and why the Galatians were being swayed to go under it. It wasn't simply, oh, a cultural thing. It was religious. It was a religious reason to do that. It had to do with your standing with God. When the Jews, when the Judaizers come and say, hey, or oh, in Romans 14, when the weaker faith brethren were condemning the stronger faith brethren that had the, 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 the faith to eat anything, their condemnation against them, it wasn't simply, oh, you're not doing our culture. No, it was a religious reason why they were condemning them. They were condemning them because their culture or law taught these animals were unclean and those who ate it defiles themselves. So since they're concerned about purity and you got these brethren over here eating this thing you think defiles, that's what led to their accusations. This was never about cultural. This was religious. And so there's a religious stamp associated with those things and and but it's like people are trying to like act like that ain't there and so but that's very important um so yeah the fallout would come with the condemnation that people would bring um and then uh and then obviously if you have people that are zealous for their uh traditions um and continue that whole point the finger it's a sin to eat a thing they just break off eventually into their own little sect um so you know I think people need to take these things a lot more serious uh, than people take it uh, now. I have so, just I have oh, just one okay. question, ahead, and I, ahead, I'm not going to get into any uh, doctrine or anything like that. But um, I was I was uh, raised Roman Catholic. Um, should I have stayed that? Um, well, your religious association with the Roman uh, Catholicism? Yeah, I was. I did five of my seven sacraments. I was baptized, confirmed. Um, you know, I'm, my, I'm, I'm Mexican, all my family taken there, my mama, my mama, you know, like everybody was Roman Catholic. Should I have stayed that? Um, no, you shouldn't have continued in those evils of the Roman Catholic Church. You should separate from those, uh, clear so, idolatries and things like that. So I can, I can leave, Roman, I can leave and change from Roman Catholicism and go to something that I wasn't raised in, but I can't do that with Messianic Judaism. Okay. Um, I think I understand your question. But when you're leaving a false, when you're leaving false doctrine or the way of idolatry and, and, and separating yourself from those evils, that's not adopting some culture thing. And that's not going under the law. Um, that's not subjecting yourselves to things in which the Lord has not commanded. And it's not re re adopting the religious mindset behind why a person is doing it. So. Uh, yeah, so leaving the idolatries and stuff of Roman Catholicism, is, you're not looking for another name or title to join. Like, you just cease from the evils and just live for Christ the way you should. It's like any other sect. It's not about leaving Pentecostalism to go to Kojic or go to, I don't know, Methodist or Lutheran or something like that. Like, the, the, there's, idol, there's the evils, the things that are contrary to the gospel, and you just don't cross that line. It's not about a title. All these titles is pointless, but so it's not about that. But when we're talking about 
somebody who was called to faith in Christ apart from the law to then go and become circumcised. That's more than just some adopting some cultural thing. You adopt a reason why that was even establishing it. And, and the, the nation of Israel's law that came from Sinai is not. Let me answer it this way. The, the nation of Israel's culture was not built like the other nations cultures. And what we call Jewish culture came by way of the law at Sinai. The way they dressed with fringes came because of the law. The, the way they ate or the things they didn't eat was only because of the law. Their feast days only because of the law. Um, the circumcision itself because of the law when it was reestablished. The priesthood, law, temple, law, all the cleansing rituals, law. Everything was about Sinai. That's what formulated their quotation mark culture. And so to, to take yourself to that ancient culture, because Christ came with the true Israel culture, uh, but to go under the ancient culture is to also adopt the reason for those things. And that's why the apostles wanted those in Galatians. This is not some simple, look, I'm leaving being, I don't know, East African to now become an American citizen and join the Western culture. Like this ain't like that. And, and that's what I'm saying. People need to, the arguments that the apostles are making and why God established these things that's in the law, you cannot separate them. You can't go, yo, I'm just getting circumcised as a cultural practice. It was like, what? You, you are Gentile called to Christ apart from circumcision. What the need to even go be circumcised? Oh, I'm just doing it for cultural practice because I want to, you know, I like the Jews or something like that. I want to join that. Well, hold, why on, did I'm sorry. hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I left here. I know sooner than I get in front of the fish store. I left here and I told y'all see how these church folk hard headed. I told Jay don't talk on that pork. He went to crab legs. He want another example. Cove, he said not for weak in the faith. He said he just don't do it like you don't go to church on Wednesdays. I ain't like you go to church on Wednesdays. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you misunderstand. I'm not arguing with Kobe about what he decided he ain't going to eat. That's why. But I it's, it's, it's Kobe and Elder Green weak in the faith because of that. It's Kobe weak in the faith. If anyone thinks fools defiles them, they're weak. Kobe, do you think it defiles you? Well, never mind. We here. He left. No, no, I, no, 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 Right. And Elder Green said that he went to the crib one day working and they pulled out pork and pork and they just served him. He did what Paul did. I think Paul and them, they wasn't going to the rib spot ordering crab legs. But if somebody put it in front of him, like Elder Green gave us that example, he was doing a construction job. They said, I got lunch for y'all. And they pulled pork out. He went ahead and ate it. It ain't the like early, he, they don't make the drive through, huh? huh? Well, earlier, earlier this week, uh, here at. No, work, hold on. I'm they, sorry. I want to hear what. No, go ahead. Go ahead, John. You must earlier, this, eye, earlier, this week, uh, earlier this week at work, they ordered pizza for the whole staff. It was pepperoni pizza. I ate it and didn't tell nobody nothing. Fervent charity. Well, he's different. He said the same thing. A pepperoni on pizza with his son. You know, he said, I want pepperoni. You can put pepperoni on it. But go ahead. And yeah, so you know. ate it, Kobe. You ate the pepperoni. I ate three slices. But the thing is. Oh, no, boy, he but, ate three but, slices. But if I'm at, if I'm at my house, I'm not going to do that. And Honestly, I think that's how Paul lived. Y'all want Paul. With them crab legs. Y'all want to in them. And ain't nothing wrong with it. I don't think you're going up to the drive through getting ribs all the time. I guess ain't nothing wrong with it. Go ahead. Don't leave the food, leave the food thing alone. Leave the food. It's just he Can I bring this up? That reason, but there was a freedom. Can I bring this up real quick? It might pivot a little bit. It's still kind of on topic. Um, but y'all brought up, y'all listened to Auntie Wright earlier. So I asked Kobe a question a little bit earlier. So I was reading some articles. So this is called The Radical Perspective on Paul, Part 1, Guys, by Michael Bird. People know who Michael Bird is. Uh, but I just wanted to read these to you all, and it's giving different views and perspectives. So it's saying a traditional Protestant view. This is all focused on Paul. Just want to hear y'all thoughts. Paul was a preacher of the gospel of grace, and, the, and, and that stands in contrast to legalism, nomism, and of Second Temple Judaism. In some versions, this was accompanied with an implied or even explicit supersessionist view of the church as replacing Israel. The new perspective on Paul, the problem with Judaism was not legalism, but ethnocentrism. Paul was arguing that Jews need to accept that God had acted in Christ to bring Jews and Gentiles into a new saving event ahead of an eschatological consummation. The apocalyptic or Bar uh, Barthian Paul, Paul proclaimed God's envision, invasion, invasive and cosmic act of salvation to 
uh, rectify and renew the whole creation, rendering the old older with its religion as obsolete. Oh, that's now, beef the right there. That's beef. That killing yeah. the whole awakening then. I'm Israel. Oh. I ain't a Christian. I'm Israel. Somebody else just said, well, what am I going to put when I'm going to job application? Christian? Well, you're showing that's the new race that um you were talking about, Leo. Oh, that's beef right there. That's banging on awakening right there. Third race. Uh, this one right here. Now, this one, I'm going to go to this specifically because this is what the article is about. So it's called the so radical it's a waste to say you're a Jew. I'm not saying it's a waste. No, I think there's still that identity there. But in, in the as believers, oh, ahead, correct. Yeah, there's still, but, but I would say that I, when we say we are believers, that is what we are. We are Christians. Now, if you want to say that's an ethno religion, I would say it is. And that's why I've come to acknowledge it as. Some may disagree, but that's I mean, what we are. Because that's that. they go, they been witness with that. Go yeah, ahead. so that's what we are. We are Christians. But I want to read this part because I think it's interesting. And even Berean, some you you'll find some similarities that we may hear on this channel. So it's called the radical perspective on Paul. Paul was Jewish and Torah observant. He tried to bring Gentile communities into into closer fellowship with Jewish communities while protecting them from proselytism. Paul believes that Jesus saves Gentiles, but Jews are saved under the auspices of the Mosaic Covenant. Now, wait a minute. No, that's that dual covenant. Now, wait, let me be quiet and let the preachers preach. Y'all go ahead and talk. I know that's that new perspective is off a little bit. That's the radical perspective. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's so yeah, a lot yeah, of people are holding to this now. Some people believe Israel got a promise no matter before the cross. There was already a promise that God's still gonna boil. I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I'm gonna leave y'all alone right now. Hey, uh, so Leo, I'm read the flow, yes, but sir. I'm gonna myself. Just, just for the sake of the people with this new perspective movement, you have multiple people with that hold multiple positions. Yes, sir. N.T. Wright does not necessarily agree with some of the others. So it's not like this is all concrete. So for the ones that are hearing these things and, and may not be as familiar, um, the, some of these things are not even concrete amongst the people that or they, they, they don't all agree to the same things with this new perspective movement. So, yes, you sir. know, parse it out, study it out. Um, and, and, yes. and, you know, don't, 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 don't fall out because you hear the brother reading something and, and think that's the yes. end all be all. They're still working this so why, out. So why, mm, so why John MacArthur call an empty writer heretic and he ain't got the new perspective. He got, I mean, he ain't got the radical version of it. Never mind. Go ahead, y'all. Go ahead. I'm just, I'm just, let me shut up. Yeah. I, I yeah, think everybody's a heretic yeah. to MacArthur. That, that brother is a banger, <laughs> man. That's, he, he just a glorified banger. <laughs> Yeah, I would say NT, like I said, he's he even within his works on new perspective, he does challenge EP e. Sanders' view to a degree. So he's not even complete agreement um, there. Uh, but I just want to read this because I think it's interesting because looking into it, because like I said, NT mentioned this term and I've heard it before, but when he said it, it reminded me of it. So that's why I just start digging this up again. But I just wanted to call this out. So thus, the main tenets of the radical new perspective on Paul are. Pauline scholarship is too Christian and too theological. Paul was Jewish and not a Christian. We've heard that before. Paul was Torah observant. We've heard that. Paul believed that Jesus saves Gentiles. We agree with there. This one may be beef. Jew, Jews are saved under the auspices of the Mosaic Covenant. Paul tries to integrate Gentiles into Christ believing Jewish assemblies without the need for conversion to Judaism. Then Gentile Christ believers have guest status within Israel. They are not a third race, not oh, part of Israel. Boy, Leo and them, I promise y'all, he's going to go find some beef. <laughs> Nor do they replace Israel. The works of the law is rights leading to proselytism, and uh, is it pious, meaning trust or loyalty. So I want to show this because I'm learning more about this view, and I I went to googling, and I found this article. Now this article is going to be beef. I'm just going to read the title in the first little abstract. So this is from Philip Lagrade de Tout. 
he has one work that I actually just bought on pre-order on logos. Um, he works, I guess, at Northwest University in South Africa. The title of this is The Radical News Perspective on Paul, Messianic Judaism, and Their Connection to Christian Zionism. I'm going to read that again. The Radical New Perspective on Paul, Messianic Judaism, and Their Connection to Christian Zionism. So I'm just going to read this part right here. I'm not going to go in any further. All right, let's make this bigger so everybody can see. So this is, like I said, I've read some of his works before, but not necessarily on this one subject because he mainly talks about Torah observance for Paul. That's a lot of his work is around Paul, specifically Romans, uh, but not necessarily on this. So the yeah. radical new perspective. Go ahead. I, I'm having difficulty understanding something. Um, um, are, are, are we saying that if Paul continued to observe Torah, that makes him or whoever believes that a radical new perspective on Paul adherent? No, it's just tenets of it. So like I said, that not oh. necessarily you're uh, you're just not a part of it. Just saying like I was saying, we've heard some of uh, these tenets on the channel before, not all of them for one person. But I know we've heard people say, well, Paul is Torah observant. So like yeah. I said, there are certain components I would say some people hold to that might agree with the new, the radical new perspective on Paul. Leo, do me, a do, do, do me a favor. It's quiet time for Leo right now. He, this is lawyer stuff. This apologetic stuff right here. Kobe, he's, 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 yeah. he's casting doubt by bringing up the, the radical. Nobody talking about the radical. But this is yeah. apologetic game. Because he wants all of them eating pork every day. He wants chitlins. He, this is what he wants. Nobody's saying nothing wrong Israel. with it. But he's casting doubt on the whole perspective. Now, I ain't saying that T. Wright is right. Because I ain't thinking about community. This seems like it's going. Like this seems like it's going too sure. far. Go ahead, y'all. Let me stop. It's a newer yeah. view. Like I said, it's a newer understanding. Like I said, like, well, it's it's a radical view, right? Like it, that that right. makes it Agreed. like fringe almost. Yeah, I would say definitely fringe, and that's why I'm okay. bringing it up because we got fringe Christians right but, around here with hammers in the mountains. Yeah, right. this is this is. I think it's too we much. Don't like, you know, I don't know any. I don't know anybody that adheres to this. I think like I think like Berean said, it's sort of it's sort of trying to cast doubt by um, focusing on the fringe or the radical of maybe something else that is legitimate. You know what I well, mean? That's like not, that's not that's the point I'm making it up for. I'm bringing it up specifically, like we've heard these mentioned. I'm actually speaking to Israelites on this. Okay, but have I'm an Israelite. Have you not, but, but, like, but, are you, are you Hebrews only, like? Do you hold? Are you part of the camps? No, but that's not. See, that's what I'm saying. You just did it again. He's muddy in the water. He's muddy in the water. Israelites are not camps. He's muddy in the water. They're not. Oh, yeah. You know, you want Kobe and Ella Green eat pork. It's okay if they eat it, but y'all want them to eat it every day. I know what y'all want. I know Leo Guard. They get crab legs. Him and the family. I know what it is. I showed the whole spread from City Island two seventy five for my birthday. Them Israelites hitting me. You go to hell. You go to hell. Never mind. Go ahead, y'all. Yeah, I just I I'm, think it's it's the same thing. Like just now when I said you know I'm Hebrew Israelite, you asked me if I'm in a camp. You're focusing on the fringe of a belief system. You know what I mean? Just because you're you're a Protestant, I'm not going to say you're under. I don't know if you're Baptist. Yeah, you are. You go to uh, Elder Mike's church. Just because you're a Baptist, I'm not going to say you are like Stephen Anderson and hardcore radical saying that everybody needs to go to hell. Like to focus on Stephen Anderson and his church to represent all Baptists, um, that's just overstating the, the argument. And it seems almost purposeful because no one has ever talked about this until now. And that's, and that's kind of why the point. Nobody yeah, I see. I see the purpose. It's not necessarily purposeful. Purposeful. It's showcasing sorry, even I'm when sorry, the Leo, concept. Let me, you off. let me cut you off one more time. I was cutting people off. I'm getting ready to go back outside. Let me see if I can if I can help Ella Green. You just pull back up. You know, you know, I don't. I'm going to help him if he need help. But you, I don't think you realize it. Um, and 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 young Pastor Green can, you know, he can speak on it too. I don't think you realize it. Your presentation was really, really. It was good. It was good. Your presentation was good. The best I think I since eight years I had this channel. But you and I brought Jay on, I think, before Appreciate you. That. And I let and I let Jay have the floor to, you know, he put a suit on and everything. Like he coming to the guest church. I told y'all that's my <laughs> man. And I let him get them and I let him get the microphone. And Elder Green caught me immediately. He said, You invited him to teach. I said, Yes, yeah. He said, You invited. I said, Yes, I did. I said, Yes, I did. But I think with the two of y'all coming on back to back in one week, I think it was. 
y'all basically saying the messianic movement is not legit. They're, they're, I ain't saying they're not saved, but y'all are saying they're not legit. You and Jay can speak to that. I wouldn't and say it's not legit. And everything. You had me even saying, yo, I guess Paul and them, they didn't eat Paul. On a regular. I'm, but go ahead. You could Y'all can speak to that. I'm going, I, can, I listen to the rest of my phone. Don't wild yeah, out. I'm not saying Because yeah. Jay going to wild out. Once I walk away, Jay wild out anyway when I'm here. Go ahead. I'm not saying it's not legit. I'm just saying there are things that we do speak to on the channel, which is fine. I just say there are other things that we don't speak to. Not saying all of it has to be brought up, but that's why I'm saying like we adhere to uh, a lot of different groups on here. There's good side to both, and then there's also other sides too. I just think we don't speak to it as often on certain topics. Maybe Messianic Judaism is one, and that's kind of why I bring this up, and that's why even in the research I'm doing to understand the Jewish perspective on certain things, I had to look into Messianic Judaism to learn and get from those specific scholars. Now on this subject, I heard the term NT mention that jogged my memory about the new perspective on Paul. So that's why I'm like, hold up, I remember that from somewhere. And I just went, found some articles, and these are what came up. But whenever he kinda, mentioned, when he mentioned the radical new perspective, wasn't he saying that in contrast to what it was he was talking about? He was saying there's yes, some new like radical he, people. So, so yeah, yeah, so nobody is talking about this. And the only reason it was brought up is to say that we're, no, we're not that. I'm not talking about that. Um, I mean, why are we not discussing Islam here? There are some tenets of of, of Islam that you know uh, Christians adhere to in some form or fashion, but that's way out of the wheelhouse. This is way out of the wheelhouse. No, no, nobody is this. Nobody talks about this. Most people don't even understand what this is or why it's radical. But the fact that you're bringing it up kind of makes it seem like you're equating a radical new perspective to the new perspective that we were presenting earlier. And by doing this as well, it's also making it seem like this equates to Messianic Judaism as a whole, or this is a fair representation of it, which it's not. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is not, I don't, I don't think. Earlier, but Kobe earlier, I read directly from this. It said traditional Protestant, new perspective on Paul, then the apocalyptic Barthi and Paul, and then the radical perspective on Paul. I so read directly can, from this. I know, but what I'm saying is you only chose to continue on with the radical perspective on Paul. Why ha Why didn't you pull up anything on the Barthi and Paul? It hey, seems hey, to me purposeful. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, let, let, let the elder step on in for just a second. Please, please. Yes, sir. Um, Leo, one thing that you're going to learn as you continue to, uh, and especially with uh, you, you're, you're under Elder Mike, uh, Pastor Mike, one, one thing that you will learn as you continue to grow and go with God is um, as a speaker as well. I definitely think that you are a great uh, researcher and, and a speaker. You, you, you're going to have to develop the ability to read the room. And right now, if you read the room, uh, that, that latter article that you're trying to go to is it, going to do more damage than good. Uh, put, it, put it in your quiver. Uh, put it in the toolbox because there'll be a day that that particular article is what you need to pull out but right now would not probably be the best time to pull that particular article well just as a suggestion why don't why don't we parse through some of these uh what is that one two three one two three four and just walk through one or two of those and save that article for another day uh now you grown you make you you a man you make your own mind up uh, but I think there's wisdom in just learning how to read the room. And right now the room is just not ready for this, this, this radical, uh, deal that you got there in that second article. Just want to share that with you, man. Uh, take that and put that in your toolbox and use it whenever you need to. And, and I yes or no. They just shoot you down. They're good. You, Leo, Leo, you the, you newfound respect. You the truth. You the truth. But, but that presentation, I cannot lie. Now my man, El Green, I got some beef with a couple of things, but I can't lie that, that you the truth. You the truth. So. That, I think I, that was, I, that was good. Don't pull that on me though, but I think that was good though. Yeah, Leo, that, that, I agree. Nothing I, agree I said was to, to put you down, Leo. Uh it's just just trying to share something with you as from one brother in the Lord to the next. I I I, I highly respect you always have uh with, with the research <laughs> and the work that you put in. So if, if you if it came across that I was trying to put you down, that's not the intent. It's just to try to move move ahead uh in a more uh, beneficial way for for those that are here a more edifying way not that what that article says is unable to edify but if you just take a temperature check of the room right now they're not ready for it so just put, put it up and bring it back out when when we're ready for it 
How about yes, sir? And, so, and the thing is, too, I, I want it to be known as well. Like, um, Elder Green may have his views on what Leo did, but I thought it was amazing the presentation that Leo brought up, which is why I hit you up in the back and I said, I want to talk about this stuff, me and you behind the scenes, so there's no more banging yes, on this. This is absolutely brand new. You said you just Googled this. Like, yes, we, I, I have some stuff that I just recently came across too, but I, I'm not going to bring out any of that stuff because me and you talked about this. You know what right. I mean? I yeah. don't want I don't want to fight anymore. To call to, yeah. to me to equate radical perspective on Paul with somehow messianic Judaism, that's sort of like trying to find something to be contentious about, which is not what I'm trying to do with you. Now if, Yeah, I'm not trying to either. I'm yeah. not, not trying to either. I, I was just saying, like I, I like I said, I literally was a Google because I remember the term. Like I said, that's it. I remember the term and I saw this. I like I said I haven't I'm not trying to push an agenda. Again, like I said, I'm reading specifically from what I'm seeing about the term because we were in context talking about the new perspective on Paul. Because you remember earlier, I brought the term up even earlier. You're a minister? Who, me? I'm not ordained or nothing, no. I was your minister in training officially. Yeah, MIT, you're, yeah, MIT, you're MIT. You got an agenda to yes, preach sir. the gospel. Faithful men, yes, you got an agenda. True, if true. God calls but like, you, you have an agenda, and, that, and that's God's agenda. You don't want no nonsense with it. This is how come you're going in with the research and everything. I see people in the comment section talking about talking about um, we trying to police the we trying to police the um, the doctrines. We trying to police the teaching in here. No, that's that, you radical Christian. Yeah. I call y'all radical that y'all want to run a muck. A Jew can't say they're a Jew. There's some Jew haters in here. You can't say that. You gotta change their name and sound like a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. But go ahead. That's just me. That's just me. And maybe Elder Green is right. We're not ready for that deep truth. I know plenty of people that ain't Israel and they don't eat pork. But go ahead, y'all. Ain't nobody policing. We talk crazy over here. We talk. We get it on over here. But we are going in a specific direction right now. That's all we're saying. We're not trying to police no information. Ain't no channel like this channel here. And I don't tell nobody to share the video because we we different. Okay. The the thing is, it's work. Not, I like it's this, not, right here. this is my work right here. Go ahead, y'all. It's it's not about what people. Uh, it's not about trying to police any information because there's things that I know y'all definitely are not ready for. I tried to bring out just a little smidge of some of the stuff that people would just lose their minds over, and everybody flipped. This is something like that, but for the other side. If I can't, you, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there's information. As much as people say they're ready for information, they're not. They are absolutely no, not. Y'all don't, don't, uh -uh. don't, don't, don't want the information, information that I have. Y'all don't want it. That liberal stuff. You want I'm the liberal stuff. No, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm stuck. Kobe, right. did, but earlier, you we were talking about churches and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. That if there should be a level of people just do what they want, that kind of thing, right? Uh, right. sure. Under the authority of your eldership and leaders, yes. So, uh, with this situation right now, you're saying that the elders, the leadership, don't want this being brought out, or what are we saying? Because it seemed like earlier, it's like everything is everything, just flow. But as the conversation is flowing, it seems like now we have to kind of like, no, we don't want to do that. Going back to when we talk about like heresies and apologetics and all that kind of stuff. So earlier, it kind of seemed like we can just have free flowing. If you don't agree, just tune out. But now it seems like there are certain things we just have to control the conversation. It's it's not controlling the conversation. It's what's uh, what's allowed here, right? Like you know as well as I do that I came out and I barely started saying stuff that wasn't in line with what we believe here on Berean TV. And it challenged a lot of people's beliefs and people didn't like it and elders got upset. And, you know, I left for a little bit. I messed up because I wasn't adhering to the uh, to the authority of the elders. I was doing my own thing in that sense, but I knew where I was. I should have adhered to the eldership on Berean TV. I didn't. We can't just bring out, from what I was told, we can't just bring out stuff that people are not, uh, like their faith isn't strong enough for it. Like they'll lose their minds over it. Now, this is sort of the same thing, but for the other side, right? We can get, if y'all want to, we can get into this. If y'all want to, we can get into more of that stuff that I was trying to bring out. If y'all really want to learn some stuff, yo, we can get into textual criticism. We can, you want to? 
Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Like, let's just, we can just all chill out, but let's get back onto what we were talking about earlier. Like, this is, this is different. This is new. Okay, go ahead, um, Leo or Pastor Jay. I, I don't know if he even remember the question. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't remember the uh, question. You know it. Yeah, let me just say this real quick. It's like I said, again, I wasn't trying to offend at all. I, I do know, like I said, again, it jogged my memory for the mention that he mentioned it. And I just, like you said, I did a Google search onto it. I couldn't find any literal books that speak to it. And even in Logos, it's very abstract. Even N.T. Wright speaks to it, but only in like a paragraph or two. So it's not much on there. So I just wanted to jog my memory. And I saw that and I thought it would be interesting to bring up because of the subject we were talking about with the new perspective is that we are speaking on how even NT has a slight different variation or slight differences in his version. And then there's other mentions around it. That's the only reason I brought it up. Now, again, if we want to go back to the main topic, which is like, is Paul Torah observant looking at acts? That's why I have this article from. And again, the reason I have this article up is because the brother wrote the other one. I wanted to see where he came from on other things. So I found this from him. So I was doing research into him. Like I said, this is more in real time, similar to what you said, because like I said, I just looked into him. But I thought it was interesting. Like I said, I didn't want to read the whole article. I was just saying, let's just read the abstract. I thought this was interesting. That's all. Yeah. Wasn't trying yeah. to condemn anybody. So, so because here's... don't we talk about the camps and don't we talk about the camps and like how we, we brought up things, how we're like slavery and stuff in the millennium and how the camps hold to it, the other people hold, hold to it. So why can't we have a spectrum of the Jewish perspective not to condemn one group or another but a perspective, and then we can have labels and categories for who adheres to what. There's an interconnection. We want to show the full side, unless we just want to show black folks as being radicals and wrong, and white folks and certain people with a lot of hue. It's not an issue. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, if it's if it's if it's like that, that that's fine. Um, but if we're going to bring it all out, are are you sure? I say you should uh, listen to uh, Elder Green's words. And uh, and pass on that for for now. Um, yeah, so do I. Yeah, this is the thing too. I'm taking my cue from the person whose channel it is. Leo was trying to go forth, and Berean jumped in several times. So I'm reading Berean, and if it's one thing that I do know without a shadow of a doubt is I understand order. If and that's something I think that we all trying to get to is you know with this channel Berean, uh, this is his channel. He has set pastors over it, and the pastors kind of go by uh, whatever they're led to put the order or the, the charge out. And so it's like okay, Berean is is trying to you know say hey hey wait a minute hold on hold on Leo Leo he cut you off like three times. So I'm like wait a minute let's just let's just pause this. And I'm not saying it's it's not gonna I don't know what it's gonna be. I've never heard it. I've never read it but I don't think this is the right time. Um, sometimes, uh, especially for you younger people, uh, I know Dunamis loves research. I know Kobe loves the research. Leo loves to research. And in finding these different things, you, you're anxious to share it. And you have a platform and a place to share it, uh, but take it slow and try to be strategic with what you're doing. Uh, don't don't just run us down the hill, walk us, walk us into it. But while at the same time, uh, reading the room, and if Berean is saying, "Hey, whoa, 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 whoa," that's my cue to say, "Let's let's let's rein this back in, and let's try to roll with the order that Berean is putting out." Anything other than that, and I don't mean any offense by this. I know we don't see this as a church, uh, but even going against the order of Berean, that just makes us out of order, regardless of how good um, or how positive or how great or informational. Uh, the information we're trying to bring out, if we're going against what Berean said, we out of order and and God is not pleased with, with you know, lack of order. And so that's that's why I admonished you in the way that I did, um, Brother uh, Leo. Again, I thank the world of you, man. I don't have any negative thoughts towards you. I appreciate I uh, appreciate the work that you're putting in. Just just try to be strategic with it and definitely try to stay in order with the channel, uh, especially for you younger guys. Y'all, man, y'all, y'all rocking. Y'all going and, and finding all this information, uh, but, you know, take your time with it. And as you present it to the people, ask yourself, is this information or is this edifying information? Like we, we got to look at why we're doing certain things. So uh, let me stop trying to be the pastor, but I'm, I'm just trying to share that with you, man. Uh, take the cue from Berean and let's just move in a way that we're moving forth in order. 
And, yes, Ant, and I see Ant, I don't know, he got a problem with Elder Green. After the presentation, Elder Green said some stuff to me and say what you want. We got two pastors here. I don't know where y'all come from. Pastors are going to have respect. You can ask them questions like um, Dunamis was trying to press Elder Mike with some stuff. We All we ask is that people be respectful, extra respectful to the pastors. That's that's how, that's where I come from. That's what we're going to do. Pastor Mike, it ain't no beef. He'll hit me in the background. You know, this person, da 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 da. He won't even say it. I'm like, all right, I ain't gonna play that person's video. I'm not gonna do A, B, C, and D. It's two pastors. Now, between the two pastors, it's been it's been a little more beef with Elder Green. Just little things that trouble him here and there, here or there. He never came on here trying to push pork on nobody. No feast days on nobody. That's my that's my piece. That's one thing. But say what you want. Somebody think somebody is Israel. Somebody think they're Jewish. They weak in the faith. Whatever you want to say. I don't want people making them feel uncomfortable if they not if they're not trying to force y'all to eat pork, force y'all to keep feast days. If there's certain things that Elder Green do and then he noticed some things, he just brought those things out. And being that God has, I guess it's God, but I can say, has me established with this channel. And I believe God want pastors. I got them pastors. If somebody, if Covey, I don't want Covey going bothering Ella Mike about feasting, all that other stuff. But Ella Green is into it. Ella Green is into it. It's not shutting conversations down. But if he feels some type of way with the last presentation, I'm just like, just present it. Let, and Leo said in the beginning, Leo said, I'm, I don't mean to offend nobody. I don't mean to offend nobody at all. And he went ahead and he went in and, and Elder Green was a little bit offended. On the side, Kobe, other people hit me and showed me some stuff. No, Leo could have been off with this or maybe he didn't bring this other thing out. Like some stuff with N.T. Wright on the job that came out today. Well, Leo ain't bring this out what N.T. Wright just said. So, so I'm just, it's, it's a thin line. It's a thin line. I respect Ella Green or um, um, Leo's MIT. Leo, like I said, he's the truth. I love the presentation. People don't like Pastor Jay coming on and this and that. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work something here, y'all. I'm trying to work something. But anybody that feel you got the epoch to be saved, I, I don't think so. But we can go on with that. I just want to try to respect the other past because he's like, yo, the community don't want me. I'm the, I'm the, me and my congregation is the really the only feast keepers. The majority of people that's Israel in here, red letting them that move with us. I'm talking about part of this community. They don't, they're not on the feast like that. But if Ella Green choose to keep the feast and not to eat pork and Ferbacetti or Wiggins may eat pork, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's beef. So when you come on and you and, and people start saying, well, you can't eat pork for justification. That's how I, I made the statement to Pastor Jay. Kobe was clear. You go to church Wednesday night, I choose not to eat pork. You go to church Sunday, I choose to go to church Saturday. Nobody going to church Saturday for salvation. Nobody not eating no pork because they make it feel holier than somebody else. You want to call them weak in the faith, we'll argue, we'll discuss that. And Muckrunner, I'm going to tell you something right now. You know I love you, Muckrunner. And you took your, you, you, a lot of your cues come from me. You Guyanese, I'm Guyanese, and the way you move, you just a younger generation. You extra. You me times six. You're doing too much, Muck Runner. You're doing too much. I'm telling El Green, I'm in the basement trying to get this sewer together. First thing I play, I play NT right. First thing Muck Runner do is send me a video, play this Berean, and that's Johnny Mac shooting down NT right, calling him a heretic. Now they know I played Johnny Mac too. Ooh, Judah was a slick one. I said, not today. Not today. But go ahead, y'all. Oh, Maria, I sent you two uh, two videos with... Yeah, I ain't looking at the other two. I went to the other one. One of the then past... I, uh, that's a Johnny Mac. Then I, I sent the video... Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. Go ahead, y'all. I think Pastor Jay was talking. Yeah, well, uh, to kind of change it, but using that, that top line there kind of uh, to make a point is, is that honestly, some of these discussions go on a lot longer than they need to and trying to answer questions through all these different sources that it's already answered and like for example that question on there it's not answered it's not answered it's well not answered. Stop. It's not 
No, we no, don't no. Got no evidence. The same thing we tell the Israelites. We got no evidence that Paul was going to the park spot every every Saturday. I ain't arguing we that. Have no you. evidence. We arguing from silence. I'm, I'm not arguing. Bruce said that burnt up everything. He's arguing from silence. Green, I ain't arguing. We doing the same thing we tell the Israelites not to do. Green, nobody. Luther don't feel is arguing from silence. Paul says we got our liberty. That means that he was eating pork all the time. Hey, that, I don't arguing about all the time. Remember. Huh? This ain't arguing about all the time. I, I've never made that argument. The point is, is that, uh, like, the question that says, was Paul fully Torah observing according to Acts? Right? That's the top line of this uh, article. We already know the answer is no. We know that he did at times when he's around certain people, and then other times he didn't. So that's the answer, right? Was he fully Torah observant? Like, did Paul go to his grave never tasting anything that would be considered unclean under the law? No. We already know this. Did Paul keep every feast day until he died? No. We already know this. Like, how we? How I, I don't know that. I don't know that. We don't know this. <laughs> I know them scriptures that you, them scriptures that you read, got pork, Paul eating pork all the time. I don't see I it ain't like that. all the time. Even if he did it once. That, that's, oh well, that's what El Green did it once. He did it twice, he three times. Three times. Oh, that's the different story. Okay. If but y'all left, y'all left me with the impression. Remember the ham sandwich thing before? Y'all left me with the person that they they ripped off their fringes and they was eating pork every day. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Tor, being fully Torah tor observant means living a life of never eating a thing. You're so concerned about purity, the law doesn't allow for you to touch or eat certain things because it would defy you. This and Kobe had three pizzas the other day. Kobe and them is right. different over here. All the other, all the Israelites is different over here. Now we get some oh, crazy yeah. people here and there, but they different. Red letter them ain't keeping no feast. Furby Chatter eat pepperoni. Now, right. when Jay came on to do his presentation, he said, this is for those radical people I'm speaking to. And even when Jay was talking, Pastor Mike said, oh, no, he might be going a little bit too far. I don't agree with that. Now, somebody, you can keep something. So the two pastors said it, and uh, whatever y'all want to call me of the channel said it, what's the beef? We're just talking, but what's the beef? Yeah, I don't put Kobe in the uh in the in the category of uh, yes, thank you. Go ahead. I was talking about because uh Kobe, Kobe doesn't um I haven't heard him say um and today he didn't say it either. Um he doesn't not eat pork because of some kosher diet of the or the law. He he just just don't eat it. <laughs> Sometimes he does eat something that, like the pepperoni thing, but normally he don't. That'd be like, okay, I, I eat this particular thing, I don't eat it every day, like. But hey, if it's there and I want to eat it, I'll eat it. So, yeah, that's not an argument about people who make personal preferences or what they're going to eat a certain day or not. That that's not the argument. The did argument. You answer, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you answer the other question was about other question. um? Did the church ever force Jewish people to eat pork? Force them not to keep the no. shabbat. Know that they're fully saved. They're fully Christians. No, not force. Church ever do that? No, not for no, uh, not for us. Uh, the church is never to force anybody to anything, whether it be. No, I'm talking about the history. Did the church do it? I know what the whole bunch of stuff. Oh, you saying in history, did the church ever do things like that to people? Huh? You you're asking in general? Did in like church history? Did they force? Is, is there any recorded history that the church made? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. I don't want that over here. All right, go ahead, y'all. I, I, yeah. I'm mute myself for real this time. And uh, yeah, church history is a big cobweb, um, and there's a lot of evils that took place. Um, yeah, we're not called to force anybody to do anything. Um, uh, but uh, the doctrine that the teach that the apostles teach, just like today, when we teach, when we just preach the gospel message that the apostles handed down, and we teach the freedom Christ gives, and how you know, when you get this black Israelites, for example, that come over here and tell us to send to eat a certain thing, and then we make the argument that we ain't under that, and we teach the same stuff that the apostle Paul taught, then you see the accusations they make is the similar accusations the Paul, Paul, and them faced in Acts. Where if we preach the doctrine of Christ, where we are not obligated to be circumcised, um, and that's not just for Gentiles, because, you know, sometimes I got to kind of re-say this. The apostles doctrine was not Gentile specific. Like it was to Jews as well. Jews, Jews were able to experience the same freedom Gentiles had. Like it wasn't like Gentiles got this kind of freedom. Jews, you're still subject to Moses, you know, because you're a Jew or something. No, no, they could. They can exercise same freedom, just like Paul said. I, who am a Jew, I, I become like you Gentiles. So the Jews have the same liberty and freedom as Gentiles do. It just takes longer for Jews to experience it because they're coming, most of the time, they're coming from under Moses. 
So a lot of times they're the weaker ones that's still holding on to certain things. But the point is, okay. is that um, no, as far as force wise, no, nobody's to force anybody to be a convert uh, to Christ. You can't force that, but churches did. They forced converted pagans, and y'all can see that history, right? But uh, and the same thing uh, as far as when the Jews come, is come to Christ, it's not about forcing them to start eating things that they weren't accustomed to eating all their life or forcing them uh, to break free overnight from their feelings of their certain days are higher than others. Like, no, that's why they call weak and you're to bear with them, as the apostle said. Uh, but um, but the point is, is that when we preach the doctrine that Christ uh, and the apostles handed down to the church, which is for the church, not the Gentile don't church. Have, don't we have some days in the church that's higher than others? Yeah, that was that was given by oh, that's man made too. We yeah, acknowledge that Christ's birthday. That's, that's a big thing. We acknowledge Resurrection Sunday, the birth of the church, Pentecostals. Never mind. Go ahead. I'm, 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 yeah, those are those are later traditions men came up with. I'm talking about like, for example, the high days that the Jews had were given to them by uh by uh Moses. And if you want to throw in a feast of dedication or something like that, you know, a prophet or something like that, right? Um, uh, but but that's the, the things were. And then, of course, you depend on what sect you're among. They got, like, their extra little traditions that they added in that, that came from men. Or like we see in the New Testament where the tradition of the elders were there. But that didn't come from Moses. And so the same thing with the church. Christ gave the church's ordinances and things to uh, observe, like communion, uh, for example, and obviously the ordinance of baptism. But other extra stuff like, you know. Christmas and Lent and all that stuff that came later on. That came is Resurrection from Sunday is a Resurrection Sunday high day in the Christian church. Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's Resurrection a Sunday. He got up. Yeah, that's a, that's considered a high day in the church, but that that was established later on. That wasn't a thing that was established by the Lord or these apostles. This this came later on. So um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Christopher Berean said Elder Green weak in the faith. I was asking Jay that when I was in the fish store. Go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. Well, well, here's the thing. If a man eats something that's considered technically unclean under the kosher diet law and he has no problem ingesting it and don't feel like it defiled him, that's not a weak and faith person. That's the yeah. point I was making during my... Uh, that's what Paul did. Right. He's not a weak and faith person. That, that's the point. The person that's weak in faith is one who feels it's wrong to eat a certain thing. Not the one who has no problem eating a thing that was considered unclean. It's, it's the person who thinks it's wrong to eat a thing, so that's why they don't eat it. So if somebody thinks it's wrong to eat a certain thing, then they're weak in faith because there's nothing truly wrong to eat in, in and of itself. Um, but, oh, if somebody, yeah. but if somebody says, hey, you know, here's a pork sandwich or ham sandwich or something, and they go eat that, that person clearly is not concerned about kosher diet, okay? <laughs> because kosher diet won't allow for that kind of freedom. So, um, so, so that's different. And so, but... Uh, but like I was saying, when you when, when you preach that freedom that Christ gave, we meet the same accusation that the apostles met in Acts. Because if we preach about the not the necessity of circumcision, and when it got a new Jewish convert come in, I mean a new Gentile convert, and and we say you don't have to be circumcised, we say that same thing to the Jewish convert that wasn't circumcised either. The the Hellenized Jew, for example, that's now coming to Christ. It ain't no reason for him to go and get circumcised because circumcision means nothing. So if he's an uncircumcised Jew corner nation, but, you know, he went off because of his Persian, but now he's called to Christ and, and, and God called him apart from these things. Let him not become circumcised, which was the rule given to all the churches. This is why the people was even accusing Apostle Paul in Acts of saying you are teaching the Jews that live among the Gentiles in these other regions that they don't have to circumcise their children and they don't have to keep these feast days and stuff like that. And that was causing a problem, going back to that history that's being brought up. That was causing a problem for the church there in Jerusalem. That's why the Jerusalem elders wanted Paul to basically appease the people by partaking in this Nazarite vow, or well, sponsor the people that are doing the Nazarite vow. Um, though he didn't get to finish it because he was taken before it could be done. But nevertheless, Paul was going along with it, not because he was changing up doctrine or anything. It was because he was being wise or uh, 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 wise as a serpent to help the church of Jerusalem and to not destroy the witness among those Jews over there. But he didn't say, no, I didn't teach a doctrine that would cause people to think that. Oh, and I agree with you 100%. That's how come one of the Johnson came in here from Florida and he talking about Jews, just out. everybody got to get circumcised. Antioch, everybody was keeping the feast. I said, no, no, no. Johnson's wrong. Three, four, five, six videos. Right. That was Johnson over there preaching something different than what the original Israelites preached. 
But that's them other folk. Go ahead. Right. So Christ came with a... a, a, a Christ and we have to call that out. Right. Christ came with a freedom, not just to Gentiles, but to the church, which includes the Jews. And so that's why somebody mm -hmm. like Paul could say, I'm convinced on the authority of Jesus Christ. That's why you can have Jews develop and become strong in faith. And now we read in stuff like Paul and Peter living like Gentiles. They would have never done that prior to Christ. So, so now they are. So, Jay, real quick, right? Yeah. So, in your opinion, do you think that Peter and James, the apostles, were they buried like Gentiles, or were they buried like would be what Jews did, according to the law? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure at least some of them um, were buried, you know, like in a Jewish way. Whatever that may entail. Could I, I ask because we're talking like about here. culture, yeah. You know, just like here, if I get buried, I mean, I'm not getting buried in a Jewish way. I'm just, you know, I'm just getting buried. Um, so um, that's a non-issue when we talk about you know somebody burying, put 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 in ground. But um, no, it's not a non-issue, Pastor Jay. If yeah. the standpoint is with from birth to burial, there's uh -huh. laws and customs and traditions. Yeah, I don't doubt that they did. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm just asking. Let's get past dietary stuff. So, would they, do you think they would have been buried like Jews, or would they kept the customs going? Yeah, I don't know. And and based on how they died and how, what the people thought of them, I don't know. <laughs> they got buried in a Christian way. All right, that's something to look into. Yeah. Right, I'm about to jump over. Elder Green, I don't know if you're still there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, from what you've been seeing, what you discern from this past week over time. What direction do you see the channel going into, uh, or what direction do you feel we should go into? Well, I, I'm not. Let me get rid of you. We talk to you later. Yeah, I appreciate that doing this, but I'm not in a position to, to say what the direction. I, I'm just, you know, participating in whatever direction Berean goes is is where we're going. Come on, teach him. I'll bring him back now because he need to get talk. Come on. Yeah, it, it's, it's and we got two pastors. I don't know what I don't know what a pastor is to you people. It, so because earlier he talked about he's, and the historians. He asked about he earlier we talked about reading the room. Sorry, hold on, Jim. Is what pa, what what pastor Jay said? I said we're we're less than the historians. People people tend to listen more to historians than they do uh, to uh, pastors. Nowadays, nobody listens to pastors, but go ahead, Um Dunamis. No, because earlier we were talking about reading the room and that kind of stuff, right? Yes. Because uh, we, because with this conversation we had before and whatnot, the direction, just how does Elder Green see things going? Just his opinion, that kind of stuff. It's not about authority, it's just his opinion, being that he's an elder in the discernment. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think we're making some headway. I see that people are treating people with uh, respect a lot more. Uh, I think people are a little more patient, and that's improvement as far as um, some of the more hot-headed uh, panels we've had. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud that people are, you know, being patient with one another and treating each other with respect and trying to hear each other out. Um, again, I, I cannot just say where I think we should go, uh, but what I think we should uh, have as a practice, again, is uh, continuing to uh, work with one another, be patient with one another, show the love of Christ even where we're disagreeing. Uh, uh, again, with reading the room, uh, if Berean is uh, trying to lead us a certain way and we pivot multiple times during the particular panel that we're on, I, I think it would, you know, I, I think it would be right to just, you know, stick with the direction that Berean is trying to take us in. And so I, I think we, again, would need people just to be mindful of that. If we have a topic, let's stick with the topic. Um, let, let's, let's, you know, be honest and, and be respectful. Do not come to the panel just, you know, trying to win an argument. Um, realize that every, everybody is all growing and, and changing at, at, at different paces. Um, do not romanticize whatever you, I'm, I'm going to say that with my preacher voice. Do not romanticize whatever your position is. Uh, do not romanticize the apostles. Uh, these were all men um doing that their their just do and following the doctrine that Christ delivered unto them. Uh, we have evidence where they say it seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit. So these they're, they're not perfect. They're learning as they're going and they're uh, as shepherds do as leaders do, they're making the decisions that they best see fit. 
And so I think if we understand that, that none of us are perfect and we're trying to make the decisions, especially uh, Berean has a, a, a people that are committed to coming here on a daily basis. We are all not coming for the same reasons, but we're all here. And so uh, just understanding that we, 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 we're not perfect. We, we're not gonna get it wrong. No matter, you might have a favorite elder or a favorite panelist. We're, we're, we're all trying to get to that um, point in Christ where we, uh, as Ephesians said, where we've unified the faith. So just those those things would be, you know, my recommendations. I wouldn't dare try to say, I think the channel should, I, I can't do that. I, I can't do that at all. St. Moses the Black, I love you, man. Uh, I love you. And uh, just, I don't, I don't even know what you're saying. Uh, I like harsh rebukes when it is necessary. And the channel has. I'm sorry, I didn't kick you off, Duna Messi. Oh, you said you got kicked off, but you got to go. All right, you know I love you, brother. I'm sorry. Hold on, Ella Green. Um, Father God, and and Aunt know I love him. Listen yeah, he all right. Listen to Aunt. Um, somebody said Ella Green is my man. Ella Green is a pastor, one of the pastors. Pastor Mike is one of the pastors. They're both, both of them. If you want to keep your culture, it's not the end of the world. They disagree with nothing. Pastor Mike said that even when Jay was talking, Pastor Mike said, no, 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 I don't agree with that part right there. It ain't for salvation and none of that. Ella Green said, if somebody came in here in Israel talking that nonsense, us Israel, Christians, everybody going to get on them for false doctrine. You ain't got to get um, circumcised. You are Gentile. He said, we all jump on them. We got to get on them and correct it. He, and saying, um, um, Aaron Green, talking to you, young Pastor Green, we mm -hmm. just fundamentally different. I like harsh rebuke when it's necessary, and this channel is has so much heresy, it's got to be chopped down. What heresy? What heresy the channel got that we don't that we don't bang on? Now, and remember, you come from a tradition. You made a video, and you said you shared it with me. You said, "No, my elders and them said, don't do it. I can't even speak on nothing in the Orthodox Church." But now, my man, aunt, who I love, he over here speaking on this. We all the same church, but you EO, you think y'all better than us. So you, so your elders tell you don't speak on no doctrine, but you over here speaking on doctrine. We do take your heresy. What heresy we let ride? Oh, Bruce, Bruce just read to help people make it through the day. And yes, Bruce, yes, if you, you tell it folk, they ain't right if they ain't went down in Jesus' name. The church has not accepted that. If you don't speak in tongues, you ain't say the church has not accepted that. So every time Bruce come on here repeating the same thing, we talk that to we tell tell him you're wrong. We let him talk, but we tell him they're wrong. What Rev C talking about dispensationalism? We can talk dispensationalism. Father God, in the name of Jesus, let me stop. I ain't no lawyer for Ella Green, but we got two pastors in here. Ella Green, my man, Pastor Mike, my man. That's what it is. And and God set them up here. They get me aggravated. They get me aggravated. I was talking about Mike the other day. I talked about these people. But they still the pastors, and I don't respect them over here. They leading this thing. I'm here. I'm ignorant, but they leading this thing. Go ahead, though, young fellow. I'm sorry. Yeah, I appreciate that, uh, brother uh, and brother Moses. Um, I guess um, there's there's a there's a way uh, to do everything, um, and for me to make sure I stay in order. I cannot approach Berean's channel like it's my church and like these people are under my leadership. Um, because to your point, there is a lot of things that I disagree with. But if I just jumped up here every single time and reacted uh, to some of the things that I don't agree with, uh, I think my witness one would be affected. Uh, two, I, I think I talked to you one time and the reputation that I had for one for season on here is anytime they saw me on the panel, people were saying, oh, he comes to rebuke us when that. So I, I, I'm not sure uh, uh, where, where, where you mean about that, but I try to use wisdom and strategy, man of God. Um, there's others. Uh, what I can't do, others will. So I don't have to be everything. <laughs> Glory be to God. I don't have to be everything. Young Pastor Green talking about, I'm sorry, yo, Young Pastor Green, Thunder was on here talking crazy, and Young Pastor Green said, give me the link. And he jumped on here and wild out. That's and what I'm saying. Out, but he was like, yo, that's not right. I'm sorry. I just can't. I'm not going to take but so much. And I didn't say a word. I understood that as the Lord. 
We ain't gonna say everything. Somebody in here talking about the other guy. Can we talk about everything? Pastor Jay, can we talk about everything? One dude came in here. He wanted to say what he said. Adam was the serpent. Nobody want to talk about that. Both pastors agree that's nonsense. Folk don't hardly know the gospel, and we're going to talk about that waste of time and talk about one thing that nobody talking about? Nah, man, get out of here. Ella Green said, yo, I'll talk to him in private. Pastor Mike ain't even want to entertain that stuff right there. Who, do, who talking about that? We ain't going to give a platform 100, 140 people in here. Knox is about the serpent, and these folk don't hardly know the gospel. We're just trying to get the gospel together. I'm sorry. Go ahead, y'all. This live. This live. Yeah, let, let, me finish, let me finish that thought, Pastor Jay. Good. I'm from. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've developed a, a particular tolerance on this channel um, to when I, I know I know when is the right time for me uh, to re, when it's when it's enough is enough. Don't worry, brother Shafe. I'll get on and rebuke. But again, um, there, there's 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 a headship over this channel. So I, I, I don't want to just usurp authority. But just like the day when the other the guy was on, I'm like, hey, man, give me that link. Let me rebuke this brother. So, but I've developed since that particular um, engagement with Thunder a tolerance. So I'm not as quick as to just rebuke somebody. So uh, don't worry, brother. If somebody getting way too far out of line, I'll, I'll jump right on on. And I think if you go back and look at the history, the, the score uh, proves that statement to be true. Okay, go ahead, Pastor Jay. And said we missed this point. I, I don't understand, but um, go ahead. Hold on, Pastor. We got a couple of minutes, right? Um. Young Ella Green? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. All right. Good. Good. Um, Jay. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah. I mean, a person can technically talk about anything they want to. It's, it's, a lot of things are pointless. And um, if people just want to kind of attain all kind of conversations and uh, kind of to what Berean just said is that, I mean, have most people don't even understand truly the gospel and what it means uh, uh, beyond even the, I mean, I mean, the things people call essentials, like the very basic stuff, be beef around here. So, I mean, that can't even be like hitched down or at least moved on from because somebody jumps on and kind of just got to kind of do this whole circle again. Uh, but, uh, but uh, beyond that, just how, I mean, the very teachings of the apostles, how they tell us uh, in regards to how we should live. I mean, people want to hear all kinds of conversations, man, but I mean, we got brawlers, strikers, idolaters. We got shacking up. We got all this kind of stuff going on. I think I think we should talk more about these topics to hopefully bring about conviction uh, in, in people's lives and 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 continue to cause uh, by way of hearing the message about Christ uh, to conform our lives to His. And um, and so all knowledge is not all good for you. Um, and the Lord showed that in uh, the garden. Sometimes it's good to be ignorant. It'll save your life. Um, if you don't learn nothing else from the garden, uh, ignorance would have saved our lives because we would have ate that other tree and not died. But we wanted to know more. And so that led to the destruction of mankind. But thank God for Christ. But um, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jay, you uh, know I love you, right? What happened? Jay, get on here saying what he think we should do. I just said we got two pastors. The whole church was talking salvation. Can we, do we get that out? Yes, that's good. But we are known to have conversations that so many claim the church don't have that we do need to have. There's conversation that, because you're not called to that, there's conversations that you'll be like, man, one on once, one on twice, that's it. I ain't going to be dealing with that. We don't want to deal with history, this and that. But there are safe folk that don't think they're Israel that feel the church just, there's a lot of stuff that the church have not discussed that they are concerned about. And in this age of information, it's okay that a Christian knows something about another faith. It's okay that a Christian know something about some heretics that's out here. It's okay that it ain't the end of the world. So we try to pick up where this is just a different avenue. This is just a well, different avenue and it's needed. I, I see this as a, as a brother is, is that, uh, you know, be very careful because even though this is not a, like a church building quotation mark, yeah. um, this, if it's this full of believers around here, uh -huh. then obviously they, they need to be very, 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 very much carefulness uh, done regards to what you do entertain them with. Because just like this topic of earlier, why people didn't want to read that article or why we shouldn't have gone into that topic of the articles is 
there's some weak people here. You don't know who they all are, but you just know there's some weak people around. And so, hey, it's going to mess some people up around here. Some people that you'll never hear from. They never send you an email. They never call you or anything like that. You don't even know their real names, but they're listening. And so, you know, the Lord's going to hold us accountable for uh, every every word that comes out of our mouths and everything and any person that we destroy. Uh, for whatever we thought was good to do, it's better off to, you know, to do what the Lord wants. And so, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, uh, 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 I'm, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to put Pat J out. You know, all that statement you made, you made huh? statement. you said half of the people you said just try to get the gospel right, and they want to talk about all these other topics. That's the point I'm making. No, those are the and, 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 and let me ask you a question, real little mother in the mat. The majority of Christians in here, a good bit of Christians in here that 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 ain't claiming Israel. They got the they they, they 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 you could tell who been in church. You could tell who been in church and who ain't been in church. Who yeah. understand order, who understand doctrine. It's a good bit of saved folk in here. They understand doctrine. They be like, Lord, where he get that from? Radical folk that ain't been in church, radical folk that just think they 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 on their black power. I ain't saying everybody that's Israel, but it's some folk. It's it's a good bit of people. It's a good bit of people coming around here, and they're a little strange. Them people that don't want to go to church. Them folk that's that's just out there. But there, there's some safe folk in here that sound. Yeah, I agree folk that. I'm talking about. They need to get their mind right. But it's safe folk in here. Don't act like no everybody don't know the doc, doctrine around here. We get regular folk be correcting folk on stuff and be like, yo, they don't even know that. But go I ahead. agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Um, but speaking to that other group, let's say the let's say we got unbelievers or people that's ignorant of the gospel and, and and they're here we got people that know it and then we got people that don't know it so uh i would i would suggest uh, uh you know i know it's not my channel or anything but if we know those kind of people around us then i think we should definitely uh do a little evangelistic type of topics we don't uh, never do evangel oh, Father God, go ahead. Let me uh, make uh, you know. i didn't even ask his, what's ask his opinion and he's still giving us his opinion he can't help it Go ahead. Well, I mean, you feel it's godly, it's the right thing to do. Holy wait, God. If there's souls here and you got people that I, 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 I love you, bro. I'm gonna talk to you later on. Anyway, we got two pastors got the Holy Ghost. They got physical buildings. They done laid hand, they done had hands laid on them. They got paperwork. You don't think the Holy Ghost going to tell Pastor Mike, yo, we got to go in this direction. Elder Green always, yo, if you don't know Christ, all of this don't mean nothing. bro. God got this. I'm not the boss of this. God got this. Uh-uh, I don't want to talk no more. I don't want to talk no more. I get aggravated too quick. Like the Holy Ghost, even in the craziness, the Holy Ghost leading folk. That's his heart. Because evangelism and doing that on a regular is his thing. Don't act like that ain't the green thing. Don't act like that ain't Pastor Mike thing. It's pastors over here. That season, both of them got 15 years on the mic minimum. I ain't saying nothing wrong with you. I'm not banging, but I'm just saying they got they got more experience. They got they let people in the Lord. They've married people. They've laid hands in the hospital. They've been to the, they, they done buried folk. They done been to the, they done, been, they, 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 we got, we got pastor Jesus for real pastors. That's how come I'm so strong on who got a physical building. Even the other dudes, I say, I, I can't respect what they preach over that Hebrewism. They got a physical building. They're getting that work in. Mike getting that work in. El Green getting that work in. I'm not confused, y'all. I used to be a pastor. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I promise y'all. I promise y'all, I got an idea how this thing go. I got a, I got a, I got an idea how this thing go. And if the Holy Ghost is leading Pastor Mike and them to say that, they're going to say that and I'm going to receive that. I'm going to receive that. Other people, they'll keep coming. They'll keep coming. I think my other people, like in my, even, even back in the days, I feel like crying. My man Baker wasn't even in church or nothing. Years later, he said, yo, I'm in I'm church. I found me a congregation, good pastor and stuff. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, you know, we give, I'm give out communion and stuff like that. We get letters. Mike get letters. Elder Green get letters. Other pastors coming from out of town to Elder Green and them. I get letters. We get letters. We get, we, we. It's not too bad over here. It's a method to the madness. I know it looked mad to y'all, but oh God, ordering my even my steps and my craziness. I'm like, all right, Lord, my mind ain't right, but I got a crowd. And you said, let them talk. And you're going to bring whoever, Pastor Mike. Yo, I got to come on the channel and da 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 And he started, you know, we banging. I'm banging too, pagan Mike. Come and talk that talk. But his doctrine is right. He's sound in the faith. 
He mature. Faithful men laid hands on him. He got a witness with elders and other pastors with buildings all over that know him and the work he put in. So I'm like, all right, God, he got the qualifications and he got a willing heart. That's it. He, he, and Elder Green, same thing. Elder Green, same thing. Don't, don't be confused with what's going on over here. Come on, young Pastor Green, close out, please. I love you, Jay. Jay in the back. I don't even want, I don't even want to talk about that no more. I, this, this here, this here, this here, we done, we, we, God's got this. Yes, sir. Uh, some days I'm, I'm, I'm on here like, what what is this like manna like what is this but you know uh 20 20 years 20 years over 20 years 22 years of walking with the lord um seven years pastoring pastor mike and pastor mike and you you ambassador bro it's 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 heavy hitters over here it's same folk over here it's a folk been ordained been preaching this gospel pastor mike and ella green got more than 20 in Want to get an ambassador on here with that gospel blowing? Come on, man. Don't do that. Don't, I, I feel, I feel, I'm a little offended. Go ahead. Mm. I'm sorry, Elder. I, I, oh, I, no problem. No problem. No, no problem. more red book. No, maybe one. Not two. Not two back to back. I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah, I, I was just saying that I've learned to trust God uh, in the process, uh, even though sometimes we, we can't see or discern uh, the work and, and how how this particular thing is working. And with this type of platform, we, we do have the difficult discussions. Uh, we, we do color outside of the normal lines at times. And you, you, you have people here uh, that, again, I've heard the testimonies. I, even if I'm not on the panel, I'm maybe reading the comments and I'm seeing people saying, hey, man, this channel really blessed me. Or, you know, I, I got back in church as a result of this channel. So we know God is at work with the channel. Uh, we just have to learn to be comfortable um with what god is doing and the, the manner in which he chooses to do it you know he doesn't always take us the easy route um you can just run down the list uh, i don't think any man that god used in those scriptures was taken the easy way they all uh had to you know experience their adversities with god so even with the adversities that we're seeing here uh the beef uh the 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 wreck uh the wild and out the the heretics i mean we get it all over here uh, but at the end of the day, I do believe uh, some are being uh, convicted to turn to Christ. Some are being convicted to go back and look again. Maybe I wasn't as uh, maybe this this belief that I had is is not the the right way to be looking at it. So it's a slow work uh, down here in Dallas. We say it's a slow boogie, baby. It, it's 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 a slow boogie. Uh, you say it's a slow work. It's a slow work, but it's a show work. That's Come what on, we man. Say. But let me, on. let me say one more thing, too. And, and, and Jay know I love him, and Jay will be back on here. But that even speaks to authority, going out, ministering in other places. When you get to another church, if that's the subject, if you're in a church and the pastor tell you to read the announcements or pray, don't get up there preaching. If mm. he tell you to close out, do the altar call, and he walking upstairs in the office, he don't need to hear a whole nother sermon. Mm. You just don't do it. And that's what we call order in the church. It's okay. It ain't the Bible, but it's order. But if you ain't been trained, you don't know it. And yeah. you, you got the Holy Ghost or the pastor that preached. He told you to do something obedience. But y'all don't do that. Y'all think y'all got the Holy Ghost. I'm going to preach another sermon. I want to lay hands on the sick. The pastor just told you to pray and close out. The pastor mm. told you to do the altar call. pastor told you to read the announcements. Here you go. Yes, this sir. Is is. I'm sorry, Elder. I'm done. No, no, no. This is your channel. So I'm going to hear. I'm going to hear everything you got to say. Oh, give me uh, a favor. Give me a favor, too. Ella Green, you listening? Stop saying this is my channel. This is my community. It's God. Amen. I'm talking to you. Ella Green likes saying this is your community. This ain't mine. Crazy as I just ain't mine. This is God's. Amen. The name of it, but this this God work here. That's yes, why sir. I have a mic in them here. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think um, it would do us good to to hear what you just said in terms of knowing the order, walking in that order. And you know, walking with what what the pastors uh, that that are placed over this community, let's just let's just run with the vision that they got. Uh, keep the division to a minimum. Um, for some of us, it would help. I, I I don't know if people have ever experienced being sat down, Berean. Uh, some of the people that they come to to and I'm not helping, Elder. Uh, here I go, and I'm not helping. Pastor, pastor, another pastor. That's why people feel it's yo, Pastor Mike don't even have a lot of. 
a lot of um requests pastor mike said jay don't need the microphone no more what i turn around and do against what the pastor say bring them on no young people need to get used he'll learn as he grow and stuff like that then he started coming on with some other stuff and and then and, and mike got to come back and straighten it out that's me making it hard on them i'm not paying them mm. Yo, I, I I be feeling like crying. This channel is a, this channel is. Oh, Father God, just lead me in the right way, and, and 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 then I still bring them on. I'm showing, and I can't lie. Ella Green is my man too. I'm around Ella Green. I'm around Ella Green a, a lot, and he said he had some concerns. I'm really I'm really trying to work it out. Especially you know he Israel. Some people want to keep the feast. I don't want them to feel they're not safe. They got questions. Don't go to Mike, Pastor 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 Green is safe. I believe he's safe. I Without a doubt. I see Without a doubt. Doing. Ain't nobody finna come and tell me nothing different. I know. I know what Pastor Mike doing. So mm, Pastor Without Mike, a doubt. That's me. Oh, some of this is from me being hard head. Well, all right, Jay, not trained. Jay, his heart's good. He mean right and this and that. He can learn more. He's not been in ministry as long as them. But Pastor Mike said Jay's gonna do more damage than good right now. Three times he told me that. And then and then he's so tired of it. He's so tired of he like this Korean is hard here, but I can't, you know, I can't say, but hey, you know, I can't say, but so much. He said, but he came on when Jay started with the communion and you got to drink all from the same cup. And I forgot what other nonsense he was saying. It was nonsense. But he said, it's, he said it was the Lord or whatever. The church of God says it's nonsense. We don't do it that way. But Jay ain't nobody right but Jay. Pastor Mike said, and then he blow shots at me. He get on the microphone. He said, Jay off y'all, Jay off y'all, but you'll have him on here tomorrow. Blowing at me because he know my man. Listen, God, yo, yo, I'm done. God put them pastors here. I gotta start listening. I like Jay. I gotta start listening. I like Bruce. They ain't even said don't have Bruce on, but with that Jay teaching that he a pastor. Ella Green never said don't have Bruce on. Pastor Mike never said don't have Bruce on. Pastor Mike said Jay don't need the microphone right now. Mm. And, and what Ella Green said, Ella Green said Jay, Jay, Jay. I know God called him to a work. I know that for sure. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, so that I don't want nobody to feel. No, no, no. And Jay, do we expound on the word when he in the word? Yeah. So I said, because being that he's so, he's so, you know, he's he, he's gifted in that area. Let him, you know, just give the word. But when you start, you know, how we got to do communion and all of that stuff and sports, we don't need that. Preach Jesus. I bring like I used to always bring ambassador on, not for no history. Preach the cross. That's what ambassador come on the cross. Mm -hmm. Some people are sick of that. The cross is good. Matter of fact, I'm gonna call ambassador. Mr. Ram, Mr. Ram, you I'm go ahead, Pastor. I'm so sorry. No, sir. No, sir. All is well. Yeah, right now. But for, for those that are here, y'all done heard it. Y'all keep coming. Stay faithful. Um, you know, God is at work. We might can't discern it. And you know, to be transparent and again, sometimes I'm like, what in the world are they talking about today, man? I'm I'm gone. I'm out of here. You know, and, and then I come back, you know days later you know and so we just be faithful uh we be patient and we watch and we uh look at what god is doing uh just look at some of these comments some people are actually uh being edified uh but then too just make sure you don't become an information junkie just you know have all information and no transformation so and that let me just uh you want me to pray us out or yeah let me just answer and he said any question that seems to be offensive we're afraid of now no absolutely not no it's just the way it was just the way the presentation came you know, and I brought Jay on again that, um, you know, if you if you keep any feast, any signs of you don't need pork, you ain't, you know, it's just it's just it's just the way it came out. And the pastor was concerned with it. That's it. We still dealing with questions. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, if, if we can answer, we have a, a answer. Yes. Let's let's answer the questions. But just use wisdom as, as, as well, too. Uh, how old are you? How old is Brother Shafe? He's in his 20s, 30s. Oh, Shafe ain't that young. How old is Brother Shafe? I don't want to say his age. I think that, that sound, yeah, it sounds like that. It's it's it's, it's a, a zeal there. And again, I love the I love the young brother. I love all the young folks that's over here. Yeah. Uh, but we just have to we have to be wise. Uh, and I I think too, some people can't see it. Like you you've been a pastor, so there's just certain things that you just know from shepherding people. Uh, certain things that you're gonna automatically lean to and apply because you've been in that position i'm still in that position and so there's just certain things that you pick up and you learn from shepherding people and it's just like i saw somebody else say well jay's a pastor he just can't help it it's just a part of who we are as shepherding people there's things that we just try to put in place and that it follows us we just not pastors um 
you're not just a pastor on Sunday morning, but you're a pastor every day in everywhere you go. And so some things, uh, whether it's okay with y'all or not, is just a part of who I am. And I, that's just the way I flow. So um, I'll leave that at that. Did you want to listen? I don't, want to yeah, yeah, I'd like you to close out any, any other words you said. I don't want to walk on eggshells, though. No, no, no. You ain't got to walk on eggshells. But but mm -hmm. I, I, I noticed you said, oh, that's Elder Greed in control again. I seen you type that in two or three times. All I ask, just respect Pastor Mike, respect. You can ask them questions and stuff, but just put some respect on the pastor. Y'all ain't gotta respect me. I'm ignorant. I'm from the block. But 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 the pastors and them, please just 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 you know respect. Yeah, yeah. We we all would do would do good by just showing each other respect. And then to what worked for you, man, it ain't it, it don't work for me. I, I think that's 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 a part of it too that we have to learn how to balance. Berean is wanting that we all want everybody to be the same as we are. That's I call that get like me doctrine. You, you remember that game get like me? You gotta flip the coin and you know whatever side the coin land on. If it don't land on on the same coin, I, I win all the money. So a lot of times we approach these discussions. I notice just from the the comments a lot of times it's like they gotta see it the way that I see it. You know I, I've learned as a shepherd that that's not always feasible. So it's all good, uh, brother Shafe. I don't I'm not offended. I I just I'll take what you say and I consider all of it. And if, it, if it's something that I can apply to my life, I will apply it. Uh, but uh, let's say I, I will respect it because you asked me to. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that, young man. Uh, to, I love to Berean. I love Berean. Yeah, and it's good, man. Uh, it's a, You got a lot of good people over here, Berean. Yes, uh, you, you got a lot of, you got, uh, it's a lot of, pe a lot of pastors with buildings that would love to have what you have over here, man. Amen. Uh, you, you, God is, God is really uh, doing a great thing with this channel. And so just keep letting God have his way um, and, you know, tighten up a little bit, tighten up just a little bit. Don't let these youngsters keep running this muck on us, man. Oh, but God in the name of Jesus. Y'all do y'all pray for me? Oh, all the time, man. I call it the bother to folks. I know y'all are supposed to. Do y'all pray for me? I want y'all to remember me and pray. Eight years, I'm still ignorant. Father God, but thank God there's some pastors here. Maybe yeah. ignorance is my lot. Go ahead. Go ahead, Elder. I, a matter of fact, I'm getting off here. You go ahead and close out with any way you want to close out. They didn't hurt enough for me today. I'm taking this video down. All right. Well, glory be to God. Father, we thank you uh, for our life, our health, our strength. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, God. We thank you for the everlasting gospel uh, that, that saves and brings about salvation. Lord, we pray for this channel. We pray for Berean and the pastors that you've uh, called to do this great work. God, and we just ask that as we continue to go forward, that we would acknowledge you in all of our ways, uh, that we would not be self-willed and self-driven, uh, but that we would be those that submit to your word, that we would submit to the authority uh, that comes for being a laborer in Christ. God, we ask that each conversation, let the people be built up and edified. Let them be strengthened in their faith concerning you. Let their confidence uh, not be in the flesh. Let their confidence not be in the knowledge or the information that they've obtained. Uh, but let their confidence be in the finished work of Jesus Christ. God, as we leave this place, we ask that you would keep us in perfect peace, even that peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we pray a special prayer for Berean, uh, that you would continue to lead him, guide him, uh, that you would continue to direct his path, direct his feet, order his steps, God, uh, so that he will walk in them. God, and we pray that you would meet his needs, whatever they may be. Uh, bless him beyond measure, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God amen. bless you. Thank you so much. I love all of y'all. I love all of y'all. We beef. We, you know, we don't beef. Somebody send me some. Somebody send me an email, teach at gmail.com so I can get um, the chat and Roger up out of wherever I got them. I don't know, out of darkness, wherever it is. Um, I love you. I appreciate you, Elder Green. Um, little mother said, I have your name on the prayer board at the church. Yeah, I'm ignorant because that get me mad. She got me mad, but I can't even block her. But it need to be there, but I just, I'm mad anyway. Um, Berean teacher, gmail.com. Um, dollar sign Berean teach on the cash app. Y'all want to put a dollar there. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Let me take this video down. We done did too much. Good night. <laughs>